Data Live, Volume 11, Tabaichi Devil. By, Koshi Tachibana. Chapter 6, The One Struggling. Part 1. Dot dot uh, are you done yet? Itsuka Shido twitched his shoulders when a timid voice called out to him. It seems Shido dozed off for a while. When he looked towards the direction of the voice, he found out that the small girl wearing glasses, teacher Okamine Tami aka Tama-chan was holding the memo towards Shido while making a troubled expression. It looks like she couldn't move because Shido was looking at it with a very serious look. Exclamation mark why yes, thank you, very much. After Shido said that, he took a small bow before reverting back his posture. Nevertheless, it was only natural for Shido to have his eyes stolen by the memo. The reason was simple. The date written there, was a date five years before, today. After Shido gulped to wet his throat, he looked at his surroundings once more. From what he could see, the buildings were slightly arranged different from his memories. The different seasonal scenery from just now. And also, Tama-chan sensei does not know of Shido. Those factors slowly back up the unbelievable information written on her memo. Then, I will be leaving now okay? Tama-chan tilted her head while asking. Shido, who was immersed in thought while his eyebrows were closer, widened his eyes in surprise. Ah, yeah, sorry and thank you. After Shido said that, Tama-chan twisted her head in wonder while leaving the place. After seeing her move away, he leaned his back against a fence. Dot 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 five years ago? You've got to be kidding me? Shido pressed his forehead and groaned. There was a conflict occurring in his head because of his common sense trying to laugh off this absurd situation, and the various proofs shown in his view were colliding. That's normal. Time is unalterable and inviolable. It's impossible for a time that passed to return back once more. However, Shido could not deny that fact. There was one possibility scratching his mind. Right before Shido came to this world, he encountered a certain girl. Kurumi. After squeezing out that name from his dry throat, Shido vividly recalled back that girl in his mind. She has unbalanced eyes, black hair, and white skin decorated with a crimson black dress. She also has a clock dial on her left eye. Kurumi. Tokazaki Kurumi. The name of the worst unsealed spirit. She has an angel known as Zafkiel. Its ability, was controlling time. Each of the clock-shaped angel's numbers had different abilities and by pouring the shadow coming from the number into her pistol, she can choose to accelerate, decelerate or even stop her target's time. And right before he came to this world, Shido got shot twice by Kurumi's bullet. He pat his unwounded forehead while gulping. The existence of the spirit and angel, which are out of the realm of reason. With her powers, it might be possible. Kahai. And thus, when Shido was immersed in thought, he could hear a small laugh coming from somewhere. W.H. Who is it? Oh my, this is sad. Have you already forgotten about me? Shido gulped when he heard that voice and tone. No way, Kurumi. Yes, yes. Ufufu, I am glad you realized that. The owner of the voice, Kurumi, continued talking. It was a weird feeling. He could hear her voice clearly even though he couldn't see her anywhere. It's felt as if an invisible person was whispering into his ears or maybe, tiny people settled down inside his head. He quickly looked to the right and left. However, he could not see any human shadows anywhere nearby. Kurumi giggled maybe because she felt that Shido's state was funny. Ufufu, doing that is meaningless. That's because, I am currently in a different, time, from Shido-san. What? Shido gasped after hearing Kurumi's words. That, was the possibility that overheated Shido's mind just now but, now that he was told this again, he could feel a strong squeeze on his heart. The feeling of getting lost into this unknown world and an indescribable anxiety spread out inside him. However, after Shido managed to fix his wild breathing, he threw his words to Kurumi, who he has no idea where she was. Like I thought, this is Tengu City from five years ago, right? Oh my. Kurumi let out an expected voice. You already found out, when, that place is. Ufufu, as expected from, of, you. I was just lucky. More importantly, mind giving an explanation? After Shido brought his eyebrows closer and said that, Kurumi replied back with a, yes. Just like what you thought, 
I sent Shido-san back to Tengwu City from five years ago. That is the power of, Yudbet 12th bullet, Zafkiel's last bullet. Yudbet 12th bullet. Most likely, it's one of the abilities Zafkiel owns. He recognizes that it's an angel with immense powers but, he never would have imagined that this was possible. Also, the reason why I am able to talk to Shido-san now, is also because of Zafkiel's power. The, ninth bullet Tet. It's a bullet that allows me to connect to a person's thoughts in a different time axis. Well, it's a bullet I don't use a lot so I'm not used to it and it takes some effort to connect my thoughts. Connecting, your thoughts? Yes. Obviously for talking to you, I'm able to share what Shido-san hears and see too. It doesn't feel good though. Shido looked down before closing and opening his hands. Is this scene being transferred to Kurumi too? It feels like a remote control robot. Ooh foo foo, with that said, please refrain yourself from actions that no one can say, speak about. I don't mind it at all though. I I won't. He shouted back in reflex to Kurumi's joke. A girl coincidentally walking past him quickly passed by Shido with a look as if she was looking at a suspicious person. And anyway, hurry up and send me back to my time. I have no time for this farce. Right when I am doing this, the girls are. Shido shouted while clenching his fist. Yes. Shido has to go back to his time as fast as possible. Right now in the Tengu city of his original time, a great disaster was attacking. Countless beams were shot down from an inverse origami, who suddenly appeared in the sky and was messing up the whole city into rubble. Toka, the Yamai sisters, and Miku were trying to stop origami while Yoshino and Natsumi headed into the city to save the people in the city. Adding on to the problem, Fraxinus got shot down by origami when it came to help Shido, starting with Koteri and the crew, he had no clue about their welfare. In that situation, Shido, who has the power to seal a spirit's Ryoku was not present. Imagining the problems occurring at his world was not hard at all. Well, that's true, it's terrible on this side. It's only scorched earth from what I can see. No matter how hell looks, it probably doesn't look as gruesome as this. Then hurry up and... However, Kurumi made a sigh as if she was fully aware of that. Seriously, are you okay with that? Returning back to your time without doing anything. I even went through all the trouble and sent you back to the past with Zafkiel's secret of secret Yudbet 12th bullet. What, do you mean? Without understanding what Kurumi said, Shido groaned. Just like what it means. If Shido-san wants to fix the despair-like situation, the only way is to do something about the origami-san of five years ago. Origami, what? Why wait just a second? I don't get you. Well, obviously origami is here too but, she's an elementary school student five years ago right? Just what? No, you're wrong. The origami-san you will be meeting will the one that has already turned into a spirit. I should have sent her back five years ago with my, yard bet 12th bullet. Huh? Shido let out his inner voice in reflex. Origami, to this time? Yes. There is still some time left since I sent Shido-san further up the past so, she hasn't appeared yet, I will send her there after a while. What is going on? Why did you send Origami back five years? To kill her parents killer. More specifically, to kill the enemy before she became the killer. Shido felt his heart get squeezed each time Kurumi talked. The information in his head reached one intersection point. Five years ago, Origami's parents got killed by a spirit. Origami gained the power transcending human knowledge. And, Kurumi's, Yard Bet 12th bullet. Did Origami, come back to defeat Phantom? Five years ago, Shido mumbled while recalling back the other spirit at the fire disaster. But, then why is Origami inversed when she came back to the original time? Just what the hell happened in this time? That, even I have no idea. In order to find and stop that, I shot, Yard Bet 12th bullet, at you. I see. Shido placed his hand on his chest to suppress his heartbeat which was pumping wildly from just now. Look into Origami's movements who came back five years, pinpoint the reason for her inverse and fix that problem. If what Kurumi says is correct, that seems like the only way. However, there was still one thing he doesn't get. Shido sharpened his sights as if to glare at the invisible girl while moving his lips. 
Kurumi. If what you say is correct, then why are you doing this? Not only me. You got asked from Origami to send her back five years in the first place right? Yes. That was the part that he doesn't understand. Within a spirit's outside reason, Kurumi was especially a different existence. It's true that Shido was saved by Kurumi once before but, that was because it was within her interests too. It's unbelievable to think that she would use her angel for someone else. After Shido said that, Kurumi made a moment of silence before replying back. I don't particularly have any benefit, is that what you mean? I don't have many chances to test shot, yard bet 12th bullet, with someone else Ryoku anyway. But, let's see. After exhaling, Kurumi continued. In a force attempt to put it into words, I just wanted proof. Proof? What proof? The fact that humans can change history. Kurumi's tone when she said that was a little different from her usual joking tone and Shido gulped when he heard that. Change history. Yes. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see if she could turn this hopeless destruction and tragedy, into something that never happened. That, is it possible for me? I heard that history, has something lit correction powers too but. Shido said it with a difficult face. It's not like he was knowledgeable about SF but, he heard of that theory before when he saw a Time Leap movie last time. Basically, after returning back to the past with a time machine, even if a huge event that might change history occurred, a similar event will correct that change and form a world similar to the original history. But, Kurumi laughed at Shido's words. That was a weird thing you said, Shido-san. A charming breath echoed in Shido's mind. If Kurumi was here, then she would have definitely lift Shido's chin provocatively. Who was the one that proposed that? Did that person actually demonstrated time travel? T that's. No matter how big the world is, Tokusaki Kurumi is the only person that can interfere with irreversible time. And also this Seth Keel. Please don't lend your ears to nonsense made by smart scholars and authors. The thing you Shido sound looking right now, is the only truth. Kurumi said it with a plain tone. It's as if she was telling that to herself instead of Shido. Kurumi. It looks like I talked too much. Even though I shot, yard bet 12th bullet, with time to spare, you can't stay there for too long. Let's begin the operation. Kurumi regained her composure and talked. Shido clenched his teeth before swinging his head vertically. There are many things still in the unknown. But, in order to stop Origami from inversing and save the city from turning into hell, it's certain that this was the only way. Yeah, let's go, Kurumi. After saying that, Shido lifted his face and turned the direction of his toes. Origami's goal is to defeat the spirit that killed her parents. And that spirit is most likely, Phantom. If that is the case then, it should be appearing at the Tengu Nanku town which was the place of the fire disaster. Shido clenched his fist to make up his mind and ran to the destination. He doesn't know the exact time but, the sun was already setting. However, Shido's body was burning without him knowing that the summer sun has become weak. Each time Shido moved his hands and legs, sweat will flow out and would mercilessly take away his stamina. However, Shido didn't stop. He had no idea how long he can stay in this age, time, and more importantly, the girls were working hard in his original time so, he couldn't just stand still and do nothing. After running for how long, Shido reached a familiar place. Nanku, town. His speed gradually fell and he mumbled the name of the city in between his wild breathing. Yes. It was the scenery of Tengu Nanku town before it was covered in flames. It was a weird feeling. His emotions were slightly shaken by nostalgia when he saw the city he used to live in. And, at that moment, asked. A certain discovery stopped Shido's legs by reflex. Is there something wrong, Shido-san? Kurumi asked him suspiciously. However, Shido couldn't reply her. The scene in front of Shido, it was one house. It was a double-story house with a characteristic deep red roof. It wasn't really that special that it would attract someone's eye but, the moment Shido saw it, he couldn't move as if he got paralyzed. That was the house Shido lived in five years ago. Nevertheless, the house itself wasn't the reason why Shido stopped. The moment he saw it, one thought grazed his mind. Five years ago, Shido was currently at Tengu City from five years back. 
It was the day, Origami lost her parents to a spirit and she vowed to kill that spirit. However, that wasn't the only thing that occurred five years ago. At that moment Origami saw her parents kill her, the city was covered in flames. It was the flames caused by Shido's sister, Itsuka Kotori. Kurumi said this. She told me to come in contact with Origami, who came back five years and make the inverse, never happened. Shido accidentally thought it. Then, it might be possible to turn the fact that Kotori turned into a spirit, into something that, never happened. If Kotori is at home right now, he wondered if he could tell her not to go to the park today along with staying away from the spot where she encountered Phantom. The moment that thought passed his mind, Shido's legs unconsciously moved in front to his house. It was faint memories but, five years ago on August 3rd, Shido should have gone out to the city to buy a birthday present for Kotori. There was no chance for meeting his old self here. In a familiar manner, Shido opened the gates and walked to the house's back door after passing the garden. At that moment, the nameplate with the word, Itsuka, was reflected onto his eyes. At that point, Kurumi guessed Shido's actions. She then said it with a little stronger tone. Shido-san, I understand your feelings but, please give up on Kotori-san. I don't plan on neglecting origami. But. That is not it. If Kotori's never became a spirit, even you know what kind of influence will happen five years later after, that moment. Dot R. Shido widened his eyes when he was told that. The possibility that Kotori wouldn't have to turn into a spirit blinded his eyes and he didn't think about it. If Kotori did not become a spirit, Raitatusk wouldn't have found her. If that happens, Raitatusk wouldn't know that Shido has sealing abilities and the fact that the powers of Toka, Yoshino, Kagaya, Yuzuru, Miku and Natsumi were sealed would, never happened. That was something that must be avoided at all cost. Shido grinded his teeth before swinging his head. Sorry. Looks like blood rushed up to my head. No. The possibility to fix the past is a poisonous high-grade wine that will cause people to go crazy. I don't blame Shido-san for that. Kurumi said it with an understanding tone. Shido slightly brought his eyebrows closer. Just like just now, he could not feel any self-admonition included in Kurumi's words. However, it's only natural once he thought about it. The possibility to change the past. That is something anyone would wish for. Shida could not even begin to imagine what kind of anguish and thoughts Kurumi, who has this authority, had until now. Hey, Kurumi, you. The moment Shido was about to talk to Kurumi, he could hear a voice coming from the back door. It's Suka-san, it's Azumoto from next door. Shido twitched his shoulders when a voice suddenly appeared. Not here I wonder, let's go in and check. After saying that, the sound of the door opening could be heard. It was Suzumoto-san, who used to live next door five years ago. She would often share vegetables sent over from the countryside but, now that he think about it, he had memories of her often placing vegetables at the front of the back garden when Shido and his family wasn't around. He was thankful to her for doing that but, the timing now was just plain terrible. That's because right now, it the five years later high school Shido instead of the elementary school Shido. He looks like an intruder from all angles. If he was reported to the police then it would consume much of his precious time. Why what am I going to do? Suzumoto-san's footsteps were slowly approaching when he was doing that. Even though he looked around in panic, there was no place to hide. There was nothing to be done. And at that moment, a certain idea grazed Shido's anxious mind. Oh my? The housewife next door Suzumoto Naoko stepped into the Itsuka house's back garden and found one boy there. He's probably in upper level elementary school. His neuter and cute face was characteristic. Oh Shido-kun, you were here. Sorry. Nobody came when I rang the doorbell. And no. It's my fault for missing it. The eldest son of this family Itsuka Shido said it while making an uncomfortable smile for some reason. Naoko twisted her head in wonder before handing over the plastic bag she was holding to Shido. This was sent over from the countryside and if it's okay with you all, go ahead and eat it. T thank you very much. It's really helpful. Shido accepted the plastic bag and took a bowl. Eira? Uh, is there something? No, it's just that Shido-kun's atmosphere is different from usual. Eh? N no, I don't think that's true though. 
Really? Yu Yun, it was my imagination I guess, well forget it. Give that to your mom okay? Yes, thank you very much. Naoko heard Shido's voice while exiting the Itsuka house's garden. Dot 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 ha. Huh? After seeing Suzumoto-san leave the garden, Shido made a big sigh. Ooh foo foo, that was a good idea, Shido-san. Ah, I'm glad it worked out nicely. Even though Kurumi said that, he replied back while wiping off his sweat. After he did that, he found out that his hand that he used to wipe off his sweat with was smaller than his usual hand in his memories. It wasn't only his hand. His torso, legs and even the clothes covering his body has turned small. Yes. When Shido was about to be seen by his neighbor, the thought that grazed his mind was the other spirits turned into children when Natsumi used her angel hanyal that occurred once before. If Shido was an elementary school student, it wouldn't be weird for him to be there. And, Shido already sealed Natsumi's Rairayoku. Then, it was possible for him to try this out, unlike Toka's sandal phone or Yoshino's Zadkiel, but, he somehow managed to make it work. Sorry, I wasted some time. Let's go. After placing the plastic bag he just received on the edge of the garden, Shido talked to Kurumi before pouring strength into his body. But, HNN? Is there something wrong? No, how do I revert back? Shido frowns his eyebrows while sweat was flowing down his cheeks. It's because he suddenly transformed, he has no clue on how to turn back. Oh my, that is a problem. You have to head over to Origami-san now. HN, I have to revert back somehow or... When Shido closed his eyes and groaned, Kurumi leaked a giggle in his head. Shido-san, before you turn back, can you please stand in front of a mirror just once? Eh? Why? I can't see Shido-san face, which turned cute from this angle. You. Shido half opened his eyes while making a sigh. But, at that moment, the sky suddenly glow red and Shido immediately turned over to that direction. Opposite the well-ordered, organized, house roofs, a giant fire pillar soared and at that moment, it dispersed midair and attacked the whole area nearby with a wave of scorching heat. The whole city was wrapped in flames instantly, trees and houses were burning. Several screams and shouts appeared nearby and the citizens started evacuating. This is, Coterie's? It seems, that is the case. Kurumi replied to Shido's question. Shido clenched his teeth in regret. It seems, Coterie has already gone to that park. And now, Coterie was turned to the spirit effete by Phantom. Ku. Shido could not stand still anymore and ran from the spot. His body was still small but, he couldn't ask for any luxury. Coterie turning into a spirit means that Phantom is there meaning that, Origami will travel through time to go to that place. However, the group of citizens evacuating and destroyed houses from the flames was blocking the road making it hard for him to advance. Shido searched his memories from five years back to find an alternative road, and somehow managed to reach that particular park. That's the moment Shido reached that park. There were already three people there. One of them was a young crying coterie. Another was Shido from five years ago, lying on the ground face first. And, a noise like, something, was standing there looking down at the both of them. Phantom. And, the moment Shido called that name. A beam poured down from the sky and erased Phantom. Shido felt sparks in his head. That's right. Shido knows this scene. Five years ago, it's true that Phantom was shot by a beam from the sky. Shido immediately looked up. He looked up at the direction of the source of the beam. When he did that, he recognized a person there. She was a beautiful girl covered with a magical white dress with several, wings, accompanying her. However, her face right now looked frightening because of anger and hatred. Origami. Shido shouted in reflex. Yes, over there, was the spirit Tobaiji Origami who traveled through time to come here. It was still a mystery on how Origami turned into a spirit. However, origami was still not an inverse type yet. Most likely, it was going to occur now. Origami will turn, by an event that caused that firm girl stand into the abyss of despair. Up in the sky with origami, Phantom who had just disappeared could be seen with her there. Most probably, it dodged origami's attack and ran to the sky. Once origami swung her hand, the, wing, 
surrounding origami shot beams towards Phantom. Like a signal, both of them started flying in the sky. Shido-san, please follow her. You will lose her like this. A.R. Shido quickly replied to Kurumi's words and started running into the burning city to follow them. Origami repeatedly shot beams to attack Phantom but, Phantom dodged all of them and it seems that it wasn't countering back. Just like a game of tag, it flew around everywhere in the sky. Origami. Origami. It's me. Listen. You have to stop now, if this goes on you will. Shido desperately shouted at them while chasing them but, there was no response at all. However, that was natural. Not only were they far apart, she was right now in front of her sworn enemy who she has been continuously targeting her growing grudge at. But, he can't just give up because of that reason. He desperately chased after the two while shaking his throat. Origami. 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 And. A. Shido stopped and looked back at the ground when he heard a sudden voice other than his echoed. Over there was a male and female, thought to be a couple. Most likely, they ran out from their burning house. Both of their clothes were dirty and several small wounds could be seen on them. In an instant, Shido wondered why they called Origami's name but, he immediately knew the reason. At the direction that they were facing, an elementary school girl could be seen there. She has a hairstyle around shoulder length and a smart face. Yes, that's Origami from five years ago. Father, mother. Origami shouted, with tears at the side of her eyes from the happiness of knowing that her parents were safe. But, immediately afterwards, Shido felt his view turned pure white. Afterwards, a strong impact attacked nearby, and Shido's body easily got blown away since it turned small. Gwa. Shido slammed towards the block fence and leaped a painful voice. Shido-san, are you okay? Why yeah somehow. More importantly. Shido managed to raise his body and look towards Origami and the couple thought to be her parents. And. Wa. Shido lost his words when he saw them. There was a giant crater instead of the couple who were there just a moment ago, and several, parts, which used to be two humans were scattered about mercilessly. A normal person would probably throw up as it was such a gruesome scene. However, Shido remained opening his eyes without moving. That's because, he saw it. The scene origami from five years ago, who saw it in a closer position than Shido. A-R, R, R. Origami made a blurry voice while crawling to the object that used to be her parents as if she was depending on it. Next off, she grinded her teeth before looking up. She lifted her face and glared at the source of the pillar of light. And. An. Gel. Origami mumbled while looking up at the sky. Shido lifted his face as if he got flicked by Origami's voice, and mumbled. Do don't tell me. Shido felt a chill as if a bug was crawling on his body while letting out a trembling voice. Yes. The person over there was. The spirit Origami wearing a pure white astral dress. He couldn't see the face of the spirit that shot that light from there. The origami from five years ago could probably just see a human silhouette. A person with no knowledge of spirits will probably take that shadow as an angel. It was you. Origami, who was sitting on the ground, twisted those pure eyes with tremendous rage and roared. I won't forgive you. Kill, I will kill you. I will, definitely. There was no way that her voice would reach that high in the sky but... The same time she spat out those words, Origami and the pure white astral dress twisted her body and trembled. A stranger might see her as laughing loudly. But, there was no way for that spirit to laugh, Shido knows that clearly. What, just, just what is this? It only took a few seconds. But, all of that only need that much, before ending, and Shido understood everything that happened. Origami went back five years to change the fact of her parents getting killed into an event that, never happened. However, Origami found out. The real culprit that killed her parents. I see. With her vision shared with Shido, Kurumi's voice echoed inside his head. I knew that something great must have happened to make a person like Origami turn into that. Halfway into Kurumi's words, the spirit floating in the sky disappeared like it was melting into the air disappeared? Yad bet 12th bullet, effects most likely worn off. She probably went back to the original time. Dot dot uh, no way. 
Then, Shido shouted in reflex. That was only normal. The goal of Shido and also Kurumi, who sent him back into the world of five years ago, was to come back to search and also fix the cause for the inversion of Origami, who came five years back too. It's true that they were at the best seat to see the reason for her inversion. But at the same time, their goal vanished too. There was no way that history would change like this. Zhu just watched her die. Shido, who was in loss, suddenly gasped and stopped his words. The reason was simple. A part of a burning building was falling towards the origami from five years back when she was sitting on the ground. Origami. After Shido shouted, he jumped towards origami faster than his words and both of them rolled on the ground like that. Next off, the burning building part fell onto the place origami was at and caused a big spark and smoke. Gah. Staying here was dangerous. Shido made a light cough while taking origami's hand and ran onto the red road. Thus, they stopped once they managed to escape to a place which the flames had not touched. Matching up with that, Origami got and folded her knees. Ha, ha, Arare you all right, Origami? After saying that, he noticed his own mistake. It was a sudden action but, this Origami does not know Shido. It might be bad to call her name. Origami wasn't concerned at all when her name was called by a complete stranger. She just kept on trembling while looking up at the sky with soulless eyes. No, soulless, might not be the fitting word to put it. Anger, resentment, loss and grief, many of every human's negative emotions mixed together and tainted those eyes. Fa, the, moha. Origami moved her dry lips and let out her disappearing voice. Ah. Shido distorted his face in reflex when he saw that painful scene. I, Origami. He had no clue on what's the best course of action he should use, take. He had no clue on what words he should say. But, he can't leave her like this. Half-consciously, Shido hugged Origami with both his hands. As if to suppress the waves of raging emotions, he held her tightly with his trembling hands, tightly and strongly. Why ooh, ah. And for the first time, Origami leaked out a soft voice as she noticed Shido's existence. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, so. While still hugging Origami, Shido groaned as if he was crying. He was fully aware that those were irresponsible words. But, he had to say it. The world was just too cruel and merciless for this small girl in Shido's small arms to face. From now on, this girl will be walking a road full with hardships and she will find the truth, which lies at the end of her path. Shido had to shout when he found out that cruel conclusion. Origami, you must, you will notice this someday. All of the truth. But, please don't forget. You are not alone. What, are you saying? Origami replied back with a troubled voice. That was only normal. But, Shido just couldn't stop his words. I will take on your sadness. I will stop your anger. If you are at a loss, come to me. Use me if you face a hopeless situation. I won't mind if you throw everything at me. So, so. While hugging Origami tightly, he continued. Whatever you do, please don't feel despair. Dot 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 ah. Origami blankly heard Shido's voice but, after a while, her body started trembling. Are you ooh ah, you ooh ya, ah ah. After Origami grabbed Shido's clothes, she started crying in his chest to kill the volume. Maybe the thread of nervousness broke when Shido appeared or maybe the sadness of losing her parents was pressed onto her now after so long. He couldn't determine which one was correct but, Origami was finally showing emotions fitting for her young age. Father, Mother. Origami. Shido poured strength into his trembling hands to pat Origami in the back while she was crying. And, after who knows how long. Thank you very much. After a period of crying, Origami said that with a soft voice before letting go of Shido's shirt and stood up on the spot. After wiping her tears with her sleeves, she directed her bloodshot eyes to Shido. Who, are you? R, E, R. It was extremely normal now that he thinks about it but, Shido felt confused since he was suddenly asked. That answer suddenly flew out without a moment of thought for it. Trying too hard to play it off won't do anything. Shido made up his mind and looked back at Origami. I'm, Itsuka Shido. I live nearby here. Itsuka, Shido. 
Origami pondered Shido's name by mumbling before turning around. It was as if, she was trying to hide her expression from Shido. Was what you were saying just now true? A. That you will take anything? A. R. Yeah I am. Shido made a big nod at Origami's words. Those words came out half-consciously but, the contents weren't lies. I see. Then. Origami continued without continuing. I will leave my tears with you. I will give you my smile. Please take my happiness, enjoyment, everything. Eh? Shido widened his eyes at those unexpected words. This will be the last time I cry. This will also be the last time I smile. After saying that, Origami looked towards Shido for a moment. Shido lost his words when he saw that smile, wet with tears. Origami looked away once more. But, this anger is only mine. This ugly emotion is only mine. I will kill. I will. That angel. No matter how long it takes. No matter what method it takes. Angel. Shido twitched his fingers when he heard those words. But, he couldn't say it. That the spirit was origami from the future. He couldn't bring himself to tell this small girl that. So until then, please keep them for me. Until, I kill that angel. Origami said that while facing her back at him. Ori, Gami. Shido could only call her name blankly. The young Avenger ran off, leaving Shido alone there. Part 2. Inside the night with darkness falling. Kurumi let out a gloomy sigh. So that's what happened. There were currently two scenes shown to Kurumi who currently was sharing Shido's senses. If she opened her eyes, she would see black beams pouring down from the inverse origami towards the completely destroyed buildings but, if she closes her eyes, she would see the origami from five years ago run away after she vowed to have her revenge on the spirit. Now, Kurumi and Shido knew everything. The reason why origami inversed when she went back five years. This is ironic. She lifted her face and looked at origami floating in the black sky. The spirit was covered in a black astral dress that looks like morning clothes but, she was arching her body like an embryo in a womb and was floating midair. Countless, wing, in many sizes made a circle around her and was constantly showing its destructive will towards the ground below. Oh, what are we going to do now? While stroking her chin, Kurumi mumbled. It was good that she sent Shido back five years but, the only thing achieved was they found the reason for Origami's inversion. If this keeps up. And, oh my? After Kurumi suddenly twitched the side of her eyebrows, she looked behind. The reason was simple. Small footsteps appeared behind Kurumi. Who are you? What kind of business do you have with me? She said it as if the mysterious visitor was a bother to her. After a beat, the person walked out in response to her voice. Your. Kurumi widened her eyes in surprise when she saw the appearance of an unexpected person. Part 3. I. Shido, who just saw Origami went away, fell to his knees. An extraordinary feeling of powerlessness filled his lungs. Shido couldn't do anything in the end. When that happened, the view of the ground shown in his view slowly moved away as if to respond to Shido's actions. Eh? For a moment there, he thought that his body moved in contrary to his wills but, he was wrong. When he lowered his sights, he saw his body which was supposed to be childlike until just now, reverted back to its bigger version. Maybe his Ryoku was depleted or maybe the time limit was up, or maybe it was because of another reason, he doesn't know the details but, Natsumi's ability was completely released. The sound of an annoyed Kurumi echoed inside Shido's head. I don't like this. Sorry. You went through all that trouble to use, Yard Bet 12th bullet, for me and I still. That isn't the problem. But, Kurumi continued with words mixed with a tired sigh, as a response to Shido's apology. Origami herself was the killer of her parents. I see, that reason might be enough to make her feel despair. However, that event clearly won't happen without my Zafkiel. He could hear the sound of teeth grinding. It was a rare event since Kurumi was usually so carefree. Shido-san. Let me ask you this, when was the first time you met Origami-san? Well, my class changed at the beginning of my second year and at that time. Perhaps at that time, Origami-san already knows about Shido-san even though it was supposed to be your first time meeting her, isn't it so? 
Shido recalled back after he was told that. It's true that, Origami knew Shido's name. Asked. Shido noticed at that moment. It was normal for Origami to know Shido. That's because, Origami met Shido, five years ago, which was, at this time. Kurumi sounded even unhappier at Shido's response. This is not funny. This is displeasing. It is very, disgusting. Kurumi. The reason on why Origami-san turned into her hated spirit. The meeting of Shido-san and Origami-san, the primary factors used to construct the old world was entirely related to my power. If I didn't send Origami-san and Shido-san back five years, the old world wouldn't have been created. Kurumi mumbled to herself. It's true that, what you say is correct. If it wasn't for the spirit known as Kurumi, if it wasn't for the angel known as Zafkiel their world would most probably be different in the first place. B but, Kurumi did not use Zafkiel to create this ending right? Yes, of course. My main goal is to use, an action that would change history, and make the world's new history. I was quite desperate but in the end, I was just dancing on top of the hand of an absolute existence known as the, world. That fact makes me very pissed. Ah. Uh. Shido gulped in reflex when he heard Kurumi's pissed off words. But at the same time, one thought floated in his mind before, he opened his mouth. Kurumi, is there something you want to redo? Oh my. After Shido said that, Kurumi took a moment of silence before returning back to her carefree tone. If that's true then, won't it be interesting to redo my first meeting with Shido-san? Oofufu, the current me can definitely, eat, you know. Shido shut his mouth after he heard Kurumi's words. Though, it was not because he felt fear from Kurumi's scary comment. It was clearly because she wanted to make Shido confused. He had no interest in forcefully making someone say the things they don't want to. Also, now was clearly not the time to be bothering about that. But, everything ended. Shido clenched his fist in regret. Now that Origami went back to her original world, we can't stop her from inversing. Now that the origami from five years ago saw her parents get killed, her revengeful heart will not disappear. Borrowing Kurumi's words, all Shido has done was just dance on the world's palm. He doesn't know how long, yet bet 12 th bullet, effect will stay in play but, he will probably head back to his world soon. To that nightmarish world with an inversed origami trampling the earth. Yes, that's right. Kurumi talked to reply to Shido's words. That is true. Shido-san did not stop Origami-san. You didn't change the world. It looks like, that is the, end, this world, has already decided. Dot 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 Kurumi. Shido raised his eyebrows. He felt that Kurumi's roundabout way to say it was a little weird. Kurumi probably felt Shido's feeling of suspicion before giggling. It looks like it has already ended, I heard that just now. Heard, from who? The Shido-san after ten minutes from now. Huh? Without understanding what Kurumi words meant, Shido widened his eyes. What do you? Just like what it means. Ten minutes from, now. The me from the, world of the Shido-san that came back from five years without achieving anything, used, yud bet 12 th bullet, and send the Shido-san from the future to the past. Well, we only talked a little since we only had one minute to use, maybe because I wanted to save on Rai Rai Oku. The Kurumi from the future of that world sent me? Shido widened his eyes in shock but, thinking back carefully, it was not impossible. Shido and Origami came back five years thanks to Kurumi. As long as Kurumi is also at the future too, it was possible for her to send anyone from the future to the present time. But, at that moment... Shido felt a question pop up. Why would the future me, go through all that trouble to travel through time? Yes. That was the unnatural part now that he thinks about it. Yad bet 12 th bullet, should be Kurumi's secret move. It was hard to think that she would waste precious time to inform us about that hopeless future. Kurumi replied, yes, in his head to reply to him. Shido Zan, who failed to stop Origami Zan, met. Yard bet 12 th bullet, effect limit in despair and came back to the original world. But, you reached a certain idea after that. A, idea. Yes. But, it's something unachievable for the Shido-san who returned back to the present. I see. 
So that's why the future Shido asked Kurumi to tell the Kurumi from ten minutes back his thoughts while Shido was still in the world of five years back. In order to recreate history. To break the future that was determined. He left his wish to his past self. Shido felt a flame rekindling in his cooled down body. Kurumi. Yes, nothing ended yet. Let's do this, Shido-san. Let's break this shitty ass world. Shido leaked a sigh when Kurumi said a comment that doesn't sound like her before lifting the side of his lips. Yeah, I'll do anything. If everyone, can save origami. Oof oof oof, now that's the spirit. She probably felt Shido's enthusiasm. Kurumi made a pleasant laugh in Shido's head. So, what is that method? Yes. Thinking about it no, it's something very obvious. But, it's true that it's an unthinkable method to the Shido-san who ran into a state of deep despair and anxiety. Gah. After being told that, sweat flowed down Shido's cheeks. Eh hey, anyway, we're running out of time right? Let's move. Yes, yes, that's right. Time is more precious than money. Kurumi continued after making a joke. The biggest reason on why Shido-san couldn't stop Origami-san. That's because, you did not know what was going to happen, and we are going to use this to its full advantage. Yeah, that might be true. Shido made a painful face while nodding. Right after he noticed the origami that came over from the original world, the fight with Phantom started and, everything ended, without giving him a moment to breathe. There will probably be still a way if he knows these details beforehand. Kurumi sighed in a gloomy manner. Honestly, I don't really want to do this but, there is no other way. A. Hey, wa well, what should I do? The theory is simple. You should just restart. Huh? Shido let out a dumb-witted voice at Kurumi's words. W well that's true but, are you going to send me back five years with, yard bet 12 th bullet, when I get back there? That method is not realistic. At the stage of just using, yard bet 12 th bullet, once. A significant amount of Ryoryoka stored inside Shido-san has been used. It might not be impossible but, it will be a problem to me since the portion for me to, eat, soon might disappear. Oh come on. Rather, did you use my sealed Ryoryoku to help me travel back here? Oofufu, well of course. No matter how whimsical I might get, I am not so kind as to give up my own Ryoryoku to use. Kurumi said it with a tone of you got a problem? There was a lot about it he was unsatisfied with but, Shido kept quiet for now. Kurumi then, continued. But, you can gain something by slightly time traveling back from the time you are at right now. Ah, I I get it. It's just as Kurumi says. Piling up, yard bet 12 th bullet. I see, that is one interesting idea well of course, Shido-san will forcefully be sent back to this time if you don't achieve it during the effect of the first shot. TSK, then, let's make it quick. Kurumi, hurry and shoot me with, yard bet 12 th bullet. But, Kurumi made a tired sigh. All I can do now is to share Shido-san's senses. I cannot interfere with your time from here. Let alone, a bullet from Zafkiel won't reach. T then, what am I supposed to do? After Shido shouted because he could not bear it any longer, Kurumi make a small sigh as if she was blowing at his ears before continuing on. Isn't there a way? Only one method. A. Shida brought his eyebrows closer at Kurumi's words. After a few minutes later, Shido used the emergency stairs of a tall building which was located near the fire disaster. Ha, ha. His body which was been made to exercise since just now, has been screaming for a long time already. The summer and blazing heat mercilessly stole his stamina away. But, he can't be complaining now. There's only a little time left for him to stay at this timeline. While making loud noises, he climbed up the emergency stairs. Is this place, really okay? Yes, I think it's correct, probably. Probably, oh come on. He opened half his eyes when he heard Kurumi's unclear words. Shido arranged his breathing while moving his legs up to the edge of the roof to see the place which was at a dead angle from the entrance. He could see Nanku Town still burning from the building made to look down at the residence area. Sounds of the sirens from ambulance and fire trucks echoed and the evening town was really lively. 
to avoid looking at that gruesome scene. Shido averted his sights and moved his head to look at the roof again in case he missed something. But, he couldn't see anyone there. Oi, no one is here. You're sure this is the place? This is weird. That shouldn't. And. Halfway through Kurumi's words, Shido felt a chill at his back and stood still. Ah. Someone was behind him. Shido felt that through instinct and gulped. As if to match with it, an interested voice came from the visitor that appeared behind Shido. Oh my. It was a familiar voice. To prevent agitating the absolute predator standing behind him, Shido raised his hands and slowly turned behind. Over there. Why, look what we have here. It's rare to see a visitor at a place like this. After she said that, he saw Tokisaki Kurumi with a charming smile there. Chapter 7, Phantom. Part 1. Kurumi from five years ago? Several minutes before he reached the building's top, Shida was really surprised when he heard Kurumi's words. Yes. As I said earlier, there is only me in this world that can mess with time. Then. There is only one person that has Zafkeel in that timeline. The me from five years ago. But the time I can be here is limited, right? I haven't even searched for. You don't need to worry. Certainly, I must have been around there five years ago. Around here? Shido couldn't believe he was this lucky. He raised his eyebrows while looking surprised. It can't be. Did Kurumi meet with me five years ago, too? You won't say that, right? No. If I remember correctly, there wasn't anything like that. Even though I was around there, it was only to observe the great fire that suddenly occurred. To see the fire? I thought that this disaster might have been caused by a spirit. Hearing her word, Shido started to sweat. If he hadn't sealed Kotori's powers back then and they were discovered by Kurumi, they might have been her food. Kurumi sensed something from Shido's silence and slightly laughed. Please. Even I am not that low. Rewrite. Shido vaguely answered her and coughed to pull himself together. At the same time, Kurumi continued talking. I was around there five years ago. But I haven't met with Shido-san. I can guarantee that. However no, that's why this action has a meaning. What do you mean? Please think about it. If Shido-san, who hasn't met with me, meets me, then. With only this, wouldn't be the history slightly changed? Certainly, it might change. Anyway, please hurry. As I have told before, we don't have any spare time. Yeah, understood. After saying that, he clenched his fist. Kurumi, think about it. Where should I go? Shido readied himself and asked Kurumi that. And. We return now. Shido stared at the figure of the girl at the top of the building, while he was trying to calm his heart that was beating like an alarm bell by taking deep breaths. The Kurumi standing there was slightly different from his memories. No. In more correct way, the only thing that didn't change was her age. Her dress was somewhat different. She wore a monotone blouse and a skirt that had laces and frills. Her hair wasn't tied up but in its place she had Alice Band decorated with a rose. Her most characteristic part was her face. As if to hide the clock pattern, she wore an eye patch on her left eye. When he saw that dress, Shido slightly knitted his eyebrows. Then, he asked in a low voice so that only the Kurumi in his head would hear it. Kurumi? Why are you wearing an eye patch? Please don't worry about it. Was it hurt or something? Please don't worry about it. But. Please. Don't. Worry. About. It. She said it with such a strong tone, he decided to keep quiet. At the same time, the five year ago's Kurumi in front of him responded. Ara ara. She said that jokingly while tilting her head to the side in a cute way. What are you whispering? What business do you have at this place? Kurumi said so in a relaxed tone. Though, she didn't look she was relaxed at all. She had a smile on her face, but her eye was observing his moves and behavior in a peaceful but accurate way. But, Shido didn't have time. He readied himself and opened his mouth. Kurumi, I ask a favor from you. Ara? When he called her name, Kurumi bended her eyebrows curiously. You know my name. You, who the heck are you? She said so while lifting her right arm. When she did that, 
an ancient pistol flew to her hand from the shadow under her feet. Then she pointed its muzzle towards him with a smooth move. Shido shook his hand in a panicked state. Why wait a moment? I mean no harm. The moment he said that, a bullet landed on the floor right under him. Whoa! Don't move without my permission please. I have some questions. If you don't answer honestly, I can't guarantee your safety. It seems if he doesn't answer them, his heart will be stopped. He opened his mouth while raising his hand. I, I am Atsuka Shido. I came from the world of five years later. Kurumi. You have lent your power to me. Just now, what did you say? As Shido said that, Kurumi's face changed. If you are joking, you will end up dead. I wouldn't be standing in front of you if it was a joke. Please, listen to me. Kurumi narrowed her eyes as if she was measuring the truth in his words. Then, Kurumi's voice that sounded like she was amazed by the situation echoed in his head. Arara. The old me is quite cautious, right? I don't want to spend any more time. Shido-san, please touch the me in front of you somehow. Touch. Don't say absurd things. Did you say something? The Kurumi, that is pointing the muzzle towards Shido, made a puzzled face. Of course, that is natural. When looked from her point of view, he looks like he is murmuring to himself. Shido, prepared for another shot, held out his hand towards her. Please. It is okay if the gun stays like this. Can you hold my hand? I am not a naive young girl that would do something like that when asked by a stranger, okay? Kurumi, says she wants to talk to you. Exclamation mark. When Shido said that, Kurumi raised her eyebrows in surprise. Shido sharing his senses with a Kurumi from another era was Kurumi's ability in the first place. So this Kurumi, too, should understand it. Phew. Is that so? Kurumi cautiously took a step while staring at Shido and touched his hand. Then. Exclamation mark. And like a weak current flowed through, her body shivered a little. Long time no see. I wonder if it is okay to say that, right? Me. I understand. This is definitely my voice. Right? Just what happened in the world of five years ago? Somehow five year ago's Kurumi, too, can hear Kurumi's voice that echoes in Shido's head. Indeed, this way would be more effective than any kind of persuasion. Kurumi from the original world, briefly explained the situation. That we failed to change the history. And that, in order to try once again, we needed this era's Kurumi's power. We need to use, the twelfth bullet slash yard bet, like that, is that what you are saying, me? Yes. That's right. I wish for it, me. Five year ago's Kurumi felt silent for a moment. Then she sighed. Okay, then. If it is this much, I will help you. Exclamation mark re, really? Yes. However, the needed power will be collected from you. Kurumi stopped touching Shido and moved behind him. Then, at the same time she made a sound with her heel, she raised her left arm high. Now, now, come forth as Afkeel. It's your turn. As if answering her call, a giant clock's figure appeared from the shadows. Angel's Afkeel. The thing that sent Shido to this era, the angel that can manipulate time. At the same time, as he thought the shadows under Kurumi's feet looked like they were spreading, they started to coil around his feet. The next moment, a fierce fatigue attacked him. Ah, uh, gah. He remembered this feeling. Right before he was being sent from his original timeline to this one, he had felt like this when he was caught by Kurumi. Zafkiel, yard bet. Kurumi lifted the gun in his hand above. Then, a thick shadow came out from Zafkiel's, twelve, letter and entered in the muzzle. Now, we are starting. Kurumi slowly turned the muzzle. He knew Yadbet wouldn't hurt but still his body became stiff in a reflex. Even though she saw his state, she still grinned. You said you were. Shido Zan, right? I wish you a good luck. Th, thank you. Also, Kurumi. Question mark what is it? I think that eye patch fits you. Ara? When he said that, the Kurumi in his head sighed and the Kurumi in front of him relaxed. Your praise honors me. Let's meet again, five years ago. Kurumi last said that and controlled the gun that was trembling due to the fierce magical power and pulled the trigger. 
a jet black line flew out towards his chest from the muzzle. The moment Yad bet hit Shido, he felt as if his body moved along with the bullet. As if he was caught in the momentum of the bullet and his view went black. Part 2. Dosan, Shido-san. When he heard the voice in his head, he opened his eyes. He immediately understood that he had collapsed face first. He was at the same roof of the same building. Well, it might be misleading to say the same. The figure of five year ago's Kurami wasn't here and the Nanku district which can be seen from here hadn't been surrounded by fire yet. It was a success? It seems so. Kurumi responded to Shido's words. Right. He couldn't understand the specific time but he had come back in time. To a world before the fire had started. To a world before Kotri had become a spirit. And, to a world before Origami had killed her parents. There is no time to be lost in thoughts, Shido-san. Ah, yeah. After being told that, Shido stood up and took a look at the view of the Nanku district that spread out under his eyes. He clenched his fist and whispered as if he was talking to Kurumi. Let's go and change the world. Kurumi was silent for a second, then affirmed by saying yes. After hearing her affirmation, Shido started to go down the building by the emergency stairs. Now. We have successfully returned to time before the fire occurred but, what should we do now? We arrived to a good position with great troubles but it has suddenly become a mess, huh? Kurumi answered him with a teasing voice as if she was surprised. Gah. Th, there is nothing I can do. I mean, why have you been cold for a while? There is no such thing. Kurumi said so in a pouting manner. Shido wondered if he had said something rude. Kurumi, is it about the eye patch? Anyway. Kurumi raised her voice to stop Shido's talk. It was only an impolite act of rebellion and only that. The difference between the me now and the me you just saw is, that I know what is going happen afterwards. Let's organize the situation based on that. Ye, yeah. First, what do we really need to do? Kurumi asked in the manner of a teacher. Shido started to think of an answer while running down the stairs. That is, to prevent Origami from killing her parents. Yes, that's right. Then, what can you do in order to accomplish that? Something like, stopping Origami somehow. Certainly that is the easiest thing to do but, I don't think that is quite realistic. Gah. Th, that's right. Origami, who had believed that Phantom was her parents' enemy, is a devil that will definitely take revenge. As Shido raised his voice, he noticed that only that there had to be more to that. In addition, the power of the girls that turn into spirits is the strongest without a question. Practically, Shido needed to chase the girl that will fight with Phantom in a dazzling air battle with all his might. Naturally, the possibility wasn't zero. If Origami paid attention to Shido and listened to him, there was nothing he couldn't think of. However, the time limit of the Yad bet, which Kurumi had fired at the beginning, wasn't that much. This might be the last time he could rewind time. It was dangerous to bet all to such optimistic thoughts. Then, if I take her parents to a safe place, or something like that. I see, there might be a possibility of doing that and not facing origami at all. Re, right? Then. But, I wonder if they will obediently do so. If an unknown teenager comes to their house and says that it is dangerous to stay there and tells them to run away. If, if I explain the situation. I am sure they will believe you if you tell them that you came from the future and that they will be killed by their daughter that also comes from the future, right? Ah. Uh. He started to sweat when he realized how suspicious he would look. Just now the Kurumi from five years ago, had believed in his words but that because manipulating time was originally her ability and. The sound of the Kurumi in his head had quite a lot to do with it. In the first place, if he had explained the situation to Origami's parents whom had never heard about spirits, the fire would probably break out halfway through. Also, even if you managed to get Origami's parents to safe place, it couldn't be guaranteed that everything would work out for real. Huh? WH what do you mean? What if the world retracts to the original timeline no matter what, then? there might be a possibility that Origami's ray of light would be released before they could evacuate. Shida was shocked by those words. Certainly, it was as Kurumi said. At the moment Shido had returned back to this timeline by the help of the Kurumi from five year ago, 
the world had subtly changed into one that they didn't know about. It was dangerous to think to assume that everything will go on as they know it would. However, something didn't make sense. He asked Kurumi while squinting his eyes. Kurumi, you said that it wasn't possible to alter time, right? Ara, I don't remember such denial. I don't have any proofs, so I just assumed. He felt somehow confused but this wasn't the time to pursue such problems. He shook his head to pull himself together. Now, what do you say we should do? Right. Kurumi was quiet for a while as she was thinking, then she continued her words. How about making Origami-san realize that she was the culprit after the killing of her own parents? Huh? WH what are you saying? Shido shouted when he heard Kurumi's proposal. Ara, you think it is against the common sense but, wasn't what reversed Origami-san, the despair she had when she had realized that the thing she thought was a foe was her own self? Th that's right, but wouldn't the fact that she had killed her own parents stay the same then? Shido started to shake tremendously. Certainly if they used her method, they might evade her reversal. However, then the fact that she killed her own parents with her own hands would stay unchanged. Moreover, the fact that her parents had died in the hands of a spirit would remain the same. In addition to that, her desire for vengeance was pointed towards someone else at the point. Towards Kotori who caused the great fire and possibly towards Phantom who gave her power. Ask as he thought that, he let out a small voice. Question mark what happened? You stopped running. Kurumi said so in his head. Shido realized that he had stopped running unconsciously. However, before moving again, he told the idea that occurred to him in a breath. Hey, Kurumi. What is it? The point is, if Origami's enemy isn't there the moment she appears, won't it be good? Part 3 Five minutes after that, Shida was hiding in the bushes while looking at the swings. There was a single girl, who had her hair split to two, sitting on the swings. She might be seven or eight years old. She had melancholic expression and was boringly swinging while the swing squeaked. There was no doubt about it. Five year ago's Coterie. Coterie. He looked at her weary expression and had a feeling as if his chest tightened. Surely this day was Coterie's birthday. Shido had gone to the next town to surprise her with a present, but, he didn't think that she would be this lonely. When he saw the lonely Kotori, his chest hurt and he heard a chuckle in his head. Shido-san, you are a complete pervert, right? Shut up. He was annoyed by her words and moaned as a reply. Well certainly, he would be in trouble if he were seen in this scene in which him, a male high school student who is hidden, staring at a female elementary school student. There would be flyers, which states that there was a suspicious person roaming around, being distributed around the city. However, the young Kotori's moment of shining hadn't been printed in his retinas yet. Shido was waiting for the arrival of Phantom. Even so, you have surprisingly made up your mind, Shido-san. Kurumi said so in an interested tone. Shido hesitated for a second before answering. There is nothing I can do. Also. Didn't you support this idea? Well, that is right but, certainly, if you can drive away Phantom before Origami-san appears, there won't any reason for her to attack in the first place. If I can do it, I want to talk. Talk? With Phantom? Kurumi asked in a slightly surprised way. That is unexpected. I had thought Shido-san hold a hostility towards Phantom. Very much. I can't deny that. They are the one that turned Coterie and the others to spirits. But, before that I don't know anything about Phantom. I can't ignore such thing, if I do I would be the same as the guys that regard Toka and Yoshinu and the others only as disasters. When he said those, Kurumi stayed silent as if she was thinking something, then. Foo foo foo, ah ha ha ha. She laughed at a time like this. WH, what is it? It is nothing. I only thought this is Shido-san for you. Kurumi continued after laughing a little more. However, I don't recommend doing so. There is no point in talking if it is with that person. If it is the charming Shido-san, it would end up you being confused. Eh? Kurumi, you, about Phantom. Then. He stopped talking before finishing his words. The reason was simple. In his view, 
in front of Coterie who is playing in the park alone, there was a strange visitor. Age, gender or physique unknown, something. However, that was natural. As if its appearance was masked, that, was covered with something like a noise. Phantom. The being that turned Coterie, Miku and Origami into spirits. That had appeared in front of Coterie, now. Shido looked at that figure and got goosebumps. Kutari who had become spirit Efreet. He recalled her painful expression. Chido-san, you can't act rashly. Yeah, I got it. Shido was restrained by Kurumi and sighed slightly to keep calm. He embraced his arms to stop his trembling. He pressed his nails to his palms and slightly blood oozed from there. He shouldn't stop Kutari's turning into a spirit. He was told so by Kurumi just now. After Kotori and Phantom exchanged several words, Phantom turned towards her and took out something like a red jewel. And, the moment Kotori touched it, her body stared shine faintly. R, R, R. Kotori yelled in anguish. At the same time, a terrifying heat wave with her in the middle spread around and a swirling flame rose. Gah. Shido lowered himself and, mind-blowingly, he somehow reflected the heat wave. A few seconds later, he faint-heartedly opened his eyes and saw Kotori's figure dressed in a spirit clothing that looks like a kimono. That's how. Kotori had become fire spirit Efreet. Kotori. I'm sorry. He muttered bitterly and narrowed his eyes. Exclamation mark. Then he resolved himself and dashed in front of the cluster of noise that had stood in front of Kotori, Phantom. Hey. He screamed that. When he did that. Phantom made a voice that didn't resemble neither man nor woman. At that time the silhouette that is covered with mosaics in front of him, looked like it moved a little. It seems like Phantom had moved their neck and turned their view towards Shido. At the same time Shido took a thin breath and glared at the part of Phantom that seemed like the head. Hey, I wanted to meet you, Phantom. Then, he quietly called the name of the noise in front of him. There wasn't any sarcasm in those words. When he resealed Kotri's powers, he had remembered his memories from five years ago and since then, somewhere in his head he had been wishing for a reunion with this unidentified existence. Turning humans into spirits, an arrogant monster that had the power to make such an unreasonable phenomenon that defies nature. It was the culprit of the changes of Kotri, Miku and Origami into spirits and of the destruction and confusion that came with it. Towards the, thing, that had changed Shido's life he felt deep connection like it was his fate. However, the words Phantom said towards such Shido were unexpected. Huh? Phantom let out a small breath and turned her body slightly. Of course, Phantom's body was covered with noise. From his point of view, he could only see a distortion in the air covered with mosaics. But, why might it be? For Shido, he didn't have any choice but to believe that, that behavior was caused by dismay or disturbance. Of course, anybody would react like that if they were suddenly called by somebody behind them. But, that was wrong. Phantom's reaction was clearly not because she was surprised. It can't be. You were. Why are you? Huh? Shido made a puzzled face when he heard Phantom's odd reaction. You. Do you know, about me? Phantom stayed silent when it heard his question. However that was, it wasn't that it had ignored his question or didn't want to give any unnecessary information or something like that. It was only that it was so dumbfounded that it couldn't say anything. It couldn't understand the meaning of what was happening and knitted its eyebrows. There was a gap between the aloof phantom and his memories and the behavior of, something, in front of his eyes. That's why, he even thought that the noise that was in his sight might have been a different existence. Phantom slightly moved its body covered in noise and ran away while sliding on the ground. Shido-san. I know. As if pulled by Kurumi's voice, Shido followed after Phantom. At that moment, Kotori who had sat down in the park had entered in his sight. The little girl that held a power which she didn't know about said brother, brother. Repeatedly. Ku. He felt like his heart was being pulled by that look but he strengthened his resolve and turned forward. If his memory was correct, five year ago Shido should arrive soon. He shouldn't come across him. And above everything. Now, he had to stop Phantom from running away. Shido was following the cluster of noise of which he had nearly lost sight as he wasn't prepared with eyes and put more power in his legs. 
He succeeded in getting Phantom far away the park but just this wasn't enough. Shido and Kurumi's aim was to make Phantom and Origami who had come to this timeline not meet. In order to accomplish that, they needed to put Phantom to a place where Origami wouldn't find her. That's why, they had to not let her get lost. But, that was an unexpected reaction, right? While he was following Phantom, Kurumi's voice echoed in his head. Shido-san, are you acquainted with that person? Not even a little, I don't know anybody that has their whole body covered in mosaics. Phew. That's right. He shouted while running in the town that is burning brightly and Kurumi answered in a somewhat tepid way. It wasn't like Shido was telling lies. He had only encountered with Phantom at that time five years ago. Well, certainly it was that, five years ago, right now. However, it clearly seemed like Phantom knew about him. Also, it was a fact that it had met with Shido or somebody that looked like Shido. That's it. Dem Industries Managing Director, Isaac Westcott. When Shido had infiltrated in the Japan HQ of Dem to rescue the kidnapped Toka, that man whom he had seen for the first time had laughed in a really strange way. The moment he was leaving, he had called Shido. Takamiya. It wasn't because of the intense exercise he had been doing but he felt his heart beat faster. Takamiya. That was the same name with his self-proclaimed real sister Takamiya Manas. Also, Shida who was the adopted child of the Itsuka family didn't have any memory of the time before that. I am asking you, Phantom, what do you know about me? While following Phantom that continued to run away in the burning town, he shouted so. When though about it, there were a lot of things Shida didn't know about. What he was doing before being taken in by the Itsuka family. Why Westcott knew about him. In the first place, what that power he had was. What the hell was that power of being able to seal spirits' powers? He had sealed seven spirits' powers and had sent them into a life they lived together but he didn't understand anything. Coo. He grinded his teeth in frustration and stepped on the ground strongly. Then, at that moment, Phantom that was moving in front of him, stopped moving for no apparent reason. Shido, too, suddenly stopped his body that was moving with great momentum. Phantom. When Shido called Phantom's name, it moved its body that was covered with noise slowly. Somehow it felt like it looked at his way. Phantom, ha. Huh. So you gave such name to me. Then, it murmured that like talking to itself and sighed. I'm sorry. I suddenly run away. I thought it would have been better if we weren't in front of her. Phantom continued talking. The, she, it is talking should be coterie. He couldn't understand its aim but certainly it was better this way for him, too. If they had stayed at that place, five year ago Shido would arrive soon and Origami who had turned into spirit would also come. Phantom stood still without saying anything. It seemed like it was taking a good luck at him. Ah, is that it? So it was really, you are. Then, it made a gesture as if it was convinced by him. Then, at the same time, the noise covering Phantom's body dissolved like fog. Wah. He opened his eyes wide. What appeared from inside that noise was a girl. She had braided hair and an expression that was gentle like that of a mother. He felt as if his head started to spin around. That face made him feel like he had seen it before and like he had never seen it before. It made a strange feeling. That appearance. You can't see, me, yet, that's why excuse my impoliteness of using another shape. I could finally talk to you after all those troubles however, unfortunately I need to use this barrier. When Shido talked, Phantom answered with a voice that definitely belonged to a girl which was different from the one she had used till now. Another shape. Which means, this girl wasn't Phantom. But, why would Phantom do such an indirect thing? Shido thought about it for a second. Phantom kindly smiled as if she had read through his mind and moved her cherry-colored lips. You, when, did you come from? Looking from your appearance, it would be something like five or six years later, right? Exclamation mark Hua. When he heard that, he made a startled face. That was it. He didn't thought that Phantom could tell that he came from another timeline just by looking at his appearance. However, contrary to his surprise, Kurumi kept her composure. As if, she had guessed this beforehand. Phantom continued with a quiet tone. Then. What business do you have? You have come this timeline using that bullet. You didn't come only for sightseeing, right? 
Cheeto turned back and glanced at the park Phantom had been in just now. In the air above it, the figure of a shiny spirit hadn't appeared yet. After he confirmed that, he opened his mouth slightly. You, you know about me, right? Yes, I know. A lot that is. Phantom answered him. He felt that he was trembling because of tension. Think about it. Who the hell? Am I? What the hell is this power? When she heard his question, she stayed silent for several seconds. Then, she replied after swinging her head. I would like to answer that but, I don't know what kind of situation you are in. Also, I can't tell it. In addition, there seems to be a kid that is eavesdropping our talk. Eh? Shido made his eyes round and Phantom continued as if she saw through everything. Right. Tokazaki Kurumi. I wonder if you are listening to me. Ara, Ara. Kurumi made a quiet noise in his head as if she was replying Phantom. Is this your business? If that's it, you have used fairly extravagant amount of time. No. Chido casted down his eyes and swung his head. The thing I am doing now is only my problem. I have another business with you. What may it be? Disappear, right now. There was a huge amount of things he wanted to ask. He had finally found somebody that knew his past. He wanted to know. Honestly said, regardless of what should be done, he wanted to learn about himself from this, thing. However, this was the thing he had to say right now. His priority was to stop Origami's reversal. Is that, I will kill you, in a poetical way? Phantom sighed wearily. Well, I can't say I didn't expect it to come to this. As a few years later you are loved by moody spirits, there was a possibility that you could reach this idea, well, I didn't want to think about it, though. It seems like Phantom thinks Shido came from his timeline in order to kill her. Shido clenched his fist without saying anything. It would be a lie if he had said that he held no hostility towards her. He can't let off the fact that she had caused pain to young Kotori. However, now Shido didn't have any intention of doing anything with her. After taking a deep breath to calm his mind, he swung his head. It is not about killing or not killing. I just want you to hide as soon as possible. You can go to the next world, right? Phew. Phantom continued her words as if she had intense fun. Is it okay if I learn? The reason for that. That is. Shido hesitated to answer that. The reason was simple. He didn't know anything about the expectation or aim of the girl in front of him. Origami would. From the future five years later, Origami who had been turned into a spirit by Phantom would come here and attack Phantom. It was easy to say that. Then as a result, she would reverse. It was easy to tell that their aim was to prevent this. However, if this Phantom's aim was to reverse spirits like Isa Questcoat from Dem, giving her this information would cause the opposite effect. He didn't know how to answer her. While he was trying to come up with an answers, Phantom sighed impatiently. Well, it doesn't matter if you can't answer. I am sorry but my answer is no. I have some jobs I haven't done yet. Wah. When he heard Phantom's answer, he lost his temper. Wait a minute. After this, to this timeline. Shido opened his mouth to tell her about origami. However, that moment, he couldn't move his body as if it was pushed by an invisible hand. Intuitively, it was close to the feeling of being bound by the territory that AST and DEM's wizards deploy. He could hardly move his fingertips and couldn't make any voice. Chido Zan, what happened? Kurumi suspiciously asked but he couldn't answer that. Then, Phantom came closer to him slowly. After that, she raised one hand and touched his cheek. That moment! Exclamation mark! An indescribable sense passed through Shido's whole body. Ask. He couldn't understand why. But, then he understood. Shido knew that feeling. Shido, knew this, something, in the form of a girl. I have to thank Spirit of Time for today. While Phantom was touching Shido's cheek with her hand, she said so quietly. When the time comes, let's meet again. That time. She continued her words in his ear. Because I absolutely won't let you again. Because I absolutely won't make a mistake. And said those words. Exclamation mark. Shido held his breath instinctively. He couldn't understand something. He wouldn't understand sooner or later. However, 
He definitely remembers that he had heard those words before. He wanted to ask who she was but he couldn't let any sound out. Phantom drew her hand back from his cheek and wore her noise again. Then, she kicked the ground and flew towards the sky. A few seconds after that, Phantom's figure was so far that he couldn't reach her even if he jumped and the power restraining him was finally released. Coo, ha. Cough, cough. He fell down to his nest and coughed several times. However, it is not the time to do such things. Shido immediately turned his head upwards. That one. What, the heck? Then, just as he lifted his head, he stared at Fatim floating in the air and a line of light came from the east sky. Exclamation mark that is. His shoulders shook and looked at where the line of light was launched from and he was frozen. Who stood there was a single girl. A dazzlingly pure white spirit dress. Several, feathers, turned towards the nemesis by the personification of murderous intent. Spirits of ruin, stood there. There was no need to even say, it was to Baiji Origami. Origami. He screamed her name. However, there was no way his voice would reach her. Origami looked straight to only Phantom and several lines of light were released like rain from the tip of her feather-shaped angel. While Phantom unbelievably dodged all of them nimbly, she moved in the sky like she slid through it. However, Origami didn't give up. She followed after the fleeing Phantom and launched lines of light in the air without resting. What spread out there was, a few minutes ago. It was the second time. He had seen this view. He had seen it with five year ago's Kurumi before she had sent him back. Kurumi's earlier said words passed through his mind. What if the world retracts to the original timeline no matter what, then? Damn it. He swung his head to shake off the thought of resignation that floated in his mind for a moment and dashed to follow those two from the ground. I won't let it. Repeat. The scene he had witnessed recently crossed his mind. The downpour of light. The remains of people that had been crushed. Thus, the pupils of the little girl whose eyes were dyed with hatred and the revenge. Origami only wished to protect her parents. She had only tried to deny her fate that had been already decided. They were such pure feeling but experiencing such tragedy couldn't be good. This ending. I will change it. Shido put more power in his feet while yelling that. Naturally he couldn't follow Origami and Phantom who are having a tremendously high-speed air fight by running on the ground. However, his aim was not to track those two. He continued to run in the town that was covered with flames without hesitation. Before long he had arrived to the place he had been aiming. To the place Origami's both parents had died in, the world before. That was it. What he had to stop wasn't Origami and Phantom's fight but Origami's killing of her own parents by accident. Exclamation mark found it. Shido opened his eyes wide while running in the blazing red. In front of him stood the back of the figures of five year ago Origami and her parents whom stood a little away from her. There was no need to grumble about it again. He had failed to prevent Origami and Phantom's contact. So, he had no other option than making her parents run to a safe place to change their history. It should be called fortune among misfortune and now was an emergency as the town was enveloped in the big fire. A man who hurriedly encouraged evacuation wouldn't be an alien thing. The possibility that they would run away following his directions was enough. However! Exclamation mark hua. He opened his eyes and strengthened himself. The reason was really simple. At some point in the sky above, right above Origami's parents, spirit Origami and Phantom's figures stood. It seems they have come here while they had been engaged in a fight. Coo. At the same time Shida bitterly grinded his teeth, Origami launched a lot of lines of light towards Phantom to block its ways of escape. Then at the same time, the feather-type angel concentrated one and pointed its tip below. Towards the ground. It was the exact scene with, just now. Shido's face paled. Don't do that, Origami. His voice didn't reach her even if he yelled. He didn't have the chance of prompting her parents to evacuate anymore. The next moment, the critical hit would come down and would send two people to the heaven before they could even feel the pain. Damn it. Shido put more power in his foot and kicked the ground with the momentum. Shido-san? As his did such an unexpected move, Kurumi's surprised voice echoed in his head. However, there was nothing else he could think to get away from the situation he had fallen into. 
a great pillar had been launched aimed at the ground from the angel that had concentrated its power. At the same time, Shido yelled with all his power and leapt towards Origami's parents. And pressed their back with all his strength. Wa? Kea? When suddenly pushed like that, Origami's father and mother both yelled. They were pushed by his all might. They might have scraped something like their knee. However, that much would be forgiven, right? Even if, they might have hit their head badly. Shido, while his sight was dyed white distorted his lips in self-mockery. Exclamation mark. Then, while he was like that, someone's voice vibrated his eardrums. He thought it was Kurumi but he was wrong. This voice clearly came from outside. And then, right before his sight was filled with light, noticed it. It was five year ago's origami in front of him. His eyes met with hers for a second. Those eyes didn't glow with a blaze of revenge yet. The pool of resentment weren't being piled up. Ah, that's good. Shido muttered slightly. Then, he was enveloped in pure white light and he lost his consciousness. Chapter 8, Devil. Part 1. HNN. After making a soft moan, Shido opened his eyes. It seems Shido was lying face down on a bed. His left cheek was pushed into the pillow and the pillow was obstructing him from opening his eyes. It seems that his body stayed in that position for too long, because he couldn't feel his left arm. Phew ah ah. Shido leaped one sleep yawn before turning around on the bed and raised his body after he faced upwards. The same time he was released from his own weight, his left hand which he couldn't felt, slowly Jean Jean turned numb. Shido, ouch ouch ouch, frowned his face before looking around at the room. Nothing was different. It was his usual room. It was his usual furnitures, wall, floor and ceiling. In a rare occasion, Shido hung his school blazer on the chair, maybe because he was too tired yesterday. At that moment, Ari? Something was off, Shido blinked his eyes. The memories of how he went to bed yesterday were completely out from his mind. Rather, what month, what day and what day of the week is today? Before he slept, he was. The fragmented information inside his head started to connect one after another. Inside Shido's mind, he recalled back the scene before he fell unconscious. A burning city. A beam poured down. Shido immediately looked down at his body. From what he saw, there were no wounds or body parts missing. Shido was completely healthy even though he took the strongest and absolute attack from an angel. It might be thanks to Kotori's healing powers, or maybe... The moment the light was about to burn Shido, Yad Bedes time limit was reached and his body was forcefully sent back to his time. Well, no matter which one it may be, it still doesn't change the fact that he was saved. Shido made a big sigh. But immediately, the next question floated into his mind. Shido quickly got off his bed, pushed aside the room's curtain and fully opened the room's window. Where is? He looked outside while mumbling softly. The view he saw was the familiar Tengu city residential area. When he looked to the right, he could see the tall mansion where the spirits live in. Kurumi. Kurumi. Shido placed his hands on the side of his head, and raised his voice to communicate with the inside of his head. But, Kurumi's voice could not be heard no matter how long it took. Nonetheless, that was reasonable. The, Tet, Kurumi talked about was a bullet to connect her conscious to a target that was in a different timeline. Which means, the bullet would probably not show its effect when the target exists in the same timeline as the Kurumi who shot the bullet. Yes. Shido came back. He returned back to his world from the Tengu city of five years ago. No. Shido leaked a mumble. More specifically it was different. The view shown to Shido was the scenery that he was familiar and used to. The buildings, houses, roads were all the way it was supposed to be. Basically, it was not the scene of the Tengu city that got completely messed by the inverse origami. Dot 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 ah. The same time he realized that, Shido left the room with the window wide open and went down the stairs with a momentum that could make him fall. He then ran to the living room and opened the door with a loud bang. When he did that, Kotori probably got surprised. A small girl, Kotori, who was sitting in the living room sofa while looking at the television opened her acorn-like eyes even wider towards Shido's direction. Oh? What's wrong Oniai-chan? You're so energetic this early in the morning. She's an active girl with two white ribbons tying her long hair. 
It seems she woke up earlier that Shido and has already finished changing her clothes to her school uniform. Shido however shouted when he heard his sister's leisure voice. Kotori, you're safe. Dot 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 hey. After Shido shouted while breathing wildly, Kotori tilted his head as if she does not know what he was talking about. Oni-chan, are you half asleep? After she said that, he twitched his shoulders. Nonetheless, Shido's actions can't be helped. In the, old world, Fraxinus was shot down by Origami, and he had no way to confirm Kotori and the crew's safety since they were in the ship. Dot 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 Kotori, what is today's month and date? Eh? It's obviously 8th of November. Kotori said that with worried eyes. But, Kotori's response was the best information to Shido. If Shido's memories were correct, that date, was the next day after the inverse Torigami destroyed the city. Ah, Shido walked over to Kotori with a face close to crying before, Hashi, hugging Kotori with both his hands. Kotori's eyes turned black and white at his sudden actions. Kya ah. Kotori, Kotori. I'm so glad, I'm really. Gya ah. Gya ah. Kotori flapped her hands and legs. Shido was kicked in his stomach and he crouched down. But, this pain was so nostalgic. The sense of fulfillment and relief wouldn't stop overpouring. What's wrong? You're kind of weird, only I chan. Kotori hugged her shoulders with red cheeks while saying that. Well, to her who has been seeing a different changed world since five years ago, Shido's actions probably looks eccentric. Hey Kotori. Would you believe me if I said I changed the world yesterday? Hey. Kotori widened her eyes and frowned her eyebrows after a while. What are you saying Oni-chan? The return of your delusions? She then placed her finger around her chin while saying that. She's not believing Shido's words, rather, she looks like she has no clue what he was talking about. But, that's okay. After Shido made Rai smile, he swung his hands. H-N-N, sorry, I was dreaming a bit I guess. I'll make breakfast in a flash so wait for me. Oh oh. Kotori nodded while making a dubious face. After Shido made a small shrug with his shoulders, he headed to the washroom to wash his face. He has to report to Kotori about the change of the world someday. That's because, it was a big event where, just like the meaning, he rewritten the world. Thinking about the future, there was no way he shouldn't tell the Rater Tosk about this. However, just how is Shido going to explain this experience which only sounds like a dream-like story? Shido scratched his cheeks while Yu Yu making a groan. After having breakfast with Kotori and leaving the house after he dressed up, a familiar girl was already in front of the gate. Ooh, you're here ha Shido. Good morning. She was a beauty with night color hair and crystal eyes but, she was swinging her hands energetically to him. Yatagami Toka. Shido's classmate and also his neighbor. Ooh Toka. Good morning. Sorry, did I make you wait? No, I just came out from home. It's perfect timing. Toka said it with a full smile on her face. Shido laughed in reflex when he saw that innocent look. Mew? What's wrong? No, more importantly, here. After saying that, Shido handed over the lunchbox he was holding to her. Making Toka's portion together with his and Kotori's bento has become a daily routine to him. He was going to buy lunch today since he woke up late today but, he quickly prepared everything so that it would be as close as the, normal, days, which has been a while. Ooh. Thanks, Shido. If I am correct, there is that bite-sized katsu inside right? But, Shido tilted his head at Toka's next words. Eh? New? Am I wrong? I thought you said that when we separated yesterday. Toka placed his hand on his chin while bringing his eyebrows closer to recall back her memories. In this world, Shido saved Origami's parents five years ago and Origami did not invest. Because of that, Tengu City wasn't destroyed and as a result, they were going through normal days, yesterday. But for Shido, who was back at five years just a few hours ago, does not have the memories of this world all the way to, yesterday. Judging by Toka and Kotori, it seems that there wasn't a big change to the world but, there should be small events like this unknown to Shido like this one, it might be a good idea to confirm this with everyone as soon as possible. Ah, sorry, Toka. I'm kind of out of ingredients. I made another menu. Moo, is that so? But, you don't have to apologize you know? 
Every food Shido makes is delicious. So, what's inside? Ah, minced meat, scrambled eggs, peas and three-colored rice. The eggs is the sweet kind. W wow! That's the best. Toka's cheeks blushed and said that in an excited manner. It seems she's satisfied with this menu too. And, when Toka was dancing around while carrying the lunchbox, he saw two shadows walked over from the mansion. Kaka, good morning. Good work picking me up, my attendant. Bo. Good morning, Shido, Toka. Yama Ikagaya and Yama Iyuzuru, twins with similar faces. Both of them look so similar that they can't be distinguished in one glance but, after taking a good look, their faces are slightly different and also, a tragic difference of body shape which could only be thought to be God's prank, could be seen. Um? Shido, did you just thought of something really rude? The slim girl with a proud face, Kagaya opened half her eyes with a posture as if she was hugging her shoulders. In no way. I didn't think of anything. Really? It's a sin to lie to me you know? Warning. You are overthinking, Kagaya. And, the glamorous girl with her hair tied into three, Yuzuru, placed her hands on Kagaya's shoulder before saying that. Even so, it was only for an instant but, I saw Shido's eyes took a trip around our chest. Explain. That is normal reflex for a male. Dot dot oi. That isn't helping. Sweat drooped down Shido's cheeks while he opened half his eyes. I see. So he just reacted to my charming body huh? Kaka, then I forgive you. There is nothing as harsh as resisting the Amai's charm. Consent. That is correct. No matter how much Kagaya has indecent delusions of Shido every day, it's not like everyone would think like that. I I don't have those delusions. Kagaya shouted with a red face. When she did that, Yuzuru looked interested at Kagaya's response and placed her hand on her mouth to, small smile. Oofufu. Regret. Is that true? Then, the diary Kagaya wrote yesterday night was. Wait. Kya. Kya ah ah ah. Kagaya suddenly became noisy and Poka Poka hit Yuzuru's shoulders. Escape. Kya. After saying it in an unnervous voice, Yuzuru ran away from the spot. Kagaya then immediately followed after and they started running around Chido. Ha ha. Shido leaked a small giggle in reflex when he saw them. Maybe they saw Shido's reaction, Kagaya and Yuzuru made a wondering face. W what is it Shido? Why are you making such a far-sighted look? Consent. Did you grow old in one night? With Shido in between them, both of them had their eyebrows closer to each other while saying that. Shido swung his head to play it off. No, nothing at all. More importantly, we will be late if we keep this up. After Shido said that, Kagaya and Yuzuru looked at each other before making a sigh while making shrugs with their shoulders. Phew, the maliciousness is over. In consideration for Shido, I will let you off. But there is no next time. Know that people who tries to reveal my darkness, will be touched by the hands of the death god. Sneer. My darkness, laugh. Is the darkness those objects hidden under Kagaya's bed? Wa, why do you know ta a a Dash. I am going first. After Yuzuru said that, she waved to Shido and Kagaya before running to the school. Why it? A. No seriously, why? Why do you know Wu? Kagaya chased after her while shouting. Even though their Ryoku was sealed, both of them immediately could not be seen anymore, just as expected from the spirit of the wind ha. Huh? Let's go too. New? Umu, okay. After Shido shrugged his shoulders and said that, Toka blinked her eyes before nodding to him. She then walked beside him and they walked towards the school, they then reached the high school. After Shido passed the gates, he switched his shoes into indoor shoes and reached in front of the second year group 4 after he passed the corridor and climbed the stairs. But, Shido's body stopped when he placed his hands on the classroom door. The reason was simple. He was hesitant on how he should talk to the girl sitting at the left side beside Shido, Origami. The person receiving the biggest influence from five years back was definitely Origami. Unlike the small discord of memories that he have with Toka, there might be a bigger change. Shido, you're not going in? Ah, sorry sorry. After he was told by Toka, Shido poured strength into the hand holding the door. And while feeling a mix of weird feeling of anxiety and uplift, he opened the door. But, 
Dot 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 what? Chido opened the door, and viewed the classroom before making a wry smile while sighing. There was still no one sitting on the left side of Shido's seat. It seems that, she has not come to school. It somehow felt embarrassing for worrying about that. After Shido scratched his cheeks, he sat on his own seat and took out the textbook and notes from his bag which are going to be used for first period. But, Origami hasn't come to school even though he waited for a while. Moo. Toka suddenly made a difficult face. HNN, what's wrong, Toka? New. For some reason, I feel something is missing, it feels kind of weird. Dot 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 something missing? Shido wrung his neck when he heard Toka's words. But, faster than replying back to Toka, the school chime rang nearby. The classroom door opened immediately right after and a small girl wearing glasses entered the room while carrying the attendance book. It was Shido's class homeroom teacher, Tama-chan, teacher Okamin Tami. Shido's cheeks relaxed in reflex when he saw her. That's because, the Tama-chan he encountered when he returned to the world at five years ago, had the completely same appearance as now. Itsuka-kun? Is there something on my face? Ah, no, sorry. He replied back in panic when Tama-chan asked in a dubious manner. Tama-chan coughed before she started to take the attendance. Shido's surname is, Itsuka, so, his attendance check will be fast. After Shido quickly replied, he looked over to the vacant seat on the left. Origami. In the end, Origami did not appear even though the homeroom started. Is she absent today? Or maybe, Origami was late for a rare occasion. During the time Shido was thinking that, Tama-chan was continuously calling out the student name. Okay, Tonomachi-kun is present, then, Nakahara-san? Eh? Shido let out a dumb-witted voice in reflex when he heard the name Tama-chan called out. But, that was only normal. Since the attendance numbers is mixed-gendered, it was weird that, Tobayachi Origami, wasn't after, Tonomachi Hiroto. Even if she was absent for today, her name should be called. It seems that his voice was louder than what he thought. Tama-chan looked surprised and looked towards Shido's direction. Ari, did Sensei make any mistake? Eeeh. Shido stood up with a thud. But, Shido was hesitant to say the words. A thought grazed his mind for a moment there. That, in the previous world, Origami, transferred to another school. However, he won't know anything if he keeps quiet. Shido made up his mind and shook his throat. Sensei, what about, Origami? Baybump Baybump his heart pumped hard. Origami, transferred to another school, because she was recruited to Dem Industries in the previous world. That should not be applicable to Origami now that she holds no hatred to the spirits. Even though he knows that, the worst possible word that Tama-chan might say was swirling inside Shido's head. That, Origami-san already transferred to another school. But, Tama-chan's answer was different from Shido's expectations. Origami-san? Who is that? Tama-chan said that with a surprised expression. Wah! Shido opened his eyes blankly while looking around. Since he suddenly stood up and said that, Shido was currently the attention of the class but, everyone was showing weird responses at the name Shido said. Origami? Who is that? A person's name? Did Atsuka kun fave 1,000 paper cranes to Sensei as a present? No, that would mean that Sensei is in the hospital. Rather, there's no way to make 1,000 paper cranes alone. No, but it's that Atsuka kun so. Ask. Everyone started talking. Shido looked at his classmates while feeling his breathing turn wilder. They don't look like they were joking. Everyone does not know. The girl known as Tobaiji Origami. Dot 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 ah. That's right. Chido Su breathed finely. Strength left his body and both his hands drooped down. Now that he thinks about it, this event was not unthinkable. The possibility was enough. However, somewhere inside Chido might have made him avoid this. If the young Origami and her parents escaped the fire, it was normal for them to look for another house to move to. They might still be living in Nanku Town or they moved to another place just like the Atsuka family. If that's the case then, there was no guarantee that she would enroll into his rise in high school just like the previous world. Five years ago, Shido definitely changed history. He succeeded to erase a tragedy that occurred once, 
before it happened. But all of history did not change according to what Shido wanted. All the events existing in the world was connected with invisible lines. The event Shido achieved became the starting point and it was inevitable for an event outside his goal to happen in the world. Dot 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 sorry, sensei. It was my misunderstanding. Please continue. After Shido said that quietly, he collapsed onto his chair. Tama-chan looked worried for a while when she saw Shido like that but, she soon started to continue taking down attendance. While dazing off, Shido listened to Tama-chan and quietly looked at the left seat. There is no problem at all. Five years ago, he saved Origami's parents who were supposed to be dead, and Origami won't bear any hatred to the spirits. Origami should be living happily somewhere in this world. It's such a happy end that wanting more is going to bring bad luck. To Origami, the previous world was unnatural to her. She was someone who should be living in a gentle world. She should receive more love from her parents and grow up. Yes. It's okay with this. The world, should be like this, Shido. And, he suddenly heard Toka's voice from his right seat. Her tone was sounded dubious but it also sounds like she was worried about Shido. HNN, what is it, Toka? Uh, what's wrong? Where does it hurt? A. After being told that, Shido noticed something for the first time. There were tears flowing down his cheeks and falling onto the desk. Ask. He quickly wiped his tears with his uniform sleeves, before replying back, I'm alright, to Toka. Toka distorted her eyebrows into a shape but, even though she looked fidgety, she did not say anything afterwards, she might have felt that there was no need to pry into it any further since Shido told her that he was okay. Why? Should I be crying? Shido mumbled to himself. Maybe he felt happy knowing that Origami was living happily. Or maybe, he felt lonely that he could no longer see Origami again. Shido was not very sure. But, there was one. Yes, only one. Shido thought of one thing. Origami, who could not live her life as a normal girl because her heart was captured by revenge last time. Origami, who placed herself into battles like it was normal and thrown away her tears and smile. He wanted to see her smile normally even if it's just only for one time. Part 2 Evening. Kotori with her hair tied with black ribbons, was sitting in a reverse position on the house living room sofa while staring at something. Further up her sights, she saw her brother's back, Shido preparing dinner in the kitchen. The blue apron looks great on him, so much that it's displeasing. Nevertheless, it's not like that scene was that rare. But, she felt that Shido has been acting strange since today morning. He ran down energetically down the stairs during the morning, he tried confirming the date, he then hugged Kotori and after saying something that only sound like he has not taken up yet, he suddenly changed completely now and came back from school with a really depressed expression. Just what could happen to make his tension fall this far all of a sudden? Dot 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 phew. After Kotori snorted, she moved around the rod of the chupa chups in her mouth while turning her body posture back to normal. It felt disgusting. She was unhappy that an event that caused Shido's heart to shake this much happened at a place where Kotori did not know. After Kotori crossed her legs unhappily, Yoshino, who was looking at Shido like her, let out a worried voice. What happened, to Shido-san? She has fluffy hair and sapphire blue eyes. It was a girl with a height close to Kotori's. She was currently wearing a light-colored one-piece. Ni. Nee. He doesn't look energetic. Matching up with Yoshino's words. The rabbit puppet worn in her left hand Yoshinon, flapped its mouth. And as if to reply to that, another girl sitting beside Yoshino, Natsumi was making a bored face, she actually wasn't that bored, by placing her hands under her chin while letting out her voice. That listless look. It's a woman. Wah. Eh? Kotori and Yoshino widened their eyes when they heard Natsumi's words. Wah wait, what do you mean by that? Eh, woman? But, Natsumi immediately lost her confidence when Kotori and Yoshino asked her why. Dot dot ah, no, I might be wrong so, don't worry about it. Don't go weak on me now. Hurry up and say it. She grabbed Natsumi's head with both her hands and faced it towards her. When she did that, Natsumi's eyes looked away in uneasiness while she nodded. If it comes to a worried high school male, 
the reason for it is most likely a woman. So that means, Shido got dumped by someone. I didn't go that far but, a boy at that age will basically be conscious on how his action vectors are, towards a girl, maybe there is a strange rumor about him spread around the girls, or he might be treated coldly by the girl beside him, simple things like this will make boys depressed. I I wonder if that's correct. After Yoshino made a meek face and said that, Natsumi made a big nod before continuing. Yes. There is more, she would reply, a, in a serious tone when you say let's team up. Or, when you picked up the eraser she dropped, she would, ah, I don't need that anymore, you can have it, or things like that. Nanatsumi-san. Right when the club's encouragement was heated up, and you took your application form to her, she would tell you, ah, but our morning training is seriously tough so are you alright with it? No seriously, you don't have to force yourself you know? Or when we are having dodgeball during gym time and a girl ran away while shouting, kia a a a a a a a a in a serious tone when I was about to throw the ball, ah god damn it. See calm down. For some reason, the last half turned into Natsumi's hateful complaints, somehow, she's a spirit with quite a detailed knowledge of school life. Dot dot a anyway. Something definitely happened in school. Natsumi said that while her breathing was a little rough, Kotori also agrees with her on that opinion. She looked at Shido, who looks somewhat lonely with the side of her eyes while making a small nod. But well, I think it's okay to leave him alone since it's not that serious. But, it's tough to see, Shido-san not energetic. Can we do something about it? After Yoshino said that, Kotori scratched her cheeks. Well, even I want to do something about it but, asking me how is just. After Kotori sighed, Natsumi made a bitter face while saying this. If a girl is the one giving a high school boy sorrow then, only a woman can heal it right. Kotori twitched her shoulders when she heard Natsumi's words. A woman, yes, that's, Ari. Dot 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 da. Kya ah. Natsumi-san you pervert. Yoshino and, Yoshinon, probably realized that meaning too. Yoshino's face turned red while, Yoshinon covered its face with both its hands. After Kotori brought her eyebrows closer, she tun tun hit the temple of her head with her fingers while making the candy rod stand. Wait just a second. Why must I do something like that for Shido? I I will do it. If Shido Sam will get energetic with that then I will. Yoshino? Kotori replied with a screechy voice, when she heard Yoshino's unexpected words. HNN, I understand. Then leave it to me. One shot from Yoshino, and Shido will get lively. Okay, let's start. Why wait for just a moment? Kotori spread out her hand to interrupt Natsumi's words. W what? Maybe she got surprised from her sudden voice, Natsumi froze. I didn't say I won't do it, I didn't say no. I see, then, Kotori too. Fun, I have no choice huh? So, what are you planning? When Kotori folded her arms and asked, Natsumi raised one finger and said her proposal. Because the imagination just now, it looks like I can use a bit of my Rai Rai Oku. Hey. Kotori widened her eyes and let out a dumb-witted voice. However, she immediately realized the meaning of those words. Yes. Since Natsumi's mentality is exceptionally low compared to the other spirits, her mental condition will collapse easily even if it's something this simple and that would cause her Ryoku to counterflow. And, Natsumi's power was a transformation power that allows her to change her target's appearance. W wait a second don't tell me you're going to make us into children and make the, a zoo belonging only to me, again. That's no good. If she went to guardian father mood then, it will cause more burden to him instead. Kotori warned her. Yes. Last time, the girls were turned to children because of Natsumi and they were made to wear animal ears with a leotard too. However, Natsumi swung her head. This time, it's going to be opposite. Eh? The, opposite. Kotori and Yoshina looked at each other in wonder. That was close. Shido, who was preparing dinner, suddenly twitched his shoulders. Since he was cutting a cabbage while thinking, he was close to cutting his fingers. Ah, this is no good, I have to be careful. He exhaled and lightly swings his head. Unexpectedly, it seems Origami was filling his mind. However, 
He can't stay like this forever. If he restarts cooking without focusing, the girls might end up eating vegetables mixed with Shido's blood. All right. He calmed down by taking a deep breath and held the kitchen knife again. At that moment. Shishido. I'll help out. Kotori's slightly trembling voice could be heard from behind. HNN? Ah, thank you. Then, over there. Shido turned around while saying that and, froze. His hands were trembling from his loss of composure and that caused the knife to fall and stab into the ground. However, it was unavoidable. Kotori and Yoshino, both of them weren't in their familiar child appearances but have grown to girls who are about the same age as Shido. Both of them grown taller, and were covered with a special beauty to girls who placed their hands on the door to adulthood. Unlike Yoshino, whose breast grown accordingly too, Kotori's breast did not change much. But, that was not all. It was their outfits. He don't know the reason but, both of them were wearing an apron with frills over a swimsuit and a headdress on their head, making them look like summer maids which was out of season. What's more, it seems that they are embarrassed because, they were contracting their shoulders with red cheeks in an uncomfortable manner. W.H. What are you two wearing, both of you? Forget that, your body. After Shido said that in a flustered tone, both of them looked at each other before cuddling into Shido's arms with awkward movements. W. Why not? That, is right. More importantly, please let us, help too. He help out. Sweat flowed down when Shido heard their words. Since they were joining Shido's arms, he might accidentally feel their breast if he made any movements. Especially, Yoshino's were dangerous. It seems that there is some room for him, in Kotori's side. Dot dot Shido? Are you thinking of something rude? Kotori sensed something and glared at him. Shido quickly swung his head. Now that he thinks about it, Kagaya said the same thing in the morning. For a moment there. He was about to leak out a question about does girls with small breasts have sharp senses? But, Shido will become today's Akade Yukuri 11b1, for dinner if he asked so, he gave up on the thought. This situation was as if he was dreaming. But, Shido had an idea for this development. That's obvious. That's because Shido has experienced looking after this power just a few days ago. Natsumi. This is your work huh? Shido saw the top of her head twitch while it was poking out from the shadows of the sofa, when he shouted. After a while of silence, Natsumi gave up and slowly revealed her face. As expected the spirit Natsumi, who has the power of transformation was over there. Just like Kotori and Yoshino, Natsumi grew up to a high school girl. But, she was wearing a normal maid outfit and was not like them, who were in stimulating outfits. Wait over there damn it. Kotori shouted when she saw Natsumi. Natsumi. Why aren't you in a swimsuit? We already agreed that all of us will go like that. Natsumi looked away awkwardly at Kotori's words. No, well you see, thinking carefully, it's kind of embarrassing and so uncool and somewhat idiotic. So you let us wear something this idiotic? Kokotori-chan, calm down. Even though Yoshino calmed her down, Kotori still looked pissed. She rolled up her invisible sleeves and jumped towards Natsumi. Why you little, I'll make you like us. You you are. Natsumi raised a screechy shout and quickly ran away from the shadows of the sofa. However, Kotori did not give up too. Both of them then started running around the living room. Wait right there. I'll tear off those clothes. Yeah. I dot am. Going. To. Get. Raped. Who the hell is going to do that? Kotori shouted to Natsumi, who said that with teary eyes. Dust puffed up nearby them because they were running around vigorously. Oh oi, both of you calm down. It's, not good, to fight. When Shido was trying to stop them, he took off his apron and walked to the living room. Yoshino with a troubled face followed him from behind. But, that didn't go well. Since they were playing tag in the living room with many obstacles, Natsumi's leg got caught under the carpet and fell towards their direction. Of course, Kotori who was chasing behind her also had to stop suddenly. She dived to Natsumi's back with all her might. Wa wa wa. Wa. Kya. Why? All their voices mixed together and afterwards, they caused a grand crash with the sofa and table dragged into the process. Incomparable to the amount of dust when Kotori and Natsumi were playing tag, huge amounts of dust puffed out. 
Ouch, are you all all right? Shido raised his body while saying that with a groan but, his voice screeched. That's because, his face was thrust into Natsumi's skirt when they fell. Natsumi's butt which was separated with one thin cloth expanded in his view, causing him to gasp. Kya. You you are ah 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 ah. The same time they shouted, Natsumi stood up as if she felt a backlash from something. Shido's face got squashed for a moment there. Hey, what are you doing Shido? A are you okay, Shido-san? Why yeah. Shido, who replied to their voices, stopped his words again. It probably got caught onto something when they fell. Kotori's bottom swimsuit was slid down, as for Yoshino, her bra part got unraveled, causing her voluptuous bust to peek out from the side of the apron. Yoshinon performed a fine save though. They realized that a moment later. They dropped their sights onto their body and their face blushed red. Kya a a a a a a a Both of them shouted at the same time and crouched down to hide their breast and buttocks. At that moment, Natsumi was pushed over when she stood up and once again fell onto Shido's face with her butt. Yukiya a a a Three shouts and one voiceless shout echoed throughout the Atsuka living room. Ha, that sucked. After a few minutes, Shido cooled his nose with a wet towel while making a big sigh. Kotori, Yoshino, and Natsumi already reverted back to normal. From what Shido could see, they were dropping their shoulders apologetically. Phew, I'm sorry. I am sorry, Shido-san. Sorry. Starting from the right side, they started apologizing. Shido made another sigh before making a wry smile. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's my fault to make you all concerned about me. You wanted to cheer me up right? After Shido said that, three of them nodded while they were still apologetic. Looking at them like that, Shido scratched his head. It seems, he was so down that the girls could easily find out. Even though he was told not to break the spirit's mental state in a daily basis, this was the completely opposite of what he should be doing. After Shido placed the towel on the table he pan pan slapped his face to take focus. Thanks, you girls. I am focused now. I am okay now. Shido saw their cheeks relaxed a bit when he said that. Kotori immediately opened her eyes before folding her hand to act tough. Foo foo, that's good. I won't pry on what happened to you but, the spirits will feel uneasy if you keep that up. Ah, sorry. Shido felt that Kotori acting tough was kind of cute so he made a wry smile while shrugging his shoulders. But, it seems Kotori does not like to be taken light of by Shido. She made her mouth look like a shape and continued. It'll be a problem if you keep losing focus like that. We won't know when a spirit will appear. Of course for unknown spirits, there is still Kurumi and also even Devil. Eh? Shido raised his eyebrows in reflex when he heard the code name Kotori said. He hey wait a second there, Kotori. Devil who is that spirit? He looked back at Kotori and replied back. Devil. At the very least, it was a name Shido did not hear before. However, Kotori brought her eyebrows closer in doubt. What are you saying Shido? It's that spirit hunter devil you know? Alongside Nightmare Tokisaki Kurumi, she's the target we have to be the most cautious to. Don't tell me you forgot. Alongside, with Kurumi? Sweat flowed down Shido's forehead. This world has a slightly different kind of flow compared to the world Shido knew. He was forced to know that today. If that's the case, there is a possibility that a spirit Shido does not know has appeared already. However, it was hard to believe that a spirit worth being cautious alongside that worst spirit Kurumi would appear. Kotori folded her hands with deeper doubt when she saw Shido's reactions. Are you, seriously saying that? What is wrong with you today? It's as if your memories until yesterday completely disappeared. Ah, sorry. He slightly lowered his head when Kotori's words were close to the mark. Kotori then made a sigh before making the rod of the chupa chups in her mouth stand. Dot 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 so, you really don't remember? Ah, uh, can you explain to me if possible? Uh, about that devil. When Shido said that, Kotori sighed once more before nodding. Devil. We confirmed her manifestation but, we have no success in contact, she's an unidentified spirit. And. Kotori left one moment gap before continuing her words. This is just my speculations but, she might be an inverse type. 
Wa? Shido widen his eyes in reflex. An inverse type. What do you mean? Are you saying that an inverse spirit appears normally? Like I said, I don't know the details. Kotori said it irritated. This information must be something the Shido of this world has to know. The question of, why an inverse spirit appeared did not stop popping out but, there were mountain worth of things he does not know. He regained his composure and continued his questions. What was that, spirit hunter, you said just now? Just like what I meant. Devil does not appear alone. She will only appear when other spirits manifested as well, and attack that spirit. Fanatsumi, it would have been dangerous if the girls didn't went there to save her. After Kotori said that, she looked towards Natsumi. Maybe she recalled back the events that happened then, Natsumi's shoulders were slightly trembling. Why wait? Attack spirits? That's... Yes. It's just like the AST and Dem. At first, we suspected her for being a part of their organization. That, just maybe, they tamed a spirit to attack other spirits. But from what we can see, Devil is not associated or raiding the neither Dem nor AST. Actually, both the AST and Dem also attacked Devil. Then why would Devil attack the spirits? Who knows? There might be a reason but we won't know until we ask her. She would immediately blink somewhere so Raitotosk has not come in contact with her, not even once. Kotori shrugs her shoulders exaggeratedly. Sweat flowed down Shido's cheeks while he placed his hands on his chin. The spirit that hunts other spirits, devil. A weird odd feeling appeared inside Shido's heart when he heard that. Hey, can I see an image or a video of that devil? We do have it but, I think it's meaningless to see it okay? Eh? What do you mean? When Shido asked, Kotori, Yuan, scratched her head while moving the candy's rod up and down. Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. Wait over there. Kotori left the living room, after she said that. She then immediately brought a B5-sized terminal tab from her own room. It's this. Take a look. Kotori placed the tab on the table and played the video. A completely destroyed city was shown. There were smokes and explosions nearby and he could tell that it was in the battlefield. Inside there. That, was there. It was a human silhouette covered with darkness. I see, it's no wonder that Kotori said, it's meaningless. Not only was it difficult to distinguish the human shape, her face was covered in darkness and could not be seen. But, the part where several wings were floating around that human provided enough convincement to give a name devil to that silhouette. When he saw that, ah. Shido leaked a soft voice. It was not because he saw the spirit's strange appearance. It was because he knows this spirit. It's true that he can't see her face and expressions. But, Shido knew. He saw this spirit before. No, way. Katakata his teeth clattered. His whole body trembled with short intervals in between. That's because, that's, origami. Yes. That was origami, who turned into a spirit and inversed. Part 3. The next day. After Shido reached school with Toka like yesterday, he leaked a loud yawn, when he reached his own seat. Toka, who was sitting at his right side, opened her eyes in wonder. Mew, are you sleepy, Shido? Ah, I didn't sleep enough yesterday. Moo, that's no good. Are you okay? Ha ha, well, I guess I'll take a nap before dinner after school. After Shido made a wry smile, he simply wiped the tear oozing out from his eyes and made a small sigh before absent-mindedly gazing to his left seat. The seat that Origami used, in the previous world. The reason for his lack of sleep was obvious. The reason was divided into two big roads last night. For the first one, he went outside. Shido slipped out of his house alone after dinner and head towards a certain place. Yes. It was the mansion Origami used to live at the previous world, and the Tengu-Nanku town residential area where the fire disaster occurred five years ago. There was one reason why he did that. He thought Origami might be there. However, reality wasn't that sweet. There was no one living in that mansion's room and the house that the Tobaiichi family used to live had another signboard placed in front. He asked the people living in the house about the Tobaiichi family just in case but, they don't know their exact location. Origami. Shido looked at the empty seat while mumbling to himself. The video Kotori showed yesterday. 
the unidentified spirit devil shown inside, was definitely Tabaiji Origami. What's more, she was not a normal spirit, but an inverse type. Creaky clenched his teeth. He doesn't get it. In the world five years ago, Shido should have succeeded in changing history. Origami should be living as a normal girl in a normal world. But even so, just what happened to make Origami turn into a spirit? And why was she inversed? Furthermore, judging by what Kotori said, Origami attacked other spirits. If that's the case then it's no different than the time she was with the AST. And, Devil will disappear too when the spirit got lost. Thanks to that, the city won't suffer that many damages. His head hurt because there were many things he don't know. Just what happened in this five years and this world. Chido scratched his head. Damn it, why is that the only? He recalled back another action he took yesterday while saying that in irritation. The other action Shido took. That was to collect as much information of this world as possible. The moment he found out about origami and this world, endless amount of uneasiness and questions filled his mind. He thought that just maybe, events different from the one in Shido's memories might have occurred in this world and he does not know about it. Or maybe, events that should happen never happened at all. Shido returned home and talked to the girls, Kotori looked quite suspicious though, and managed to peek into the Fraxinus database even though it's brief. Conclusion, he found out that the flow of history in this world almost matches with Shido's memories. Kotori turned into a spirit five years again, and found Reitato scroll. On 10th of April, Shido met Toka and sealed her. After that, Yoshino's sealing, Kurumi's and Mana's encounter, the Yamai sisters' sealing the battle with them and the sealing event for Miku and Natsumi. Everything matches exactly to what Shido knew. Yes, beautifully leaving out, his relations with Tobaiji Origami. When he was thinking about that, the chime signifying the start of class time rang and the door opened with his homeroom teacher Tama-chan entering the room. We stood up when we were told to, bowed down before sitting back down. Okay, good morning everyone. Let's work hard for today as well. Tama-chan said that with a smile. But, Shido didn't hear most of her words. He looked out the window blankly while resting his chin on his hand. As expected, he had to see Origami one more time. After thinking for one whole evening, that was the answer Shido reached. When he found out yesterday that everyone didn't know Origami, and when he found out that the Shido of this world has not even met Origami before, he thought that he would no longer be associated with Origami anymore. Actually, he felt that this might be the best choice for Origami. There was just no way that, meddling with Origami's life when she is living a happy life was a good thing to do. Shido felt that it was enough if Origami was living somewhere in this world in peace. But, now that he saw that video, he could not say that any longer. The ravages of war clinging around Origami weren't over yet. Shido's mission wasn't over. This disgusting world was still burdening her with a cruel fate. Nonetheless, Shido was too unknowledgeable about this world. However, even if he made his resolve, there were several walls blocking him from his goals. In the first place, the origami of this world does not know about Shido. Even before that, he does not know where origami is. Like I thought, I can't do anything alone. After Shido mumbled that with an inaudible volume, he tun tun tapped the table with his fingers. As expected, he needs Raitatusk's help on how he should move. Once he gets back home, he has to explain the situation to Kotori and look for Origami. Dot, believing something like changing history by slipping through time was doubtable but, they won't flat out refuse since this was related to the spirit devil. Okay. While looking outside through the window, Shido gripped his fist to strengthen his resolve. And, at that time. R, oh yes. Today, I will introduce a friend to all of you. Okay, come in. The same time Tama-chan said that as if she recalled back the matter, Gara the classroom door opened and a girl entered. It's a transfer student. He felt that it was rare that a transfer student would come in at this time but, it wasn't the time for him to be concerned about that. Shido did not look away and took a glance towards them. But, hey. Shido opened his eyes in shock when he saw the girl walking to the teacher's desk. It was a slim girl with a graceful face like a doll. The color covering her back was a little pale and it made her look like a princess from another country. The moment the girl appeared, he noticed his classmates turned noisy. 
The males leaned forward with an, ooh, while the girls had sparkles in their eyes. However, Shida was the only one astonished within them and stared at the girl's face. The reason was simple. He was familiar with that girl's face. Okay, please introduce yourself. Tama Chan asked the transfer student. The girl then nodded before facing forward and talked with a soft voice. I am Tobayachi Aragami. Everyone, glad to meet you all. She then took a deep bow. Everyone in class turned noisy. A part of the students probably recalled Bakshido saying the rare name, Origami, yesterday. Some were tilting their head wondering why, maybe they read too much into it vulgarly, they looked towards Shido with a prankster's smile. But, Shido didn't have the leisure to respond to that now. Wah! He widened his eyes and a trembling voice leaked out from his lips. Although her hair length was different, it was definitely Mr. Baiji Origami inside Shido's memories. When Shido couldn't let out his voice from the shock, Tama-chan moved her sights to look around the classroom. Eee, -e as for Tobayachi-san's seat, the seat beside it Sukakan is empty I see. Can you sit over there? I understand. Origami agreed and slowly walked towards Shido's direction. But, Origami suddenly stopped after taking a few steps. The reason was immediately known. Their eyes met since Shido was staring at Origami. Ask a. The same time Shido leaked a short voice out from his throat, Origami widened her eyes in surprise. Her eyes met with a boy who was staring at her. There was no way she wouldn't be surprised. However, it was strange. Origami's reactions looked a little different from the said reason. No way. You're. Yes. She said it as if she was familiar with Shido's face. But, after Origami immediately swung her head to regain her composure. She then changed completely by bowing down formally before settling down on the seat designated by Karma Chan. Shido looked at Horigami's series of actions while feeling his heart pumping faster. What was that just now? Horigami knows Shido? It was impossible, thinking logically. However, then just now. Okay. Let's start with the attendance. Tama Chan started calling the student's name with a cheerful voice but, none of it entered Shido's ears. Chapter 9, Instinct Part 1 Huh? Kotori's suspicious voice could be heard over the other side of the phone. Nevertheless, it was something natural. Shido would probably give the same reaction if she suddenly calls him during break time to report about that information. Yes. Shido slipped out of the classroom after the homeroom ended and called Kotori after he reached an empty spot. Kotori was giving agreeable responses when she first picked up the phone but, the rustling sound of her changing her ribbon could be heard halfway through and she said those words. Kotori followed her words with perplexed words. Wait for a moment there. What is going on? Please explain in details. Dot dot just like what I said. Devil, transferred into my class. Shida bitterly said that words he told Kotori just now, once more. Like I say, I don't get your meaning. Why would devil transfer into your school? No, in the first place, devil is an unidentified spirit. We have not confirmed her neither her name nor face before. Just how did you know that the person that transferred in is devil? That's... That was a good question. Chido hesitated. I have no time now so I'll explain the details when we get back home. But, I am serious. Believe me. After Shido said that, Kotori kept silent for a while before Ha making a sigh. I get it. I'll send an observation unit over just in case. Anything more, will depend on the results we get. You believe me? It was something he said but, it was a little unexpected. When Shido let out a surprised voice, Kotori replied back with a tired manner. Honestly, it's a 50-50. But, there's no way I won't do anything if I was told that Devil's identity is known when we are clueless about her. She then continued on. I don't think Shido would say something without any proof anyway. No, even if it's a gut feeling, you have done enough for me to believe those words. Kotori. However, if you are thinking of making Raitatoska investigate and get information about a girl you like, you won't get away easily. I I won't do that. After Shido shouted, Kotori, un, groaned. Then, we will start investigating now. Uh, what is that female student's name? Origami. It's Tobaichi Origami. Tobaichi Origami. 
to Baiji. Kutari stopped her words at that moment. Her throat sounded softly as if she recalled something. Isn't that, perhaps it's, A.S.T.'s Tobaiichi Origami? Huh? Shido widened his eyes when he heard Kotori's words. A.S.T. It is the abbreviation of the anti-spirit team, even within the JGDSF. It's true that Origami was affiliated with that organization. But, this should be something in the previous world. There's no way for Kotori to know that. Shido twitched his shoulders when he thought that far. Kotori, don't tell me you have memories of the previous world? Huh? What are you saying? You're still dragging yesterday's dream again? However, Kotori replied back with a calm tone. If I am correct, there is a member with that name in the AST. She fought with the girls many times before. But, she resigned just a while ago. Wah. Shido's words got stuck. It's not like Kotori regained her memories of the previous world. But even so, Origami was still affiliated with the AST. The reality those two facts shown. It was something really simple. Origami is in the AST in this world too. Just why? What do you mean by why? You mean the reason why she quit the AST? How would I know that? Kotori probably misunderstood Shido's mumble as a question. Kotori Fune snorted while saying that. But now that you mentioned it, the time when Tobaiichi Origami resigned AST and the time Devil started appearing, matches. Fumu, if the reason why she turned into a spirit was because she resigned then. Kotori groaned while started mumbling something. But, half of those words passed through Shido's ears. Inside Shido's head, the fact that Origami entered the AST was swirling inside his head. The reason why Origami entered the AST in the previous world in the first place, was to kill the spirit that killed her parents. In this world where her parents were saved, just what kind of event pushed Origami to do such a thing? Hey Shido, are you listening? Why yeah, sorry. Shido got surprised when Kotori called him. Moo, get a grip. Anyway, we will be investigating if whether or not to buy Origami as a spirit. Shido, you report to us too if you find anything. But, if Tobaiichi Origami really is that devil then she is a really dangerous inverse type. Please don't be reckless. Why yeah, sorry about that. After Shido said that, he offed his phone. He leaned against the wall after stuffing his phone into his pocket. The much information got too complicated inside his mind, and he couldn't arrange all of them. But, nothing will happen like this. After Shido took a deep breath, he then returned back to the second year class 4. When he entered the classroom, he found a crowd of people at the window side. It seems everyone was interested at the cute transfer student. Origami was making a troubled face in the center of his classmates. And at right at that moment, the chimes signifying the start of class time rang and everyone went back to their seats while waving back. He saw Origami Ha exhaled, after she waved back to them. Ha ha. Shido's cheeks turned softer by reflex when he saw that unfamiliar scene. If it was the origami he knew then, she won't change her expression at all. But, this was something he doesn't get. Why would origami enter the AST in this world? Why did she become a spirit? Why, did she inverse? And also, how is she able to return to her human form and maintain her consciousness even though she inverse? It's just plain mysterious no matter how much he thinks. And, the teacher entered the classroom when Shido was thinking. Class is about to start. Sit down. Ah, sorry. After Shido quickly returned to his seat, he took out his textbook and notes onto the table. But, naturally, he can't focus in class. Shido's sights were directed towards Origami's direction. Like I thought, I have to talk to her at least once. Shido does not know anything about the Origami of this world. But, people would probably crowd around her like just now, if it becomes break time. Judging by this rate, it is going to be hard for Shido to talk to her. After Shido immersed himself in thoughts for a while, he wrote words at the edge of his note. He then tore it out and folded it before placing it onto Origami's table without the teacher noticing. Origami, who noticed that, tilted her head. After looking at the words written inside the piece of paper, Origami widened her eyes in surprise. At that day's break time, after Shido sneaked out of the classroom, he headed towards the stairs leading to the roof. 
Since it was far away from the classroom block, there aren't many students that would come here. Actually, the stairs were so quiet that it made the hustle and bustle echoing in the school a lie. However, that does not signify the fact that no one was here. There was already one girl standing there. It was the transfer student, who is the topic of the day, to buy Origami. Even within the students that passed their three years here in the school, only a very small number of them knows of the existence of this isolated area. It's weird to think that a transfer student would be at such a place. However, Shida was not surprised. That's because. Uh, this. Origami took out a torn piece of paper from her pocket and showed Shido. It's true that it was Shido's handwriting and the words were mainly to tell her to come here at break time. Yes. Shido called Origami out here. Ah, sorry. Calling you out all of a sudden. Yuan. That is okay. Dot dot dot. So, what do you want? Origami asked with a slightly stern expression. But, it was probably normal. She was called out to this remote place by a male student she first met. It's not weird for her to feel danger. Rather, Shido should be grateful to her for listening to his request and come here alone. However for some reason, it's quite a new experience that instead of Shido being cautious of Origami, Origami was the one that was cautious of Shido. Ask. Shido scratched his cheeks while wondering what he should talk about. There were mountain worth of things he wanted to ask but, suddenly pressuring her with them will bring out the possibility of strengthening her cautiousness. Hey, Origami. Hey. Origami made a surprised face. Shido didn't get the meaning at first but, he immediately realized the reason. So sorry. Tobaiji, san Sorry for calling your name. Yuan, I was just a little surprised. Uh, it's Ukakun. Origami said Shido's name. Shido made a wry smile when he heard that unfamiliar call. Is something wrong? No, nothing. More importantly, Tobaiji san You said something when you saw my face during the morning, right? What was that all about? Asked. When Shido said that, Origami made an expression as if she recalled back something. Sorry to rub you in the wrong way. Itsuka-kun looked exactly like a person I met a long time ago so, I got surprised. A. Hey. Shido raised his eyebrows in reflex. That's, me? Yuan, there is no way. That's because, I met that person five years ago. Itsuka-kun is still in elementary school. Also. Origami looked downwards. That person already passed away. Five years ago, in front of me. Shido realized something when he heard those words. The identity of the person Origami was talking about. That person is definitely Shido. It's true that when Shido saved the parents of the Origami from five years ago, his eyes met with Origami even though it was just for an instant. Is that all you wanted to talk? I want to go back to class. Ah, wait a second. Shido quickly stopped Origami, who was going down the stairs. Shido has not gained any of the information he wanted. Nonetheless, he could not see any advancement if he acts as a student that knows nothing. He made up his mind and opened his mouth. Perhaps, the person you met five years ago, was during the fire disaster in the Nanku town? Eh? Origami widens her eyes when she heard Shido's words. How, do you know? Just when she was about to finish, Origami made a surprised face. Perhaps, that person was Itsuka Kun's older brother. Hey. Shido let out an idiotic voice when he heard Origami's unexpected words. It seems, she thinks that Shido is the brother of the person she met five years ago. But it was probably normal for her to do that. She won't believe him if Shido told her that it was him. He does not want to have her misunderstand this but, if he is able to advance the conversation smoothly then it had to be done. Shido judged that and tilted his head forward. Well, around there I guess. When Shido said that, Origami suddenly changed her expression. Her eyebrows distorted and her face looked as if she was going to cry soon. To Tobayachi, San. Origami walked to Shido and after taking his hands, she took a deep bow. Your brother saved my father and mother. If not for that person, they would have died on the spot. It might not be enough no matter how much words of thanks I give you but, let me say this. Thank you, thank you very much. A.R. Shido got taken back at Origami's reaction and replied back vaguely. 
But, her words were able to give Shido one important information. As expected, Shido successfully saved Origami's parents five years ago. Shido exhaled in relief. Asked. Origami noticed something and immediately let go of Shido's hands before she lowered her head one more time with her cheeks blushing. I, I am really sorry, that was all of a sudden. No, it's okay. He made a wry smile when he felt a weird strong emotion from the reaction that does not look like it belongs to Origami. However, the same time he confirmed one reality, the other problems turned even more mysterious. Uh, Tobaiichi-san. Tobaiichi-san's parents were saved right? Yes. Origami nodded. Shido exhaled before continuing. Then, are you living together with them now? No. My parents died in a car accident four years ago. Dash? Eh? Shido raised a high-pitched voice in reflex when he heard those words Origami said while she was looking downwards. In no way. The correcting force of history, such a word grazed his mind. Kurumi did not deny in or agree this but, in the end, the powerless feeling of unable to change the death end of Origami's parents no matter what he does, attacked Shido. Itsuka-kun. Origami frowned her eyebrows in suspicion in response to Shido's shock. That's normal. It was only natural for her to feel something was off if a boy she first met today showed such a reaction. However, she swung her head to calm herself down before lowering her head. I am sorry, even though, Itsuka-kun's brother saved them. No, there is no such thing. But. Origami lifted her face and continued on with a dignified manner. In the one year after Itsuka-kun's brother saved my father and mother, I received many things from them. That was something that I won't get if not for Itsuka-kun's brother, it is something precious to me. I am, really thankful. He could not see any falsehood coming from Origami's face when she said that. I see. Shido said that while slightly looking away. It was really sad that Origami's parents died and he felt sorry for her but, the words he heard from Origami just now helped him quite a bit from the thought that what he did was all useless. However, Origami said that her parents died from a car accident. If that is real then. After making his resolve, Shido lifted his face, stared at Origami's eyes and opened his mouth after he gulped. Then, why did Tobaiichi san enter the AST? A. Origami gasped when she heard Shido's words. Yes. That was Shido's question. Origami's parents escaped the angel's attack on that day on the fire disaster. If that happened then, Origami shouldn't be harboring any hatred towards the spirit. Why do you know of the AST? When Origami was about to finish, she recalled back something and raised her eyebrows. Perhaps. Itsuka-kun has gone outside when the space quake alarm was initiated? Eh? Asked. Shido let out a short reply when he heard and saw Origami's words and suspicious expression. That's right. Origami affiliated with the AST in this world too means that there was the possibility that Shido was seen running to the spot to talk to the spirits. AR, actually. Dot 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 like I thought. I wasn't mistaken after all. Hey. This topic was raised several times in the team. That, there was a citizen still around the danger zone. I felt that the person looked similar to, that person at that time, but, I thought that it would be Itsuka-kun. After saying that, Origami's sights turned stern. It is really dangerous. Please avoid that from now on. Yeah. Shido replied back vaguely when he was pressed for an answer. Even though he was told that, as long as there is a mission from Raitatoskra, he has to continue standing in front of the spirits from now on too. Just how did she take that reaction? Origami exhaled. He was prepared if she wanted to pursue it for more but, Origami did not pry further into his situation. Instead, she made a strong-willed expression and looked back at Shido. You asked, why I joined the AST? Yeah, can you tell me if it's okay with you? Origami tilted her head forward when Shido said that. Itsuka-kun, if you know the AST then, you should also know the cause for the space quake right? Spirit. That's right. A special biological disaster, spirit. And, you might have already investigated this but, the one that killed your brother at that fire five years ago, was a spirit. That's. Shido's throat rang as if he was speaking ambiguously. 
Bushido was alive and well like this but, he probably looks someone that got erased to origami at that time. Origami clenched her fist harder and continued. That person sacrificed himself to save my father and mother. The reason for my current self, is thanks to him. That's why, I thought this. I don't want any more people to end up like him. That, I will become someone that would protect the people from the spirits. Ask. A meaningless voice leaked out from his throat. It felt like the scattered puzzle pieces were concentrating into one frame. In the previous world, Origami made up her mind to defeat the spirits because of the anger caused by the spirit killing her parents. Shido went back to the world of five years ago to avoid that and successfully saved Origami's parents. But, the secondary, Shido's death, that happened when, her parents' death, was avoided, became the new live coals to Origami's new determination. How, ironic. Shido felt his heart turning noisy at the wicked prank of fate. Itsuka-kun. Origami tilted her head maybe because she felt suspicious since Shido was silent. Shido's fingers twitched. Ah, uh, no, nothing. Of course he was not okay. But, he could only answer that now. Shido succeeded in changing the world. But in the end, Origami has witnessed something. She witnessed a spirit, killed a person. However, the meaning of that does not only show despair. The events that happened in the previous world and this world were different. The results were the same at first glance but, instead of her parents that she was with for several years getting killed in the previous world, in this world, the only person Origami saw die was a young man who she has no clue what his name was. More importantly, that young man was now living normally like this. If he could explain that fact properly to her then, she might. But, Shido bit his lips at that moment. There was one big problem he forgotten. Yes. Not only did the origami of this world turn into a spirit, she also inversed too. Shido was not very clear on how to make the inverse appear. But, he was very certain that the spirits have to fall into deep despair for it to occur. Shido looked at origami once more. It's true that her atmosphere and talking pattern was different from the origami he was familiar with. However, the girl right in front of him right now does not look like she feels despair to this world at the very least. Kuturi warned him not to be reckless. However, he had to ask her this. Can I ask, one more question? What is it? Origami tilted her small head. Shido made up his mind and asked her. Why did tobaiichi san turn into a spirit? However. Hi? Origami widens her eyes in wonder at Shido's words. Uh, turn into a spirit. What are you talking about? Hey. It was Shido who widened his eyes this time from that unexpected reaction. He thought she was playing a fool but, he was wrong. Origami really does not know what Shido was talking about. What do you mean? If I am correct, that's. And, when Shido mumbled softly while thinking about something, the bell signifying class was about to start soon, echoed in the school. It seems lunch break was over. It looks like lunch break is over. I will be going back first. Thank you very much, Itsuka-kun. I am very happy to have talked to you. She then went down the stairs after she said that. Ah. Shido let out his voice as if he was relying on that back. There was still mountain worth of things he doesn't know. He felt that he must not let Origami go back now. Can we talk, a little longer? But, it's already time for class you know? It doesn't have to be today. If you have a free day, can I meet you again then? Eh? Isn't that? Origami made a surprised look and her cheeks blushed next. After seeing that reaction, Shido noticed it one beat later and, ah, his face turned red. That way of talking sounds just sounds as if I was inviting her to a date. Uh. When Shido was being flustered on how he should take fix those words, Origami looked away while opening her lips. Uh, can you give me some time to think about it? Hey, of course. After Shido replied by reflex, Origami bowed down at the spot. Then, I'll be going now. She then jogged down the stairs. Dot 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 honestly, it was an unexpected scene. She's girlish, he feels bad to the origami of the previous world for saying this but, her reaction does not look like it belongs to origami. No. Shido slowly swung his head. Origami must be a girl like this in the first place. 
her personality turned to a calm and rational stance because of her parents' death. But, what is this weird feeling? He feels that the current origami is cute but, his heart feels somewhat lonely or it feels like it is lacking something. I might have gotten too used to the old origami. After Shido mocked himself, he followed origami and went down the stairs. While tiredly mumbling to himself and walking through the corridor, he reached the second year class 4. The English teacher entered the classroom immediately and the fifth period started. And, after who knows how long passed since class started. Suddenly, Origami, who was sitting on his left side, started making odd movements. HNN? Feeling something was off, Shido looked over there to see Origami tearing a piece of paper from the edge of her note and writing something on it. She then folded it into half and placed it at the edge of Shido's table while avoiding the teacher's eyes. It's like what Shido did during class at first period. This is. After Shido received it, Origami's cheeks blushed and after a moment of looking around in a chaotic manner, she made her textbook stand and hid her face inside. Part 2. After school on that day, Shido went up the school roof alone and while he was leaning on the floor, he was staring at the clouds drifting in the sky. He took out the folded piece of paper from his pocket and held it up to the sky. I am free this Saturday. That paper was given by Origami just now. It looks like the reply to Shido's invitation. There was a small mail address written under it. Saturday, huh? After saying that, he put the paper back into his pocket and took a light stretch. He managed to make a promise. Without Ratatosk's help, and judging by the fact that it's a girl he first met tentatively, it wouldn't be exaggerated to say that he gained a big gold star of excellence. Nonetheless, there was still a mountain worth of problems. In the first place, was it really possible for Origami, who turned into a spirit and inverse to not know what happened to herself? Several thinkable possible conclusions popped up in Shido's mind. The dumbest and yet the most possible one, was that it was all Shido's misunderstanding. It's true that he saw Origami in the video Coterie showed him. But, he can't deny the fact that another spirit might have an astral dress that look exactly like Origami's. What's next was simply the possibility that Origami was lying. It didn't look like it to Shido but, it's not like Shido studied criminal psychology nor was he a famous gambler. It's more than enough to think that he was tricked by Origami's acting. Or maybe. Don't tell me, that there are two Origamis, there is no way right? Shido mumbled that and laughed tiredly. Anyway, he has to consult Ratatos concluding with that matter. But, Shido Fuara leaped a big yawn when he was about to raise his body. At the same time, he felt his body gradually relaxing. It was only normal for that to happen to him. He has been searching through the database the whole night yesterday so, he didn't had a good sleep. Ori, Gami. Shido mumbled that name before closing his eyes. After who knows how long passed. H.N. Shido opened his eyes after leaking a soft moan. After a few seconds, his mind awakened and he noticed that he fell asleep. It seems he was tired beyond his expectations. Ah, this is bad. What time is it? Shido frowned his eyebrows from the odd feeling when he took his phone out from his pocket to check the time. H.N. Something feels different from before he fell asleep. After a few moments of thinking, Shido realized the identity of the problem. It was a pillow. Even though Shido did not place anything under his head, he could feel something oddly soft under there right now. When Shido was about to extend his hand to under his head to confirm the identity of that feeling, a girl immediately fell into Shido's view. Oh my, pranks are a no-no. You are? He suddenly widens his eyes from the surprise. Late after a beat, he realized the identity of the feeling under his head, and also the girl. Ku, Kurumi? He called the girl's name with a screechy voice. Yes. The girl that entered Shido's view was the spirit Tokisaki Kurumi, who sent Shido back five years ago. It seems that Kurumi was giving a lap pillow before Shido noticed. Ooh Fufu, nice to meet you, Shido-san. Your sleeping face was cute. It was really embarrassing so, Shido jumped off Kurumi's lap. Oh my, oh my. Kurumi giggled because Shido's reaction was funny to her, before standing up with elegant movements. Kurumi's outfit was not the usual red-black astral dress that he was used to seeing. 
It was the Ryzen high school uniform that Shido saw when he first met Kurumi. Her long bangs were covering her left eye which was carved with the number of the clock. Kurumi, you. Shido's body got nervous at that moment. Now that Shido thinks about, there might be a chance that the Kurumi existing in this world might not have the same memories as the Kurumi Shido knew. Shido was forced to know that today. It was a normal procedure to be cautious around the worst spirit Kurumi. But, after Kurumi widened her eyes, she placed her hand on her mouth and laughed. It's okay, you don't have to be that cautious, Shido-san. If I wanted to, eat, Shido-san then, I would have done so when you were sleeping defenselessly. You. It's just as Kurumi says. Sweat flow down Shido's cheeks. But, she's not someone to be relaxed around with. Even though Shido agreed with Kurumi's words, he kept a watchful eye at her behavior without lowering his guard. Oh my! How distrustful! We are comrades that change the world after all. After saying that, Kurumi shrugged her shoulders jokingly. Shido widened his eyes when he heard those words. Kurumi, you. Yes, I remember. I know of the previous world. And Origami-san too. Shido felt goosebumps when Kurumi said that name. That's obvious. Other than himself, she was the first person in this world he met that knows of origami. It's like a traveler who was thrown in the desert finding a guide. Shido halted his clingy emotions to Kurumi and opened his mouth. Kurumi, listen to this. There is something wrong with this world. Origami. She became a spirit, right? Kurumi said it as if to cover Shido's words. Shido widened his eyes in shock. You knew? Yes. I found out just now though. I see. Shido slightly looked downwards before he continued. Just, what is going on? Did something happen to Origami? Even I am not sure what it is. Hawewe ear. After saying that, Kurumi made a spin. If it's the Origami-san now then, it's not like there is no way to find out. We really? Yes. After Kurumi smiled, she used her heel and stepped onto the roof. When she did that, the shadow lurking under Kurumi's foot covered her body and formed the red-black dress. Astral dress. The castle and armor protecting the spirits. Shido glared at her cautiously when Kurumi suddenly manifested that. Oofufu, please don't look so scary. Kurumi said that while holding up her right hand. A long pistol jumped out from the shadow when she did that before settling down in her hands. Kurumi licked her lips and continued. If I use this, Yud, and shoot Origami-san then I can find out just what life she has been going through in this world. Well of course, I can't take everything in but, if I focus on the point on how she become a spirit then, I think I can gain the information you wish for. Yud, I get it. Shido widened his eyes. Yud. If he was correct, that bullet will give Kurumi the target's past memories. If she uses that, she will probably be able to gain the knowledge on what happened to Origami. But, if that's the case then, you could have just used, Yud, on the inverse Origami of the previous world to find the cause right? When Shido asked her without any particular reason, Kurumi shrugged her shoulders exaggeratedly. Well, that will happen according to theory. This only happens if I manage to get close to that Origami-san and shoot her with, Yud. You. Shido's cheeks twitched. It's true that, she don't have such a time for such a leisure activity, if she was dealing with the inverse origami. A anyway, we will be able to find the cause for origami inversing in this world if we have that right? I am counting on you, Kurumi. Lend me your power. Ooh Fufu, what should I do? Kurumi placed her gun mouth at her lips as if she was enjoying this. After school, origami, who was on her way back alone, came back to rise in high school. There was one reason. When she was going back home, she noticed the hair ornament she usually wear, was missing. It didn't really hurt for losing one small pin but, it's a different story if it's the one bought by her late mother. Nonetheless, it's not like she knew clearly where she dropped it. In the end, Origami followed back the path she walked and after looking through the, entrance, corridor and classroom, she reached the stairs leading to the roof where she spoke with Atsuka Shido during the afternoon. Ah, found it. After Origami leaned down, she then picked up the pin dropped on the floor. It looks like she dropped it when she was talking to Shido. 
It probably happened when she grabbed his hands excitedly when she found out that he was brothers with the boy at that time. I have to be careful. While mumbling that, Origami simply cleaned the pin with her fingers before wearing it on her hair. And at that moment, a Origami saw two people on the roof through the glass. One was her classmate, Itsuka Shido. And the other person, was the spirit nightmare wearing her red-black astral dress. Ask. The moment she recognized that, Origami's consciousness got shut down as if there was a power outage. H.N. Shido felt that he heard a creaking door opened at the direction of the roof entrance. When he looked over there, he saw a girl standing there looking downwards. Ori, Origami? Yes. He couldn't see who it was for a moment there since she was looking downwards but, it was definitely Tobaiji Origami. Even though class was over just what business does she have here? When Shido was questioning that, he quickly stopped his words. The reason was simple. Shido recalled back the spirit Kurumi standing beside him right now. In this world, Origami was also affiliated with the AST until a while back. Which means, the possibility that she saw Kurumi was not zero. At the very least, she probably saw her in documented videos. Oh Origami, this is her. Even though he managed to make a promise with her, it won't be good if she make a weird misunderstanding. Shido raised his voice to somehow fool her. However, Origami continued looking down as if she could not hear Shido's voice and while both her hands were limp, she slowly walked forward. Origami? Oh my oh my? When Shido called her name suspiciously, Kurumi distorted her eyebrows to match with him. Afterwards, after the shadow wrapped Kurumi and covered her in black, she immediately returned to original appearance. This is the first time meeting you in this world, I think right, Origami-san? Well, there might be a chance that you met me before but... SPI writ. And... Halfway through Kurumi's words, Origami mumbled that before jet black darkness spread out from her body like a spider's web. The scene was like, only the surroundings around Origami turned into night time. Shido widened his eyes in reflex when he saw that weird scene. Wah. Next, the darkness swirling around Origami entangled to her body and formed into a morning dress. That was definitely... Astral dress? Shido let out a voice filled with surprise. Yes. It was the spirit armor the astral dress that Origami, who appeared on the roof, was wearing. What's more, it wasn't the pure wedding dress like the one Shido saw but instead it was the black dress after she inversed. Suddenly, the area was filled with strong gravity and a nervousness which was strong to make breathing hard. His legs were slightly trembling, and he was close to collapsing if he ever relaxed. However, it was the most natural thing ever. The, Demon King, that is the avatar of destruction and holds tremendous power. That was what manifested in front of his eyes right now. Like I thought, your devil. Origami did not answer even when Shido asked. However, that was the only thinkable answer now that he saw her like this. At the very least, it wasn't Shido's misunderstanding. If that is the case then, it would mean that Origami was lying as expected. It didn't felt like it at that time but... Shido-san, standing there might be dangerous you know. Kurumi suddenly said that to him when he was thinking in shock. Next. Several clusters of darkness popped out around the silent origami, it then expanded and formed a giant, wing. He saw that before. It was the appearance of the angel that destroyed the city of the previous world with raining beams, her inversed form. Demon king of salvation Satan greater than. After origami mumbled that, the countless, wing, pointed its tip towards their direction. His body froze from the sudden event. In the next moment, Shidodon was pushed aside. One beat later, he noticed that it was Kurumi that pushed Shido aside. Gah. It was already too late when he noticed that, Kurumi already jumped up to the sky. The beams shot by the, wing, shot towards the spot where Kurumi used to be at just now, pierced through the school fence and flew into the sky. That was, quite a violent greeting. After Kurumi shouted, she then pulled the trigger of her pistol. When she did that, Hardened shadow bullets were shot towards Origami. But, the, wing, floating around Origami extended out into a shield and easily blocked the attack. The remaining, wing, pointed its tip towards Kurumi up at the sky and... Ku. 
the black beam was shot towards the defenseless Kurumi. The beam pierced through Kurumi's chest and stomach, her head and limbs were also severed. The silhouette of a delicate girl was reduced to a pitiful corpse within an instant. Kurumi? As if to match with Shido's shout, the parts which used to be Kurumi fell down from the sky. The same time they touched the ground, they started disintegrating like ash. Oh origami, you! Shido lifted his face and stopped his words. Eh? He then let out a dumbfounded voice. It's obvious on why he did so. Origami, who killed Kurumi, fell to her knees powerlessly and the countless, wing, floating around her turned into light particles before disappearing into the atmosphere. And right after that, the black astral dress decorating Origami's body opened and she returned back to the uniform appearance, similar to what she was in just now. It's as if, she achieved her goal by killing Kurumi. What, is this? Shida was unable to understand the event happening in front of him and after a while later, Origami slowly lifted her face. And, Ari, Itsuka-kun? What are you doing in a place like this? After she recognized Shido, she said that in a surprised manner. Huh? Shido's eyes turned black and white at that unexpected response. That unmalicious expression and tone doesn't make him feel that she shot Kurumi just now. If that was acting then, she would be a famous actress that will leave her name in history, or a genius criminal. What the heck, is this? When Shido mumbled in a dumbfounded manner, Origami tilted her head in wonder. However, rather than directing that response to Shido, it looks like she was trying to recall back why she was on the roof. Perhaps, it happened again. After Origami said that softly, Pan Pan she dust her lap while standing up on the spot. Again? Wa watch again. Eh? Ah, you heard me? Origami awkwardly scratched her head when she heard Chido's words. Actually, my consciousness has been shutting down recently. I think it's anemia or something though. Your consciousness? Chido brought his eyebrows closer while he gulped. Origami looked at Shido oddly before, ah, she raised her voice as if she recalled something. Uh, now that I think about it, did you read the paper I gave you in class? Hey. Why yeah, I read it. After Shido answered, Origami turned around and faced her back at him. Uh, so that's it, you see. After saying that, she ran away from the roof. Ah, it was too late even though he tried to stop her. Origami entered the school and Tun Tun went down the stairs. Having left alone on the roof, Shido stood still blankly for a while. Origami appeared, turned into her inverse spirit form, killed Kurumi and left without knowing anything. The whole event probably only took five minutes. However, Shido's surrounding made a weird turn in that small time. Kurumi. Shido called her name and... Yes yes, did you call? When Shido felt a shadow appearing beside him, Kurumi, who was killed by Origami just now, popped her head out from it. Oh my, you don't look that shocked. Something similar happened once before. Shido scratched his head while answering her. Most likely, she probably switched with her clone at the point when Origami appeared. I don't like the way you use and throw away your clones. Even though they might be clones, they are still alive right? Oofufu. Shido-san you are so kind. But you need not worry. It is possible to recreate the, me, that got killed just now with the, eighth bullet head. He silently exhaled. His and Kurumi's value to life is too far apart. It seems that Kurumi will not talk about that matter anymore. She looked towards the direction where Origami disappeared to, to change the topic. What do you think about that Origami-san? What, even if you ask me that? Honestly, he doesn't know. He made a troubled expression and placed his hand on his chin. Well, one thing is for certain, using, tenth bullet, yud, to gain information looks tough, and that's fact. That's, true. He had no clue on what kind of situation Origami was in right now but, there was no mistake that she turned into her spirit form when saw Kurumi. It will be tough getting close to her like that. Why, did this happen? I, is what I did. A mistake. After Shido said that painfully, Kurumi Fu sighed. I don't think so. If you didn't save Origami san's parents at that time, then, the Tengu city of this world should be trampled mercilessly by the inverse Origami. This situation is not the worst. 
Don't you think so? Th that might be true but. Shido hesitated when he was told that. It's not like he didn't understand what Kurumi meant. Thinking of what happened in the previous world, this world right now could be called peaceful. But, Shido couldn't agree with this. Just what happened to Origami after that? He got curious about that. Kurumi giggled maybe she saw Shido's expression. Well, I know Shido-san would feel that way. It's true that even I am interested on how the world was rewritten by just changing one event. Exclamation mark then. Shido stopped his words when he reached that point. Kurumi erected one finger and blocked Shido's lips. However, I am not that kind you know. Anything further up here, will require another fee okay? After saying that, Nishi distorted her lips. Shido gulped when he saw that gruesome smile. Fufu. Kurumi shrugged her shoulders when she saw Shido's appearance and spin around one more time. Okay then, I will be leaving now. Let's meet again, Shido-san. After leaving only that, Kurumi disappeared into the shadows. Part 3. So. After Shido got back home, Koteri, who was waiting for him with her black ribbon commander mode, said that while making the rod of the chupa chups in her mouth stand. Can you explain what is going on, Shido? After she said that, she glared at Shido. Shido clearly knows the reason for this. It was about origami. There were three people right now in the Atsuka family living room. One was Shido, the other was Kotori and the last one was a sleepy woman, who has prepared a small tab with her already. It's rated Tosk's analyst officer Mura Sam A. Ren. E. Even Ren San. HNN, well, think of me as a secretary substitute. I will leave if it's inconvenient for you. And no that isn't true. Shido scratched his cheeks while saying that. There wasn't a single spirit around and they were probably told to stay in the mansion. Looks like they really want to hear Shido's circumstances. Okay, go on Shido. Kutari jerk her chin to urge him. Why yeah. However, even though he was overpowered by the atmosphere, Shido still hesitated. It's true that. He would tell them his situation when he gets back home, in order to gain help from Raytotoskra. But, the moment when the time comes, he felt lost on how to explain the event that happened to him. Kutari snorted unhappily maybe because she guessed Shido's thoughts. Dot 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 phew. What, can't talk after reaching to this point? Or maybe, are you feeling uneasy that I can't understand Shido's talk? Don't look down on me. I wonder if Shido looks at me as an unreliable commander? No, I didn't plan to do that. After Shido swung his head, Kotori pouted her lips as if she was sulking and leaped out a soft voice. Why can't you count on me a little more, Oni I chan Shido widened his eyes after Kotori told him that. He then scratched his head before making a sigh. That's right. Sorry about that, Kotori. After a self-admonition, Shido slightly lowered his head. Just, why must he be that scared? Kotori, the girl in front of Shido is much smarter than him and is a very strong girl. This might sound weird but, what I am going to tell you is undeniable truth. Will you listen? After Shido said that, Kotori's expression brightens up in an instant. But, she quickly twitched her eyebrows and returned to her commander mode face before nodding. Yes, of course. After Shido made a wry smile at Kotori, he started talking. About... The fact that he was acquainted with the girl called Origami. About, the fact Origami turned into a spirit, inversed and destroyed the city. About, the fact Shido traveled back in time five years using Kurumi's power to prevent that, and by saving Origami's parents, he managed to change the route for the world to move to. About, the fact that Origami exists in this world as the spirit called Devil. It took around five minutes. Shido calmly revealed his experience to Kotori and Ren. And, that's about it. After he finished his story, Kotogu groaned before making a small nod. Rewriting the world, I see. I finally understand why Shido acted weird yesterday. She said that and placed her hands on her chin. Well, I will believe you for now. There is nothing that comes to mind for Shido to lie to me. Also. Kotori signaled to Ren. Ren. H.N. made a short reply and after she manipulated the tab in her hand, she faced the screen towards their direction. H.N.N. 
Shido peeked into the screen before gasping. The image shown was the appearance of inverse Torigami standing on the high school roof. At the edge of the picture, Shido and Kurumi were there. It was exactly the scene Shido just experienced. This is. Yes. This is the image taken by the automated camera on today's evening. We sent several camera to look for information regarding Tobaiji Origami but, I never would have thought to see this decisive moment. Kutari made a painful face while Fuamu groaning. Tobaiji Origami is definitely devil. But, she does not know about it, actually, I had ran analyze her parameters but, she wasn't lying at all. Then, as expected. Yes. There is a possibility that Tobaiji Origami has not realized that she turned into a spirit. Shido gulped when he heard Kotori's words. Is that, even possible? This is a pattern we never seen before but, as long as there is a real example here, we can't deny that fact. I have no clue on why this happened though. When Kotori said that, Ren, who was manipulating the dab made a small sigh while stroking her chin. Can I say something? HN, what's wrong Ren? HN, this is just my speculations or just my reasoning but, there is a point I question in Shin's story. Question. What is it? Ren nodded before continuing after hearing Shido's words. Ah, Shido succeeded in changing the world. And, everyone does not remember the previous world, you said that right? Yes. The only ones that know about the previous world is me and Kurumi. That's it. Eh? After Shido tilted his head, Ren erected one finger. Dot 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 I just wondered why you and Kurumi are the only ones that have the memories of the previous world. Kurumi might be okay because of her ability but, I don't get the reason regarding Shin's case. Yu Yun. Now that he was told that, she's right. Shido was the one that changed the world so, he was satisfied with that thought but, it's true that his current self is the Shido, who has lived in the new world he created. He doesn't know of the clear answer on why he has memories of the previous world when instead, he shouldn't be having any of those memories. Most likely, there must be some kind of condition to save your memories of the previous world. Condition, what kind? I don't know the details. If we leave Kurumi out as an exception then the sample cases we have is too little. But for example, let's say that the condition is, getting shot by Kurumi's, Yard Bet, and, have Ryoku, how about that? Question mark and that's. When Shido made a troubled face, Kotori sitting opposite him, ah, widen her eyes. I see, if several conditions are needed then, the moment Tobaiji Origami received Ryoku by Phantom, there is a possibility that she will recall back the memories of the previous world. Regardless the fact that she has memories of this world. Ah, Shido finally understood after he heard Kotori's explanation. Why wait just a second there Rensan? Which means, are you saying that the inverse origami, is the origami that regained back the memories of the previous world? Ren quietly closed her eyes at Shido's words. I said this already. This is just my speculations. It's just a possibility. But, it's fact that thing makes sense if it is thought that way. B but, origami was normal when she came to school, forget that, she should be the origami that has memories of the previous world right? I won't know the details unless we ask Kurumi but, unlike Shin, who was his memories of the previous world in the first place, Origami has memories of this world. Just what would happen if memories regarding the previous world were forcefully poured into her mind? I don't think it would give a good effect to the owner of those memories, at the very least. In order to protect herself, it is possible to think that the Origami who has memories of this world and the Origami who has the memories of the previous world, is separated. Ren continued on. Dot 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 the thinkable switch that will call out the origami who has memories of the previous world would be. The existence of spirits, so to speak. Kotori made the rod of the chupa chups stand and said that. Ren, most likely, agreed with her. Judging by her reaction when Toka was in class, she might only react to Rai Ryoku. If that is the case then, it is extremely dangerous to manifest the limit astral dress in front of her. It's true that Origami turned into a spirit when she saw Kurumi. And, she returned back to the normal Origami after she killed Kurumi. B but, if that really is true then, what should we? What are you saying? After Shido said that with a trembling voice, Kotori quickly interrupted him. 
It might be true that our opponent is the deadliest and worst inverse spirit devil. But, turning it to the other side, she will only turn into a spirit in special conditions even though she has tremendous Rairaiaku. That's. Chido said that much before clenching his fist. It was just as Kotori says. Nothing will start if he keeps running. This might be an irregular case but, as long as we know that Dabaichi Origami is devil there is only one thing Reitatosk will do. Kotori looked towards Shido. It needs not to be said. Shido pulled his lips and nodded. Reitatosk's philosophy, to pacify the spirits which is the cause of the space quake with peaceful means. And in order to achieve that, one method is needed. And that's, to, date them and make them fall for him. Kotori made a satisfied nod when she saw Shido's response before putting the rod of the chupa chups between her fingers and pointing it at Shido. So with that decided, let's start moving immediately tomorrow. Shido, somehow take contact with Origami and invite her to a date. The latest is within this week. Ah, that's right. At that moment, Shido recalled something and, ah, let out his voice. Question mark what's wrong? I already did that. A date promise. She told me that her Saturday was empty. Huh? Kotori shouted loudly maybe because Shido's answer was very unexpected. W what's with that? Did you have a love chat before our observation results? Shido you did that? N no, I didn't really love chat with her. Dot 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 then why did the topic change to dating? Well that's because. When Shido was having problems answering, Kotori Jai stared at him. Fuuan. Looks like I need to hear what kind of relationship you had with Dabaichi Origami in the previous world. W.H. What are you? With hand movements like a cat cornering a mouse, Kotori patted Shido's chin. Shido's face turned pale at that weird sensation. Part 4. Ah. Night time. While lying down on her bed, Origami hugged her long pillow and was rolling around. The reason was simple. She was currently embarrassed at her own actions she took today. Even though it was him that invited her, that reply was just too maidenlike. Not only that, she even met up with him again on the roof. What kind of female manga main character are you? It was a situation where she wanted to retort that to herself. But, after Origami exhaled, she faced upwards from the bed and gazed up at the ceiling. That young man, the moment she saw Itsukashido's face, she was really surprised. The young man carved deep inside Origami's memories. Shido really looks identical to the young man that sacrificed himself to save Origami's parents five years ago. Maybe that's the reason, an odd emotion attacked Origami the moment she saw Shido's face. No, that wasn't all. The moment she heard his voice. The moment she smelled him. The moment she touched his hands. Origami felt an indescribable emotion in her heart. Just what was that? It was not disgusting. However, the weird feeling felt like she was tickled from inside her heart. Don't tell me this is. Origami let out a soft voice. An unidentified emotion. A feeling she has never felt before. This might possibly be. At that moment, her cell phone left beside her pillow received a message. The sudden ringtone caused her to bounce up. She then calmed down by taking a breath and after extending her hands to the cell phone beside the pillow, she found that the sender of the mail was Shido when she looked at the screen. Dash. The instant she recognized that, her heart started pounded so hard that she does not even know why. But, she can't stay frozen like this forever. She took a deep breath before fiddling with the screen and read through the text. What was written there was an apology for suddenly inviting her today, a text that he will be honored to see her again and also, the time and meeting place for Saturday. Wah wah wah. After Origami dropped the cell phone into her hands as if she held onto a heated rock, she started rolling on the bed in panic. She can't calm down for some reason. Her head was in chaos even though she only received one mail from a boy she just met today. Oh oh yeah, a reply. After ten seconds of chaos, Origami finally recalled back what she should be doing and poured in strength on the cell phone's keypad. Dot dot meeting spot and time understood. Okay. But, her hand stopped right before sending the mail. Is this reply really okay? Is this just too simple for all that matters? After Origami silently erased her text, she fixed her posture and retyped the mail again. 
She replied back to Shido's mail with each words typed in carefully, she expressed poetically that she was happy to talk to him, she can't wait for next Saturday and she would get a strange feeling every time she thinks about Shido. But, am I a maiden, seriously? Feeling embarrassed halfway through, Origami's cheeks blushed before erasing the text again. In the end, Origami only managed to send a mail reply to Shido on the next day. Part 5 11th of November, Saturday. Shido walked to the Tengwu station alone. The sky was clear blue. Although the air was a little chilly, the sun was warm and it doesn't feel like the temperature of a day closing to winter. It was the best weather for a date. Even so, aren't you a little too early? The promised time is at 11 right? Kutari's voice could be heard from the small Incam equipped in his right ear. This Incam was connected to the airship Fraxinus floating about Shido's spot approximately by 15,000 meters and the whole crew in that bridge will be providing support to Shido's date. No. Shido replied back softly while taking a glance at his cell phone screen. 10.12 a.m. There was still 48 minutes until the meeting time. It won't be weird if Origami is already here. Of course, I can't say that this Origami is slightly different from the one I know but, it's better than making her wait long right? After Shido said that, Kotori, Fu Uen, talked with a meaning behind her voice, through the Incam. You are quite informed huh, for just a mere classmate. Kotori said it with thorns in her tone. Shido made a dry smile while sweat was flowing down his forehead. When she asked his relationship with the origami in the previous world, he replied that as his answer but, it looks like, Kotori didn't believe him. It was because of you all that I became acquainted with origami in the first place, know this. Shido twitched his cheeks while complaining to the Incam. Actually, even though it started because of the event in five years ago, the reason why Shido started talking to origami frequently was because of the, training, Kotori proposed in the love chat with origami. He told that to Kotori too just in case but. Who knows till do I don't know what you are talking about. Gah. In reality, the Kotori of this world probably has no memories of saying that. Shido clenched his teeth, wondering how to reply back. He reached the station hall right when they were talking about that. The meeting place with Origami was in front of the fountain in the station hall. It was the same meeting spot when he had to go through a triple booking date with Toka and Kurumi too. Asked. Having stepped into the hall, Shido let out a short word and stopped on the spot. The reason was simple. Origami was already in front of the fountain. Nonetheless, it's not like he was shocked to see Origami there. The reason why Shido stopped there for a moment was because of her clothes. She was in a blouse with a cute design, and a cardigan. A skirt with autumn colors. Shido's eyes were stolen away unintentionally when he saw that girly style that doesn't fit with the origami in his memories. Shido. Why yeah. He twitched his body when Kotori called him. Ha, huh, the future looks bleak. So sorry. Please focus. I don't know what happened in the previous world but, at the very least, the girl in front of you right now is the spirit hunter devil. We don't know what she would do if you lower your guard. Please go in with the preparations of handling Tokisaki Kurumi. Kotori warned him. Shido took a deep breath to arrange his heartbeat before tilting his head forward. Yeah I understand. Good. Kotori Suyu exhaled before. Okay let's begin our date war. Saying that, and announced the start of the plan. At the same time, Shido started moving his legs, which he stopped, towards the fountain. She probably noticed him when he did that. Origami, who was standing in front of the fountain, lifted her face and looked surprised. Itsuka-kun? You are so early. Ha ha, that goes for us too right? After Shido said that, Origami looked at the clock standing in the hall, and shrunk her shoulders in embarrassment. Uh, I didn't want to make you wait. Ah, uh, I thought that too. Origami widened her eyes after said that. After a while, she leaked a carefree smile. Thank you for inviting me for today, Itsuka-kun, but uh, this may sound embarrassing but, I have no experience going out alone with a guy so, there might be unforeseen problems. And no no, even I don't have that experience. Shido swung his head at Origami's words. When he did that, Kotori's voice echoed in his right ears to retort him. I'm amazed that you can say that after dating that many spirits. 
Shu shut up. Question mark what are you saying, Itsuka-kun? Origami tilted her head in wonder. Shido quickly, no, nothing, played it off. Rather, we are classmates so, can you stop the honor effects? But. Here, it will make me feel awkward. So please? Shido said that before clapping his hands together, Origami made her eyebrows look like a shape for a while but, she nodded in understanding soon later. I understand, uh, I get it. Origami said it with an unfamiliar manner. Shido relaxed his cheeks in nostalgia. Haha, <laughs> Origami have to be like that, as expected. Hey. Origami let out a dumb-witted voice at Shido's words. He realized that he called her, Origami, unconsciously again like what he did few days ago. Ah, sorry, I called you in reflex. Uh, it's because it's a beautiful name. Shido tried to play it off. He wasn't lying but, in reality, the reason was leaning more towards the fact he called her that in the previous world. He used to call her Tobaichi at first but, he gotten used to calling her name before he noticed. Origami looked restless but, she doesn't look bad. Her mouth made a broad smile. Thank you. It's the name my father and mother gave me. I see. Father and mother. Those worlds made Shido feel something complex spreading out in him. But, Origami slightly looked away while moving her lips, maybe because she noticed what Shido was thinking. That's why, I don't mind, if Itsuka-kun calls me that way. Eh? Uh, I mean Origami. Origami said that with slightly blushing cheeks. Shido's heart pounded unexpectedly when he saw that. Shido, why are you keeping quiet? Your partner finally got closer you know? Asked. Shido quickly continued his words when Kotori's words came into his ears. Th thanks, Origami. Even though it was a name he said out naturally just now, it turned out embarrassing now that he officially gained permission for do so. Just like him, Origami slightly looked away from his eyes and replied. Un. Ah, then, about that. You can call me Shido if you want. It will be unfair if you don't. Eh? Origami widened her eyes in reflex when Shido said that. And after mumbling something softly, she let out her voice. Shid. But, after he stopped his words halfway, he scratched his cheeks in a restless manner. I don't mind until you get used to it. Eh? Ah, uh, oh of course. After Shido agreed, a few seconds of silence flowed by. Shido I don't recommend staying quiet for too long. Anything is okay, just connect the lines. Coterie's command flew to him. It was just as she says. He looked for a topic in his head before moving his mouth. Hey uh. Uh. But, his voice covered Origami voice too. A strange embarrassing feeling attacked them. Origami was the one that broke that situation first. She looked back at Shido and asked him. Now that I think about it, Itsuka-kun, what are we doing today? Eh? Sorry. But, I only heard about the time and meeting place. Why yeah, I forgotten about that. Today. After Shido said that. He heard a certain sound which he has not heard for a long time in his right ear. Right now in the bridge of the airship Fraxinus floating 15,000 meters up the Tengu city, Raitatusk's elites were lined up inside. Under Kotori's orders, all of the elite love masters were to support Shido. Everyone was maintaining an ideal nervous situation while looking at the giant main monitor installed in the bridge. The image of the ground sent by the automate camera was shown in the main monitor. As if to trace Shido's viewpoint, the target for this time to buy Origami's picture was zoomed in, several different angles were taken from the cameras nearby and all sorts of parameters were on it. And, right now, the moment Origami asked a question, PyCon, such a sound echoed in the bridge and a window was displayed on the screen. The choices are out. Kotori, who's sitting on the commander seat located at the upper bridge, was moving the rod of the chupa chups up and down while hitting her lap. The AI installed in the Fraxinus, will observe the targets the movements of her emotions and will show three choices for Shido to pick. 1. Actually, there is a movie I want to watch with you, watch a romance movie in the cinema. 2. I was thinking of shopping, enjoy shopping. 3. Let's stop with the annoying parts, straight to an adult hotel. All members, your choice. Obeying Coterie's order, 
the crews clicked on the button at their hands reach at the same time. Immediately, the total votes were displayed on the main monitor. The most was, two. Fumu, two ha. It's the safe road ha. After Kotori stroke her chin, a crew member at the lower deck, bad marriage Kawagoa raised his voice. It's hard to throw one away but, going to a space with no conversation at the first go will make things uneasy. Afterwards, deprived Minawa opened her lips to show her agreement. Rather, why did three suddenly appear in the choices? Everyone wasn't disagreeing and nodded. Within them, sweat was flowing down the nail knocker Shiaizaki's cheeks. We won't know unless we ask Fraxinus's AI. Kotori shrugs her shoulders while saying that. In reality, Kotori tried to lure Shido and Toka to a hotel to rest during Toka's conquest but, that was because the spirit knows nothing about this world, this was a digression but, if Shido was about to do something above a kiss then, it was planned that an organization member disguised as a garbage collector will step in. But, the target this time was previously a human. Which means, the probability that she knows about what, that, was built for, was high. If someone was brought to a place like that on a first that then getting slapped can't be arguable. After Kotori brought the mic closer, she threw an order to Shido. Shido, I decided. Two. Wait for a second. But, Shido interrupted Kotori's voice with a whisper soft enough to avoid origami from hearing. What's wrong? Dot 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 I have something I want to test out with those choices. Eh? She widens her eyes at Shido's unusual serious voice. This was the first time Shido said this. However, she noticed something. The spirit this time, Tobaiichi Origami was a special girl. If Shido's words were correct, this world was a world branched out from the events from five years ago, and Shido might be intimate with Origami in another parallel world. If that's the case then, it won't be weird for Shido to already know about Origami's tastes that they have not yet grasped. After a moment of thinking, Kotori flicked the rod of her chupa chups. I get it. It's special this time. Please choose the choices you like, Shido. After Kotori said that, Shido poked the incam silently to show that he understood. The main monitor then moved towards Origami. Hey, Origami. There's somewhere I want to go so, can I? Uh, okay. Origami nodded and followed after Shido. And, after a while of walking, Shido suddenly stopped. Hey. Origami looked up at the building in front of her, and made a blank face. However, it was only normal. That's because, the place Shido brought Origami was a castle-like building with lodging fees and resting fees posted on the signboard. A very loud alarm echoed inside the bridge immediately. At the same time, President Mikamoto and Dimension Break and Akatsugoa were shouting while they were looking at their personal monitors. The emotion values are not stabilizing. Tobaiichi Origami. Is feeling shaken. Obviously, just what are you thinking Shidu? After Kotori shouted, she tugged the mic closer to her. Shido. Play it off before Origami gets angry. Eh? But. Hurry up before it's too late. After Kotori said that, Shido faked looking lost for a moment before making a smile to Origami. Okay. Over here, come. Ah, this isn't the place. Origami exhaled in relief. W well of course. Come on, let's go. Yuan. Shida brought Origami past the hotel. The alarm then finally stopped ringing. Ha, what were you thinking Shido? It's so obvious that she would pull back if she was brought to a place like that in her first date. After Kotori wiped the sweat on her forehead. Shido made a confused face while letting out a soft voice. Sorry. I thought this would definitely be the spot for Origami. No, why is that? She did not understand why Shido fixed Origami and a hotel together. She replied back with twitching cheeks. Anyway, pick two. Go shopping. I got it. Shido nodded and told Origami that they were going shopping. While looking at the scene on the main monitor, Kotori talked to the crew at the lower deck. So, how is Origami's affection level? It would be nice if it didn't drop much though. A eh, about that. Nakatsugoa fixed his glasses position in a troubled manner. Her emotion values were shaken greatly but, her affection level has not dropped at all, no, instead, it slightly got higher. 
What did you say? Kotori raised a doubtful voice at Nakatsugoa's words. While accompanying Origami, they passed the back alley and walked straight into the main street. Halfway through, Origami suddenly raised her voice. So, where are we going? Yeah, I thought of going shopping. After Shido asked, Origami tilted her head. What are you shopping for? Ah, uh, uh. Now that he thinks about it, they haven't decided on what to shop for. He scratched his cheeks while immersed in thought. Stop. The choices are out. Coterie's voice then appeared in the income in his right ear and the automated voice message read out the choices. Three choices were displayed on the bridge's main monitor. One coordinate her in a selection shop. Two play with animals in a pet shop and shrink their distances. Three go to a pharmacy located at the back alleys which sells strong vitality drinks and aphrodisiacs. Everyone, your choice. The total votes were displayed on the monitor once Coterie shouted. The votes were at one which was the most while two was close by a slim margin. One ha. Huh. Same with me. The crew replied back to Coterie's voice. Well, those are appropriate. Two isn't bad but, we don't know if she likes animal or not. Rather, what is with this three? This feels kind of special but. Kawagoa raised his eyebrows and asked. It's true that only one choice was a different kind. What's the AI thinking? Is a big scale maintenance needed? Shido, you hear me? Let's be appropriate and go with one. No, it has to be three. From the opposite side of the incam, Shido let out his voice naturally. Huh? She brought her eyebrows closer at Shido's words. What are you saying Shido? Please calm down. It's obviously not a place for a teenager to go. No, but it's origami we are talking about here. What does that mean? She does not understand. Kotori shouted. Even though you ask me what, speaking of origami, it's going to be vitality drinks, speaking of vitality drinks, it will be origami I guess. Chido said it as if it was common sense. Kotori placed her hands on her head at that direct manner. No seriously, I don't understand. Just what kind of girl is, to buy origami, that you know? Eh? Let's see. She's someone that would make me drink the combination of boiled mixed vitality drinks, she would install traps to prevent me from running away from her house, and she would lick my neck when I give her a piggyback ride. Huh? Are you joking here? There's no way such a girl would exist. E even if you tell me that. Shido distorted his eyebrows in a troubled manner. It looks like he was not joking and was serious about it. At that moment. Kotori recalled back that Tobayashi Origami's affection level movements from just now. Although she was shaken from that overly unexpected choice, her affection did not drop at all. Possibly this might. After Kotori settled her thoughts in two seconds, Fuji sighed. Okay. Go try it. Commander? A surprised voice came down from the lower deck. However, Kotori did not look away from the main monitor and continued on. As replacement, if her affection level drops even a bit or her emotion level turns unstable then, quickly move to one. Okay? Why yeah, I get it. After applying to her, Chido brought Origami into the back alley. Okay, this is the place if I am correct. Eh? Origami opened her eyes wide in shock when Shido stopped his legs in front of a certain pharmacy in the back alley. But it was normal. It looks like a multi-tenant building at first glance. However, after entering the building and heading up to the second floor, a pharmacy with a ghost house-like interior. It's a secretive spot that won't be discovered unless a person was living a normal life. If Shido wasn't told about the existence of this shop by Origami in the previous world then, he probably wouldn't be able to reach here. Packaged bottle not commonly seen in drug stores were overflowing the shop. The words written on the label were clearly not Japanese giving this place a 100% for strangeness. What, is this shop? Origami asked dubiously. But, as expected he couldn't say, Origami is a regular customer here right, and made something up. Well, let's take a look. Let's go somewhere else if you don't like it. Yuan. Origami looked around the strange medicines lined up in the shop curiously. However, some of it didn't make sense to her and would sometimes tilt her head. Is her taste different than the origami she don't knew? If that was the case then, 
it might be a good idea to quickly change his objectives like what Kotori said. If he was correct, Kotori's orders were to bring Origami to see clothes, about that? Well, that choice was undeniable correct for a normal girl. Itsuka-kun. Origami talked to Shido when he was thinking that. Like I thought, I don't understand anything. Let's go somewhere else? Why yeah, I see. Sorry. But, Shido stopped his words. The reason was simple. Origami was making her eyebrows into a shape because she was troubled when she was looking at the products lined up in the shop but, she was holding a shopping basket filled with the shop's most effective looking vitality drinks and aphrodisiacs in the shop. Origami, what's that? When Shido pointed at it, Origami opened her eyes wide in surprise as if she just realized that. Th this is, when did I? Origami pressed her forehead and was wobbling as if she was feeling lightheaded. Arare you okay? The moment Shido quickly supported her body, a loud alarm echoed inside the incam. Shido. Origami's emotion values are making strong waves. La let's go out for now. Okay? Shido heard Kotori's voice and quickly brought the groaning Origami out the shop. After a while passed, Origami finally calmed down. Sorry, Itsuka-kun, just what happened to me I wonder. W well don't worry too much about it. It's my fault for bringing you to such a place. Oh yeah, let's go check out some clothes. Origami nodded when Shido said that. They then once again walked side by side on the road. But, Shido scratched his cheeks at that moment. It was good to tell her to look for clothes but, he did not know what kind of shop Origami uses. If he was correct he heard that Origami in the previous world would almost always purchase her personal clothes through airmail. Speaking of which, what kind of shop does Origami usually buy from? Yuyun, I buy them near my house most of the time. After saying that, she made a wry smile and looked slightly embarrassed. Actually, I wanted to make it more elaborate but, I am just bad with that kind of stuff. I don't have sense for them. That's not true. Your clothes for today are really cute you know. Dot 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 ah. After Shido said that, Origami looked surprised and quickly looked away. Origami? You un, nothing. And more importantly, if you want to look for clothes, can we go to the building at the station, even though we might have to backtrack a bit? I rarely go there. Ah, of course. Shido agreed at Origami's words. They then passed the back street and walked towards the main street leading to the station. Phew, I was worried there for a moment but things don't look so bad. Halfway through, Kotori's voice echoed in his right ear. Her affection level is increasing. If things go well, then we might be able to settle this within today. But, don't lower your guard. I don't know the reason but, her sudden emotion value changes are extreme. Please be aware to not startle her too much. Understood. After saying that softly, Shido walked forward. Not long later, both of them reached the twin building soaring in front the station. The building was crowded with shoppers, maybe because it was a rest day. After reaching the third floor with the escalator, Shido and Origami entered a stylish selection shop that they found before looking around at the clothes lined up in there. Come on Shido, don't just look. Kutari said that in an irritated manner. After Shido, ah, moved his eyebrows, he called out to Origami, who was touching the fur of a coat. Since we are here, I'll give you one piece as a present. What do you want? Eh? Origami opened her eyes wide. No, I'll feel bad, see, it's quite expensive. Origami showed the coat's price tag to Shido while whispering. 39,800 yen, it's quite a critical price for a high school male student. But, Reitatusk was backing Shido up now. Shido Don hit his chest. Leave it to me. But. Show me the first time you wear that as payment. So have that as your thanks. Origami made a wry smile in embarrassment at Shido's words. Itsuku-kun, you often make girls cry? 11c1. Hey. Why? I was just wondering that, you seem quite used to this. After saying that, Origami looked at Shido with half her eyes opened. Sweat flowed down Shido's cheeks. Oi oi oi. Origami then relaxed her cheeks. Fufu, it's a joke. Then, I'll take you for your word. But since I am at it, 
Can you let me look around a little more? Since shown you first is the condition, I want a choice one that would make Itsuka kun happy. Origami said that jokingly. Why, yeah. After Shido nodded, Origami started looking around the shop with light footsteps. Upipu, make girls cry. You got seen through, Shido. Give me a break. He mixed an aside in his reply when he heard Kotori's voice in his right ear. I don't say you can't be that. Of course, Shido being too used on handling girls is something to think about but, it's alright since it's Shido. What do you mean by that? You're an erasable cherry boy smell. Sorry, please don't say it. Shido covered his face with both his hands and looked like he was about to cry sorrowfully. Kotori Hasai could be heard. More importantly, don't leave Origami alone. Ah, that's right. He looked around when he was told that. But, just where did she go? Origami could not be seen anywhere. Ori, where did she go? See, what did I tell you, Ren, where is her location? HNN, approximately 20 meters behind Shin. Ren talked to respond to Kotori's words. As Ratatosk's analyst, she's also providing support to Shido. Sorry and thanks. After saying that, Shido listened to Ren's words. He then started walking at the back direction. He then found out that his goal was a dressing room separated by a curtain. Ah, I see. So that's what's going on. Shido nodded in agreement. No wonder Origami couldn't be found anywhere. It seems that she already picked her clothes and has gone to try it on. While looking at the products in display on the shelf nearby, he randomly spent some time until Origami comes out. But. Kya ah 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 ah. Origami's shout suddenly echoed out from the dressing room, and caused Shido to gasp. W what's wrong Origami? W why am I in? After Shido shouted, Origami's frightened voice could be heard from the opposite side of the curtain. He had a bad premonition. Shido made up his mind and placed his hands on the curtain. Sorry Origami. I am opening this. A. Ah. Uh, no, don't do it, Itsuka K. Origami tried to stop him but, he still ended up opening the curtain. Dot 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 hey. But, Shido opened his mouth blankly with his eyes opened when he saw her. However, it was only natural. That's because, Origami, who collapsed down powerlessly in the dressing room was right now wearing a school swimsuit. Incidentally, she was also wearing accessories like dog ear headband on her head, a dog tail on her butt, and a leather collar around her neck. Anyone will probably go blank for a moment. Origami. That appearance. She twitched her shoulders when Shido said that. D don't misunderstand. I won't, won't. Origami's eyes were swimming around in chaos. It's as if Origami does not know why she was in this outfit herself too. I don't remember taking these clothes and yet when did I? Why am I in a school swimsuit? While saying that, Origami frowned her face because of a sudden headache. School swimsuit, dog ears, you ooh, my head. The moment Origami said that painfully while pressing her head, P3 P3 the alarm could be heard in the incam. Shido. Origami's emotions value. Origami. Come, let's get you changed and see something else. Okay. Shido turned flustered and shouted before closing the dressing room curtain. I am so sorry. You went through all that to invite me too. I am kind of weird today. Approximately 20 minutes after they left the shop, Origami pressed her forehead with her hands while saying that at a restaurant located at the upper level of the same building. Don't worry about it. It was me that invited you anyway. If you are feeling sick then let's end it early. Shido said that as if he was worried about Origami. However, Origami swung her head to the side. Yuan, that's not it. It's just... Just... Nothing. Anyways, I am okay. Sorry for making you worry. Origami tried to play it off before making a wry smile. Shido was still looking at her worried but, he did not pry further anymore maybe to respect Origami's words. Origami made sure Shido did not notice before making a small sigh. It's not like, walking with Shido in the city was boring. Forget that, being this uplifted feels so nostalgic that it made this so unbearably fun. But even so, sometimes, a strange feeling would attack her. She does not know of the reason to but, the moment she saw that strange costume that would make anyone think, 
Just what timing would it be for me to wear something like this? In the cosplay shop, a strong wave pushed the back from the inside of her heart. It's as if, this was something she wore before. Of course, there was no way she did that before. A weird appearance of school swimsuit plus dog ears and tail plus collar was something origami has never worn in her life. Even if a gun was pointed at her and was told, wear this or I will shoot, that obscene outfit was enough to make her hesitate even so. No one would be fond of wearing that unless the a few screws were loose in their head. However, that was not all. This happened too when she was brought to the weird medicine shop by Shido. At that time, Origami half-consciously grabbed a shopping basket and started shobing the bottles lined up at the shelves in a fluent manner. She was so good at it that she even wondered that there might be a point card for that shop in her purse for a moment there. I, been to that shop before? Eh? Shido replied when Origami mumbled. As if to match up with his actions, the food they ordered just now was served to them. Origami looked over there as if to play off the words she just said. Oh here, it's Supercun. Eat it before it gets cold okay? HN? Why yeah. As if he was urged by Origami, Shido took the spoon and started eating his omelette rice. Origami also started eating her seafood doria. And, after some time pass, right when he was halfway done with his omelette rice, Shido suddenly pressed his right ears and stood up from his seat. Sorry. I'll be back soon. Ah, uh, un. Just what happened? Although, prying in won't do anything for her. Origami made a small nod before seeing Shido off. She let out a big sigh when Shido could no longer be seen. Ha, what is wrong with me? She's going to feel bad for Shido at this rate, even though he went through all that trouble to invite her. She has to get a grip of herself. After Origami put down her spoon, she lightly stretched her cheeks to energize herself. But at that moment, asked, a certain object was caught in Origami's eyes. Even though she just made a resolve, a distorting feeling attacked her heart again. The object Origami saw. That's Aetsuka Kun's spoon. Yes. Leaving his seat during mealtime would mean that he left the spoon that was just in use. Origami felt her heart pumping with tremendous momentum. And no no no, what am I thinking? She quickly stopped her hand that was extending towards the spoon with her other hand. That's just going overboard. She would be a perfect pervert if she does something like that. This will cause a case in court. But, even though she was well aware of that, her right hand extended forward energetically. It's as if there was another inside origami and was forcefully moving her body. Ku, calm down my right hand. Even though she said that, there was no effect. Her head turned chaotic within time and she no longer understood what was going on anymore. What was correct? What was wrong? The foundations of right and wrong changes according to the age and is there anyone that can saw that origami's action will be wrong? No, there isn't, rhetorical question. Why is this a mistake? The philosopher Ruririn Tavaiji once said this. No one can prove my existence but, I can make certain of my existence by licking Shido spoon. Which means, my licking proves that I am here. Inside Origami's hazy consciousness, she felt her left hand stopping her right hand, turning weaker. Ooh, sorry Origami, I made you wait. And, Shido, who got back from the toilet, stopped his legs right in front of the table. The reason was simple. Shido has encountered the scene of Origami holding his spoon and extending her tongue out to it with a very lewd expression. Origami. After saying that, Origami twitched her shoulders as if she just noticed Shido's existence. Light filled her eyes when it was empty like she was possessed by something and sweat started pouring out of her face immediately. D don't be mistaken. This is, not what you think it is. He doesn't know what he was mistaken about but, Origami raised her voice in panic. And no, it's okay, I am used to it too anyway. Listen. It's really not what you think. Why yes, it's just tea that. Your spoon dropped onto the floor when you stood up from your seat. And it was just so happened that I picked it up. Origami begged Shida by shouting and got and stood up. The cup left on the table shook from the impact when she stood up and dropped towards Shido's direction. Water splashed onto the hem of the shirt Shido was wearing. Oops. Ah, I, I am so sorry, I panicked and. Ha ha, this is enough so it's okay. It will dry fast anyway. 
After saying that to Kamuragami, who looked ashamed, Shido pinched the hem of his shirt and lightly squeezed it to remove the water. Shido's belly button peeked out when he did that. And, at that moment, dash, Origami took out her cell phone from her pocket with lightning speed and the sound of continuous shutter pressing echoed after the lens was pointed to Shido with fluid movements. Eh? Ha! Huh. When Shido opened his eyes in surprise, Origami was also making a shocked expression at the opposite side too. It's as if her body disobeying her will and moved. Believe me, it's Ukakun. And my body, is moving by its own. Origami appealed to him with teary eyes. However, her finger was still continuously pressing on the shutter. Why? Why ye? Origami's teary voice and continuous shutter pressing, echoed throughout the afternoon restaurant. Chapter 10, The Angel of the Night with Falling Stars Part 1 the time was 6.30 p.m. The sun will set faster during November. The city sunk into darkness already. The atmosphere was cold as if the warmth during the day was a lie, and if he ha exhale, a white mist will form and disappear. The pleasant breeze shook the trees and the falling leaves flew up to the sky. Within the sounds of winter's footsteps, Shido and Origami visited the high ground park which has a clear view of the city. Ratatos ordered him to go there since it was a place filled with the mood to end a date. Many stars could be seen at the outer edge of the park. Well, the electronic lights sparkling on the ground were more amusing since they were more in number than the ones in the sky. It's a little cold at this time as expected. After Shido said that, Origami, who was looking at the night scenery, tilted her head slightly forward. Un, I was unprepared since it was warm during the day. I should have brought my gloves. Origami said that before making a wry smile while rubbing her hands together. She was on a rampage during the afternoon but, she has finally calmed down, well, she would sometimes point her cell phone lens at Shido, smell Shido's neck smell, and even though she was not holding anything, she would take on a posture as if she was pouring into the cup Shido was drinking but, Shido did not worry too much about it. From what he heard from her, it seems that her body moves by reflex. As expected, Origami is really Origami ha, huh? Shido felt a little relieved knowing that. Ha ha, that's true. Ah, uh, oh yeah. We can use a kin coffee from that vending machine. Kotori's voice echoed in his right ear just when Shido was about to finish his sentence. Hey, that's a wrong choice, Shido. A girl is saying that her hands are cold you know. After looking around silently for a moment, Shido nodded to make his resolve and placed his hands over Origami's hands. Either it was from the nervousness or cold, Shido's hands were slightly trembling though. Eh. Origami widens her eyes in surprise for an instant. But, she immediately realized Shido's intentions. Her cheeks slightly blushed and slightly looked downwards. Fufu, why not? Her affection level isn't bad. We might be able to end this today. But, I guess we need one more push to fully seal her. Kotori said that with a groan. Ren's reply then echoed in the incam. Ah, one more thing, there is something inside her pulling her back. This reading. It's close to anxiety. I guess it's about her not knowing about Shin's acceptance to her. Anxiety, huh? Well, it's right after causing all those eccentric actions after all. Kutari made a dry smile and said that. Well, that just makes things simpler. All we have to do is make her anxiety disappear right? Dot 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 well that's right but, what are we going to do? Kutari snorted when Shido asked with a soft voice. Isn't it obvious? Origami is feeling anxious because she doesn't know if Shido accepts her right? Then, it's the best and fastest way to tell her three words. Which means, the confession of love is the only choice. He could somewhat predict that. A stream of sweat droops down his cheeks. He recalled back the time he confessed to Origami in the previous world. Thinking back, that was also ordered by Kotori with the goal of training him. Now that he thinks about it that was the reason why the Origami of the previous world started getting very assertive to Shido. Is this Origami the same as her? Kotori suddenly echoed when Shido was wondering that. Why are you hesitating? This is the best chance to seal the spirit hunter devil. If we miss today's chance. There might be the possibility that the other spirits might meet danger the next time the next chance comes. Ooh. Coterie's right. 
Whispering of love even though Shido has not made up his mind was just plain dishonest. But, there might be casualties if he doesn't seal origami here. They might be the girls that have already been sealed, and it might even be spirits he hasn't met before. Or maybe, there's the possibility that origami might hurt herself. That's something Shido must not allow. After Shido Suyu exhaled, he looked towards origami while still holding onto her hands. Hey, origami. Yes? Itsuka kun? Uh, there is something I want to tell you. When Shido said that, Origami looked back at Shido's face with a meek face. The moment he and Origami were looking at each other, he found out that his heart suddenly started pumping harder. He reconfirmed her loveliness once again when he looked at her face again. Hair bangs covering her forehead. Transparent clear eyes paired with long eyelashes. Cherry lips that might steal his heart just by even touching it. The thought of how lucky he was at the previous world for being loved by a girl like this grazed his mind. But, he can't stay engrossed in such emotions. After Shido gulped, he set aside the anxiety inside his heart and was about to open his mouth. But, right before Shido was about to say that. Actually, I, have something I have to tell Itsuka-kun too. Origami quietly said that. Is it something you have to say? Shido replied back because the timing for confession got slipped out. Origami then looked away hesitantly for a few moments before slowly moving her mouth. You know that I was a part of the JGSDF anti-spirit team, the AST right? Yeah, I know. But, I quit AST just recently. That's... Shido spoke ambiguously. He has already heard from Kotori that Origami has resigned from the AST but, it's just unnatural for Shido to know that here. Is that so? Is it because that your consciousness gets cut off from anemia, like what happened last time? When Shido said that, Origami Fu looked downwards. Un. That is one of the reasons. That's because that sickness is critical in a job that uses dangerous weapon. But, ever since I get that sickness, I, no longer understand something. No longer understand? What? After Shido said that, Origami made an awkward wry smile. Dot 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 even the AST's job is to defeat the spirits, which is the cause of the space quake, I was just wondering, if that really is the right thing to do. Wah. Shido gasped in reflex. That's normal. Speaking of the origami, Shido knows about, she hates spirits, and lived with the goal of killing spirits. As expected, maybe because the influence of her parents not killed by the spirits was big or maybe, she started feeling that because she became a spirit, even though it's unconsciously, he doesn't know about the details but, he never thought he would hear those words from her, even in his dreams. However, just what did she take on Shido's reaction, Origami brought her eyebrows closer apologetically. I am sorry. The spirits were the ones that killed Itsuka-kun's brother. Do don't apologize. A. Origami made a surprised look at Shido's words. His brother, it was actually Shido, was killed but, she probably didn't thought he would say something like that. I don't think that Origami's way of thinking is wrong at all, not even a little. I, not that, my brother must have thought that way too. Itsuka-kun. Origami said that with a trembling voice, her shoulders trembled slightly and she looks as if she was about to cry anytime soon. Ah, so sorry, what have I? After saying that. She looked away to play it off. Shido did not pry into the matter anymore and poured strength into his hands which were holding Origami's hands harder. And at that moment, a fanfare could be heard suddenly in the income in his right ear. Affection level, sudden burst up. Point, it has reached the top. Few Mew, looks like that was the reason for her remaining anxiety. Ren's voice could be heard afterwards. No wonder. Origami was worried about Shido's thoughts regarding Origami's different emotions towards the spirits which were sprouting inside her. All right. Shido, this feels good. Finish it in one go. Kotori gave the go sign, this somehow messed up the mood. Shido made a wry smile while holding Origami's hands. Nevertheless, this was a great chance. Shido arranged his breathing to calm his heartbeat which increased from the nervousness before quietly looking back at Origami. Origami, uh. Ask, Itsuku-kun, look at that. But, Shido's confession was interrupted once again. 
origami hangout to the wooden guardrails installed at the edge of the park and pointed her finger up to the sky. At the direction she was pointing to, a glittering star was falling down. It's a shooting star, a shooting star. I have to make a wish. Eh? E even if you tell me that all of a sudden. Even though he says that, Chido started making a wish in his head. He wished that he could seal Origami's Rai Rai Oku properly. And also, Origami and the girls to understand each other. Well, the shooting star was long gone by the time he reached that point but. And, at that moment. Dot 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 ah? Uh? Just when Origami, who hang out at the guardrail to look up at the sky, suddenly gasped, she suddenly pulled his hands which was holding onto hers. Shido. Kotori's warning shook his right ear's eardrum. He did not know what happened there for a moment. But, he immediately understood. Maybe because the guardrail was too old, the part that was getting stressed by Origami's body weight, Mary bent. Of course, Origami's body who was hanging on it fell off the park's outer edge which was by the way located at a high location, as if to match up to it. Kya ah? You are. Origami shouted loudly. Shido shouted and at the same time he was surprised from her voice and the event that just happened. But, luckily or not, Shido was still holding on to Origami's hands. His arm's tendons were about to be torn off when it was pulled from the sudden weight but, he somehow managed to pour strength into it and hang on to Origami. When he did that, his left hand felt a sharp pain maybe because he scratched the cross section of the broken guardrail. Toya ah. Together with an odd shout, he fell backwards together with Origami. Origami then, Kya, let out a short shout before covering Shido, who fell upwards by riding on top of him. Ouch, eh are you alright, Origami? Yuan, thank you, Itsuka-kun. Origami replied back with a trembling voice at Shido's words. She was probably quite shocked, he could feel her heartbeat pumping violently through her chest which was pushed onto him. Shido then noticed something. He found out that he was so close to Origami that he could feel her breathing. It's a chance, Shido. The affection level is enough. Finish it. Kotori's voice echoed. It's true that, Origami's head position could be reached if Shido slightly raises his head. Judging by the situation where they just escaped danger, this was the best chance there is. Origami. But. Shido, felt something was off when he was about to kiss Origami. Origami was not looking at Shido but more below, it was directed towards Shido's left hand. Shido followed her and looked to his left hand before gasping. There was a painful wound on Shido's left hand when he pulled Origami up but, flames of Ryraku were flickering on his wounds as if it was healing it. Instantly, an ear-piercing loud siren echoed in his right ear's income. Shido. Run. The same time Kotori's shout shook Shido's eardrums, Origami who was covering Shido slowly rose up as if she was being pulled by strings from the sky. After she stood up, the impression of her soulless eyes looked different from the ones she showed just now and mumbled something. Spirit. Shido widened his eyes. It was the same scene he saw when they were on the school roof a few days ago. That time Origami saw the spirit Kurumi. The, speculation, Ren said, grazed his mind. Whenever Origami sees a spirit, she will regain her memories of the previous world, and turn into a spirit. And, the flames licking Shido's arm, belongs none other to the spirit Efreet. A-A-R-R-R. -R -R. Origami looked up at the skies with her soulless eyes while her body twitches with intervals in between. Saliva flowed down from the edge of her lips and it shows that something unusual was happening. Oh Origami, wait. Shido tried calling Origami even though he was flustered. But, right before he was able to finish his sentence, the strong Ryoryoka veil surrounding Origami easily blew Shido back. Gah. Even though his back and his face fell flat onto the ground, he somehow managed to kill the momentum and lift his face in a crawling manner. With Origami in the center, black spider nest spread out from her and wrapped around her body. That's a black castral dress like a morning dress. That appearance was genuine. It was her inverse form that trampled over his previous world. Part 2 Mew In a room of the spirit mansion, Toka was hugging a big cushion while rolling on the sofa. Toka wasn't the only one in the room. When she took a glance over to the television, she could see the Amai sisters competing in a game with ice cream as the prize and when she looked behind, 
she could see Oshino and Natsumi chatting. Yes. The Itsuka family house was empty since Shido and Koteri has a big matter to attend today so, all of them gathered in Toka's room. Nu. No. After giving out a groan for who knows how many times, Toka switched her sleeping side on the sofa. It's not like she was unsatisfied about staying at home. This happened many times already in the past. It's true that she feels a little lonely because she can't eat Shido's food but, since Shido and Koteri were busy, Toka just can't trouble them because of her selfishness. However, just what's going on? Her heart has been on a rampage today for some reason. No, it didn't start today more specifically. A few days ago, ever since the transfer student came to the class, Toka has been feeling something fuzzy around her chest and couldn't do anything about it. And, when Toka was shaking her throat difficulty, Nuyumiku's head popped up behind the sofa's backrest. Ooh Fufu, what is wrong Toka-san? Feeling cranky that darling isn't here? That's not true. It's just that. After Toka made a sullen face, she immersed herself in thought to find the words that fits her current feelings. But, she could not express anything at all. Moo. Ahn, Miku relaxed her face while it turned red before she jumped over the sofa as if she was a running high jump player jumping over a bar, she then dove in between the gaps behind Toka. And more of Toka-san's troubled face is too much. Kahu. Kahu. She wriggled her body while saying that. Incidentally, the mysterious voice at the last half of the sentence was the sound of her rough breathing when she was pushing her face onto Toka's back. What are you doing, Miku? It's ticklish. Mauen, why not? It's not something that will decrease anyway. Miku wrapped her hands around Toka and passionately rubbed her cheeks on her. After Toka placed her hands on Miku's forehead, she then pushed Miku to pull herself away from her. At that moment, Toka raised her eyebrows in reflex. She does not know the exact reason why. But, her body felt something. It felt like fireworks sparking inside her head. Wah! Shock! That was. It seems that Toka wasn't the only one who felt that. The Amai sisters, who were competing, also raised their face at the same time. The moment they did that, image of the car crashed was shown on the television screen maybe because they made a mistake in the controls. Further behind her, Yoshino and Natsumi brought their eyebrows closer and looked around, Miku clinging onto Toka also looked surprised. W what is it? After Toka felt danger with her instincts, she jumped off the sofa and opened the window before heading out the veranda barefooted. She then hung out at the guardrails and looked left and right before, she saw a dim light released around a cliff far away in the night skies. That's. A normal person would not stop to bother that level of brightness. However, Toka the spirit noticed it in one glance. That glow was from Ryoku. There is someone with tremendous power at that place. Phew, something feels fishy. This feeling is. Consent. A. Spirit. The others followed Toka out of the veranda. They then looked towards the direction that Toka felt the Ryoku coming from, as if they were prearranged to do so. Ah, uh, that place is. Ah, uh, I think the park is around the area. The moment Miku said that, Shido, who was not here appeared inside Toka's mind. That's right. Now that she mentions it, Shido brought Toka to that place before last time. The moment she recognized that, Toka's heart rang like an alarm bell. It's not like she was certain that Shido was at that spot. But, the face of Shido floating in her mind, mixed in with the odd feeling that has been lurking in her heart until now and caused Toka's heartbeat to rise. Toka? Toka-san. Dash. Within her half-conscious state, Toka placed her legs on the veranda guardrail before jumping into the darkness. Part 3. Rai Ryoku Value, Category E. Tobayachi Origami has inversed. Ku, like I thought, Ren's speculations were correct huh? Koteri, her crew's voice and the continuous sound of the alarm which call forth danger instinctively, could be heard from the incam in his right ear. Shido heard those sounds while quietly looking at Origami alone. Of course, Shido was in chaos. Origami inversed again when she could finally be saved and he was scared to his wits. However within those emotions, an extremely calm situation judgment was formulating somewhere in his head. Shido dashed towards Origami. 
but, he was blown away by the wall of swirling Ryoryoku surrounding Origami, right before he could reach her. Ku. Shida? What are you doing? I have to stop Origami, now, or else something terrible will happen. Yes. Origami's inverse was because she saw the healing flames which activated unconsciously, if that is the case then, her inverse will not settle down unless her target Shido disappears in front of her. However, naturally, Shido can't make a clone of himself like Kurumi. Which means, Origami will continue rampaging until Shido is dead and once that condition is fulfilled and Origami's inverse settles down, the method to seal Origami's Ryoku will forever be lost in replacement for that condition fulfillment. Of course, Shido has Kotori's protection the power of healing flames. It would immediately heal all half-baked wounds. However, there's a limit to that. It's true that Shido replaced Horigami's parents with himself five years ago but, it was still unknown that he survived because of Kotori's healing Ryoku or, Yadbetes power was depleted right before he received the attack. Even if the healing power was possible, there's a possibility that Horigami will continue staying inversed as long as she knows that Shido's alive. Then, the chance is only now. This was the only chance to get close to Origami since she has not manifested her, wing. Dot 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 Origami. While calling out her name, Shido recalled back the scene he once saw. The scene that the city was messed up from the rays of darkness shot down from the inverse Origami. He can't have that happen ever again. He can't let Origami do that ever again. After Shido clenched his fist, he once again dashed towards Origami. Stop, Shido. Hurry up and get away from Origami. But, at that moment, Kotori's shout shook his eardrums and Shido stopped his legs in reflex. WH what are you saying? This is the only chance. Like I said, get away from her. Don't tell me you're trying to break through a Ryoku wall with your body. Eh? Shido widens his eyes in reflex. The same time Kotori's voice echoed in his right ear, several glows appeared around Origami and within them, sharp metallic clusters appeared. It has a form that looks like a metallic diamond with stretched sides. Putting it into words, it looks like a giant, leaf. All of it deployed invisible walls and were surrounding Origami with its tip pointed at her. This is. Itfolium deploy. The moment Kotori said that, the, leaf, increased the size of the invisible wall set up and restrained Origami by crushing her, who was wearing a black astral dress, from eight different sides. Wah. Itfolium. They are Fraxina sole purpose automated units with territory in each of them. Sorry but, we set them up around you. I didn't thought we would be using them though. Fume Kotori snorted before saying that. Afterwards, the moment Shido thought a glow appeared far up above the park that he and Origami was in, the airship Fraxinus appeared as if its mirror skin got torn off. Before he knew it, it seems that it has reached to a location that could be seen by the naked eye. Normally, Fraxinus would deploy its invisible camouflage with its realizer and hide its existence from the surroundings. The only time the ship would expose itself was when it needs to release the realizer's output outside the territory deployed around its surroundings. More specifically, it was to retrieve personals or objects outside with the teleporter, or to dispatch the Utfolium outside. And also, when it's about to fire Mistleton. Coterie, don't tell me. After Shido shouted, Fraxinus slowly lowered its bow downwards at the sky as to respond and pointed its cannon at Origami. This action cannot be performed unless the airship was controlled with a territory because it was a really unstable position. Mary Oculite glowed inside the cannon. Relax. We adjusted the power. Mistleton will break the Ryoku wall for a few seconds so, take that chance and get close to Origami. Oh okay. I didn't want to be rough but, we can't have the city to be destroyed. Commander, Marioku charge complete, we can shoot any time. The voices of the crew echoed in response to Kotori's voice. All right. Target, Tobaichi Origami on the ground. Don't miss this, Kanazuki. Leave it to me. Fraxinus Vice Commander Kanazuki Kyohei shook his right eardrum with a calm voice. Mistleton Fi. However, it occurred right before Kotori was about to give out her order. Chido gasped in reflex. Kotori. Ruuyuan. He then shouted so hard that he might break his throat. The reason was simple. Up at Chido's view, 
several, wing, giving out a black glow surrounded Fraxinus which was floating up at the dark sky, it's just like how they surrounded Origami with the Tfolium Satan has appeared. Eh? The sound of the danger alarm and Coterie's unguarded voice could be heard through the incam. After Satan pointed its tip at Fraxinus, it shot highly dense black beams that looked like concentrated darkness, all at once. Fraxinus's white frame was covered with darkness from all direction, there were explosions, there were scraping and some pierced through. Loud explosions and their screams echoed into his right ears in cam. Kya ah! Coterie! Coterie! There was no answer even though Shido shouted. Instead, smoke puffed out from every places of the Fraxinus floating up in the sky and at the same time, the Tfolium restraining origami, flickered weakly before falling around her. Ah! Shido widened his eyes in horror while letting out a short voice. The Fraxinus falling down from the night sky. That scene resembles the one he saw in the previous world. The Fraxinus got shot down by Origami at that time too. Why, just why? Shido shouted half-consciously. The history that was supposed to be changed, the world that should have been rewritten, all of it were flowing back to its original form, one event after another. It's as if, this was forcing Shido to know that no matter how much he struggles, the ending that has been decided cannot be changed. Having her shackles released, Origami floated up from the spot without saying anything and bent her body to look like an embryo. It's like she was trapping her heart from the outside world. At the same time, the tips of the countless, wing, started brimming with darkness as if it was going to continue attacking the Fraxinus which was slowly lowering its altitude. Origami. Shido called out her name, and dashed to the spot again. But, he was obstructed by the Ryoku wall and could not touch Origami. During the time he was doing this, the black, wing, waiting in the sky, was launching its attack to Fraxinus. Fraxinus was already half destroyed from the previous attack. He had no idea what would happen to the crew in Fraxinus if it received the next attack now. Stop, Origami. Please stop. However, Shido's call did not reach Origami. Black beams were released from the tips of the countless, wing. But, at that moment, when he thought a sudden gust blew past, the black, wing, got shaken and slightly diverted its direction. The beam shot by Satan scratched Fraxinus's frame before disappearing into the empty sky. No matter how strong that wind may be, there was no way a normal wind would shake Satan. Shido noticed the identity of the wind and twitched his shoulders. This is. In the next moment, when Shido thought several, wing, appeared around Origami, it pointed its tip at him. It seems that she judged Shido as a potential enemy. Ku. He can't dodge this number. Shido prepared himself for the incoming attack and stiffen up. But, faster than Origami able to fire her angel's wing, by a beat. Ha. When that voice echoed above from the sky, a spirit, who manifested her limit astral dress, swung her giant sword and blew the, wing, away. Are you okay, Shido? Toka. Shido said the girl's name. Yes. It was Toka that was supposed to be in the mansion beside the Itsuka family house, was the one that appeared here. No, she was not the only one. Following after Toka, the spirits in their limit astral dress started appearing in the park one after another. Yoshino sitting behind a giant rabbit puppet, an adult Natsumi, and Miku, who manifested a light keyboard around her. And in the sky, it was the Yamai sisters that caused the typhoon just now to save Fraxinus from critical danger. You girls, why are you all here? Eeeer. Oofufu, it's normal that I would run over here to save darling from a pinch. Well, you followed after Toka-chan afterwards anyway. Ah, you mustn't say that. Miku, shh, made one finger stand. The behavior of the adult version Natsumi changed completely as she leisurely shrugged her shoulders. So, Shido. After Toka prepared the angel sandal phone as if to protect Shido, she glared at Horigami without lowering her guard and moved her lips. I feel a very strong Rairayoku. Just who is it? Toka asked him. Shido clenched his fist enough for his fingernails to bite into his meat and answered her. That's, Origami. What? That is the transfer student? Toka asked dubiously. However, it was only natural for her to do so. 
The days Toka and Origami met in this world was little, more importantly, it was probably hard to believe if she was told that it was her classmate that's floating up in the sky while wearing a black astral dress. She has an overpowering majestic appearance that will make anyone freeze in fear even just by confronting her. Daem's eyes are quest cut named Inversed Spirits as Devil King's butt, that right now in front of Shido, has tremendous power that does not make that expression sound over the top. Ah. Uh. But. After Shido clenched his teeth, he took one step forward. Shido? Toka raised her eyebrows when he'd done that. She most likely was telling him that it's dangerous. He's fully aware of that. But, Shido has to reach Origami. If Origami is left unleashed in the sky then, the Tengu city spread out under his eyes will once again turn into the ruins that are inside Shido's memories. And for Origami, she will probably never return to the normal self ever again. That has to be prevented no matter what. Even though it's a small possibility, Shido was the only one, that has to take Origami's hands. However, Shido's power isn't enough. Shido's power was just too small in front of the powerful Devil King in front of him. Everyone. Shido faced over to everyone who flew over her, before letting out his voice. Was he going to tell them to run away? Was he going to tell them to avoid fighting Origami? But, Shido. Please help me to, save her. Even though he felt apologetic for doing this, he had no choice but to say this. Toka, who was standing in front of Shido, made a surprised face for a moment before replying back. What are you saying? Of course I will. After saying that, she gripped Sandalphone's handle harder. Shido saved me. You taught me the beauty of this world. Shido was the one that made my world, then it's my turn now to help Shido. Toka. Following after Toka, the other spirits also nodded. Me and Yoshinon, want to be useful to Shido-san. Yes yes, be honest and count on Oni-san. Shido-kun isn't very strong so you shouldn't be reckless. Rather, even if it's darling, I would be angry if you told us to, run away, you know? Yoshino, Natsumi and Mikuni smiled while saying that. Kagaya and Yuzuru's voice echoed down from the sky. Kaka, very well then. I have received your determination properly. The child of the typhoons Kagaya will lend you her power. Undertaking. Leave the sky to Yuzuru and Kagaya. Everyone. Shido gripped his fist when he heard everyone's words. Thank you all. Let's go to Origami. Part 4. Dash Origami, has lost her composure. After getting saved by Shido when she was about to fall off the edge of the park, her consciousness got far away like usual the moment she saw the flickering light on Shido's arm but. She was standing at an unknown place when she noticed. As far as she could see, the empty space was completely pure white. Is that thing the sky or ceiling above her head? She doesn't even know if the view in front of her was the horizon or not. Tentatively, she was, standing, at the spot but, the feeling of stepping on the ground feels a little fuzzy and the hallucination of her floating will attack her when she relaxes. It's as if she slipped into a manga coma that has not been drawn yet. What is this place? She mumbled blankly while looking around. This is a dream, no matter how much I think. It didn't take long for Origami to make her judgment. However, it was not impossible. There was no way this kind of space would exist. And. Eh? Origami widens her eyes unexpectedly. That's because, further up Origami's view, one girl appeared in the space which was empty just now, before she noticed. A slender girl wearing a black dress that looks like darkness. She was crouched down while hugging her knees and was making a soulless look. You are. Origami noticed it when she said that far. Me? Yes. Because the scenery looked very impossible to happen, she did not understand for an instant but no matter how much she looks, the girl there looks similar to Origami. No, it's a little different if it was put into more correct words. Unlike Origami, whose hair was reaching halfway down her back, the hair of the girl crouching down in front of her, only reached the length until it tickles her shoulders. Nonetheless, in an opposite sense, that was the only difference they had other than the clothes she was wearing. Sweat flowed down Origami's cheeks in reflex when she felt weird feeling as if she was looking at a mirror. What is this? Even though she judged that this place and feeling was just a dream, Origami could only raise her eyebrows dubiously. However at that moment. Dash. 
unfamiliar scenes and words flowed into Origami's head in Omgo. No, more specially, it was a little different. The same time Origami instantly gained all that information, a conviction was born inside her. This memories, are mine? Yes, they were. Those few years worth of memories, were probably what Origami would experience if she walked a slightly different path from the current one. Dash Origami, closed her heart. Information was born inside Origami, the moment she saw the flames of swaying Rai Ryoku. They were Origami's memories of the previous world, she has forgotten. When those memories devoured her consciousness, Origami's felt her body and heart getting dyed in pure black. Five years ago. Yes, five years ago on that summer day, Origami's parents were the ones that were killed in front of Origami. And, the spirit that killed her parents was Origami. The moment she recalled that, Origami could not think anymore. That might be her defensive instincts kicking in to protect herself. The fundamental factors that made her current self. The meaning of her life that became her goal of life. Inside her head which felt those thoughts returning to the void in the worst possible way. Those memories separated itself from the origami of this world as if her ego was completely destroyed. That was this world's rule. The origami of this world will have her consciousness separated away the moment her Rarayoku appears and the origami with the memories of the previous world will gain the authority to control. Origami can no longer feel anything. She can't think of anything. She can't sense anything. Only one, origami will only use her powers to kill the spirit in front of her. But, a small light suddenly appeared inside Origami's head which should have disposed of everything. She does not know what happened. Even if it was recognized, the current Origami was not conscious of it. It should have been so. However, that light expanded a certain memory inside Origami's mind. Yes, that's. It was the memories of the Origami who has lived in the world where both of her parents did not die five years ago on that day. Asked. Origami let out a very soft voice. And at that moment, the consciousness of, Origami, and, Origami, started mixing together like a whirlpool. Part 5. Kaka. I am the child of the typhoon loved by the wind. Respond. There is no one in this world that can follow us. After saying that, the Yamai sisters both kicked the air at the same time and easily flew in the sky. In the next moment, Beams passed by the spot that the both of them were at. It seems that Satan which was attacking Fraxinus identified them as threat. Phew. No matter how strong the power may be, it means nothing if it doesn't hit. Kagaya said proudly while dodging the approaching beams with a paper-thin difference using acrobatic movements. Advice. Now, Shido. Go for the main body while we are attracting this attention. Yuzuru told them while dodging the beams like Kagaya. Shido nodded before looking back at Origami. I am counting on you all. Yes. The spirits replied back all at once when Shido said that. However at the same time, Origami, who was released from the binds of the Ichtfolium slowly ascended up to the sky. He can't let Origami get away. Shido shook his throat. Miku. Okay okay, leave it to me. Miku then slid her fingers on the light keyboard that she deployed around her, and started playing an elegant song. Gabriel, Rondo. To match with her actions, several babs appeared around Origami and pointed its tips at Origami. Miku's song turned into an invisible power and after making several layers, Origami who was ascending to the sky, got pushed down to the ground. Fufu, not bad Miku-chan. Natsumi made a bewitching smile from watching her. But, if Miku-chan gets pressured by that girl, she won't be able to do her original job. Then, Natsumi raised her right hand and manifested a broom angel. She then, Hanyal, kaleidoscope. The moment Natsumi said that name, the broom in her hand bent like soft clay and formed the shape of pipes and a keyboard. Eh? That's. Miku, who was playing her keyboard, looked shocked. It was natural for her to be like that. That's because the angel Natsumi manifested looked exactly like Miku's Gabriel. I'll be borrowing this, Miku-chan. Actually, I wanted to, act, this once, ever since I saw this last time. After saying that, Natsumi crossed both her hands and after playing the keyboard powerfully, she started playing a valorous song.
March. The group was brimming with energy the moment they heard the song. Although the power was slightly lower, it's definitely Miku's, March. Ah, uh, Natsumi-chan you copycat. Fufu, why not? This is for Shido-kun. Boo. I'll have you pay for copyright infringement later. I'll have you know that an idol's privileges are really strict. Miku Pukuya puffed her cheeks. It looks like she is a little frustrated that her exclusive angel has been manifested. Nonetheless, Gabriel's existence was very important for the group in a battle. Toka and Yoshino tilted forward as if they were going to head to Origami. However, several more, Wing, appeared from Origami when the space around her started to distort as if to counter them. All of it flew around in random trajectories and shot beams at them. Ku. Chido-san. Tu u u u. Yoshino and the angels at Kiel who was, Yoshinon, transformed, let out her voice and went forward to protect Shido. Instantly, the water particles in the air condensed and froze to divert the trajectory of Origami's beam. Sorry, Yoshino, Yoshinon. That was a great help. No, more importantly, please be careful, more is coming. Yoshino looked at the, wing, flying in the sky without lowering her guard and said that. Yoshino's right. There were still countless small, wing, floating around origami. Not only did they not manifest their perfect astral dress, the spirits will receive critical wounds if they are hit in their current limit astral dress. The Amai sisters and Yoshino were dodging the attacking skillfully but he doesn't think that it will last long. He has to reach origami as fast as possible. And, when Shido was immersed in thought, the, wing, all pointed its tips to Shido's direction as if they sensed him doing so. However, ha! A flash appeared in Shido's view together with a loud shout, and all the wing got blown away. Toka! Shido shouted. Yes. Toka used sandal phone and attacked the wing before they fired. But, the power from a limit form sandal phone will not suffice to destroy the wing. The undamaged wing started concentrating darkness on its tips again with a behavior as if it has its own will. Yoshino, I leave Shido to you. Why yes. Yoshino answered to Toka who said that while facing her back to them. Shido-san, let's go. Please come behind me. After saying that, Yoshino covered Zadkiel's back with cold air as if to make armor. Why yeah. Like controlling a marionette, Yoshino pulled both her hands and made Zadkiel move forward. Shido hid behind the shadows of the giant rabbit and advanced towards Origami. But, without even giving a few seconds, Zadkiel March was stopped. When he looked over there, he saw new, wing, manifested around origami and a strong Ryoku shield was made around them as the core. All they have to do was to dodge the, wing, trajectories if it attacks them. However, they had no choice but to force through if they were devoted into defense. Ooh, you, you. You go. This sure is tough. Yoshino, Yoshinon. Are you two all right? I am. Okay. Yoshino replied back painfully. She doesn't sound okay no matter how much he hears her. However, after Yoshino sharpened her sights, she clenched both her fist and bent Zadkiel's body. I am, weak and a crybaby but, I will send Shido-san to that person. Zadkiel's body glowed. The power to break the wall. Yoshino spread out her hands. The control strings from Zadkiel's back extended out to her five fingers and were sparkling. Zadkiel, Sirian. The moment she called that name, Zadkiel's big body distorted and was absorbed through the control strings connected to Yoshino's fingers. The dense light stored in the strings coiled around Yoshino's body. Yoshino? Shido let out a shrill voice in reflex at the scene he has not seen before. However, in reply to him. Yes. Shido-san. It was Yoshino's firm voice filled with clear intentions. The light settled down and she finally can be seen. Ama? He mumbled blankly. Yes. Yoshino was there wearing a white armor. No, if a more specific word was insisted, it was a question on whether or not to call that an armor. The weird material that cannot be taken as metal or resins has joined together with clear eyes to cover Yoshino's astral dress, it's as if she was wearing Zadkiel. HNN. After Yoshino was fully covered with cold air, she thrust both her hands forward and joined her fingers. 
A blizzard tornado covered her arms covered with a white armor and formed a gigantic cone. Ah! Yoshino twisted her joint arms with all her might. Instantly, the drill of cold air swirling around Yoshino's arms, opened a gap between the, wing, and, wing, like a drill. Chido-san, now. A, ah. Uh. After Shido replied to Yoshino, he slipped through the path Yoshino opened and ran towards Origami. Origami, who was pushed down by Miku's, Rondo, was still stopped above one meter off the ground. Of course, if the inverse Origami uses her power, she can easily get rid of Miku's sound since she can only use her limited powers, not even a little of will and energy can be felt from Origami now. Since her attacks uses the black, wing, too, Origami does not need to let her voice. It's as if it was going around exterminating enemy against her will, like a body's immunity system. Origami. Shido raised his voice and called Origami's name. But, Origami did not even show a little respond as expected. Her eyes filled with despair only looked soulless and was directed up to the empty sky. Ku. Shido recalled back the scene from the previous world and clenched his teeth. At that time, just like what happened here, Shido managed to reach to Origami thanks to everyone's hard work. However, Origami's heart was completely closed and would not respond to any words Shido says. Things will end up like last time, if this goes on. Shido's power wasn't enough. Something, he needs something that he didn't have at that time. Shido shouted. He extended his hand. That's why, what's next, he needs an impact inside Origami to make her take Shido's hand. Part 6. Two memories mixed inside Origami minds. There's another self inside her, it feels as if she was looking from both sides at the same time. That should be so. The origami from the previous world and the origami of this world was still origami. By having two memories at the same time, origami understood everything. The weird feeling that occurred during today's date with Shido. The feeling when her body moved with another will that does not belong to her. It occurred because origami's body and subconscious was reacting to Shido's existence. This situation is the same too. Originally, the origami of this world right, now should not be awake when she was in a condition where spirit powers was active. However, thanks to the influence from Shido's existence, the boundary of the memories of this world and the previous world turned fuzzy, and in conclusion, the irregularity of origami coming in contact with the two memories has occurred. And that caused origami to be in a terribly chaotic state. With her hearts closed, the origami that was trying to throw everything away and the origami that was trying to stop her, were inside one container entangled complexly. I killed my father, and mother, five years ago. That event did not happen in this world. Itsuku Kun's brother saved father and mother five years ago. The image of the young man who saved them from the beam floated up the same time origami said that. Ah, now that she thinks about it, that wasn't Shido's brother but rather it was Shido himself. She was able to confirm that because she currently possesses the memories of the previous world. Next off, the gentle one year she passed with her parents after the fire, started spreading in her brain. Her smiling father and mother. Those warm gatherings. That irreplaceable time that those three spent together. If she had those memories. If these scenes were left in her mind. Then, Origami would probably live a different life. However. Then, what is this? Just what is the memories inside me? The surrounding scene was in flames. The scene of the city covered in flickering flames popped up. A crater carved in the road. Human parts scattered around. Burnt blood that did not have time to even flow. A young origami looking up the sky. That was exactly the experience origami went through five years ago in the previous world. Origami felt a serious urge to vomit and drowsiness at that hellish memory. You are, ah. A vivid sense of reality. Of course it's real. That's because the person that experienced that was none other than Origami herself. I, can't go on anymore. I, no longer. That's, not. Even though she was about to be crushed by the mixed emotions of sadness, anger and deep hatred, Origami tried calling out to her. However, another memory floated up to interrupt her. The events of the previous world, which was unknown to her. The inverse view. The darkness expanding in the sky. The destroyed city. 
She was about to scream from those gruesome scenes. That did not happen in this world. But that scene was definitely caused by Origami. Origami felt her view distorting. It became hard to maintain her consciousness from that hallucination as if her whole existence was being tainted with black. But, it was no use. If Origami loses consciousness here then, there will be no one else to stop Origami. She won't tell her to stop worrying about it just because the event from five years ago has been made to, never happened. She won't tell her to forget about it just because that the grand disaster that occurred in the previous world did not happen. However, if Origami gives up everything here then, this world that has nothing occurred in it will turn out like the Origami's previous world. She must have destroyed several cities. Many people probably died too. If that really happened then, Origami will never return back to normal. That has to be stopped no matter what. But. You, A R. Origami finally fell to her knees from the torrents of heavy emotions pouring into her, one after another. Origami probably knows this too. The mistake that Origami committed does not exist in this world. And the fact that she can change things in this world too. That's because just like how the memories of the previous world was shared with her, Origami also has the memories of this world too. However, even though she recognizes that, the emotion that there was no way that she could live in this world, was rampaging inside Origami. St, stop me, A.R. Origami shouted. Origami's voice was not enough. The Origami of this world can't save the Origami of the previous world alone. The most she could do was share the memories of this world to open Origami's eyes. Yes, Origami could not push Origami's back. In order to save Origami, Someone from outside has to call out to her. Someone has to take her hand. But, just who would extend their hands out to Origami, who inversed and spread despair into this world? Origami. A voice suddenly echoed. Origami lifted her face. Shido. Yes. The voice that echoed in this empty world belongs to none other than Itsuka Shido. Creak a crack opened in this white space. W. Hi. Origami's voice won't reach Shido. However, Shido continued shouting, so that he could call out to Origami. Don't take on everything alone. I told you five years ago right? That, you aren't alone. Asked. Origami recalled back the memories from five years ago from within her when she heard Shido's words. I will take on your sadness. I will stop your anger. If you are in loss, come to me. Use me if you face a hopeless situation. I won't mind if you throw everything at me. So, so. A.R. Whatever you do, please don't feel despair. Shido's voice in her memories, and Shido's voice entering her ears, piled up. Origami felt the crack formed around the space getting larger. No matter how many times you destroy this world, I will definitely do something about it. No matter how many times you fall into despair. I will definitely save you. I. That's why, extend your hands. I, need you. The moment she heard those words, Origami felt her body move from another will that does not belong to her. Right, now that she thinks about it. It's quite similar to the weird feeling she felt during the date with Shido today in this world. During that time, the memories of the Origami of the previous world unconsciously moved the Origami of this world. But, now. On the other hand, the memories of the origami of this world were the one that made origami extend her hands out to Shido. It's as if, she's telling origami to live. The world with nothing inside, started breaking down while making noises. Part 7. She, Do. A small light lighted, in the eyes of origami who had the face of a corpse. Shido opened his eyes in reflex. Origami. After Origami slowly moved her eyes to see her surroundings, she opened her trembling lips. I, I, you. -oo. Shido hugged Origami at her suppressed words. Just like that day five years ago. Shido. Origami continued with a soft voice. Thank, you, for, calling me. Origami. If Shido wasn't here then, an irreversible event might happen again. Tears fall off Origami's eyes and warmly moisten Shido's shoulders. The fact that I, killed my father and mother, will not disappear, 
the crime that I killed the citizens of the city in the previous world will also, never disappear. Even if it was made into something that, never happened. Ah that's. He couldn't say something simple like wrong. Those were events that did not happen in this world. Most likely, no one remembered those tragedies. Those were events that, never happened, thanks to Shido. Shido clenched his teeth before groaning out his words. That's right. That's, something you have to carry from now on. It was the cruelest announcement. Shido might not have the right to say such a thing. Even though it was to save many lives, it was Shido's crime to change history by his own convenience. However, Shido could not fake his words. He felt that lying to himself to make it sound beautiful would be a terrible insult to the origami's parent of the previous world, the citizens of the city and also to origami. Aye aye. After origami's body trembled. Ah ya, ah 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 She clung onto Shido's body and started crying loudly. It's like that day, five years ago. The length of five years was just too long for a girl of ten years old. And within those five years, Origami has been continuously disciplining herself. Shido talked with Origami many times until now. He also spent a long time with her. However, at this very moment, Shido felt that he finally got to see the face of the real Origami. After who knows how long passed. Origami quietly let out her voice while still clung on to Shido. Shido, I have something I want to apologize. To me. What is it? Origami let go of Shido when he asked and continued while looking at his face. The emotions, I had for Shido was definitely not, love nor affection, at all. Eh? I, just wanted something to rely on, I just threw that role to you, since you were coincidentally at the spot where I lost my parents. I just relied on you just so that I can lie to myself about my weakness, just for that selfish emotion, I caused many problems for you. I apologize to you from the bottom of my heart. Shido Fu exhaled before lifting the side of his lips. Well that's an honor. A. Eh? Origami unexpectedly opened her eyes at Shido's reply. At the very least, I, am glad that I met Origami, that's how my heart feels. Well, I do suffer some problems but, if the reason why you rely on me is because of that emotion then, I should be thankful for that. Shido. Origami said it with a trembling voice. Tears ooze out from her eyes again. After seeing her tears, Shido made a small nod. That's right, I have to return it back to you. Return, back? Origami tilted her head in wonder at Shido's words. Shido, ah, replied. Your tears weren't the only things, you left with me. Ah, it seems that Origami remembered when she heard those words. Five years ago on that day, Origami remembered the words she said. She remembered the things she left with Shido. Uh, I. Origami. When Shido looked at Origami's eyes and said that, Origami twitched her shoulders for a moment before her cheeks blushed in embarrassment and making an awkward but definite smile. Instantly, after Origami opened her eyes and surprised, the black astral dress covering her body released a blinding glow and turned pure white. It was the original appearance of the spirit origami, he saw in the previous world. At the same time, several, wing, floating nearby turned into light particles and disappeared. Shido, I. Her appearance when she was making a smile while wearing that wedding dress astral dress. Made her look like a real angel. Shido gripped the hand supporting Origami's shoulders and pulled Origami over to him. Eh? Origami let out an unexpected voice. This, was his final goal from the start. No matter how much he increases the spirit's affection level, a spirit's Ryoku won't be sealed unless this action was done. However, Shido might be the one that poured strength into his arms but, was it because of his sense of duty to finish his mission? Or was it because of his own desire? He couldn't decide which was correct. Shido's lips piled on top Origami's lips. Although Origami's body trembled for a moment, she entrusted her body to Shido and placed her body weight on him. The moment she did that, the pure white astral dress Origami was wearing left a path of glitter before dissolving into the sky. This is. Their lips separated and Origami widens her eyes at her astral dress that disappeared into light. After she did that, the spirits who fought with the, wing, 
descended behind her. He slightly raised his hands to tell them that everything was over. Everyone then, let out a exhale of relief. Mew. Toka slightly frowned her eyebrows when she saw a half-naked origami leaning against Shido but, Fune she snorted before folding her arms. Fune, oh whatever. This exception is only for today, origami. HNN? Shido made a wry smile at Toka but, he immediately felt something off. Toka's word patterns were not to a transfer student who just came to the class a few days ago, it felt more towards a rival that she has known for quite a while. Toka, you, remembered origami? Mew? What weird thing are you saying, Mew? But yeah. I think I forgot about her for a while. Toka tilted her head in wonder. The other spirits also made the same expression. Perhaps. At that moment, Shido recalled the moment he sealed Kotori. The moment he kissed Kotori, he recalled back the memories sealed by using the pass. There's an invisible pass in between the sealed spirits and Shido even now. If that's the case then, by sealing Origami's Rai Ryoku, they might have shared the memories of the past using the pass. Dot 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 ha ha. Shido made a wry smile at the unforeseen present. For a moment, it would be easier to build their relationship with Origami since everyone has no memories of her. This thought grazed his mind but, he swung his head and threw that thought away. With all that included, it's still Origami. Well, the future looks tough though. When Shido was thinking about that, Origami slowly turned her head and looked towards the spirits. And. Thank you, Toka, everyone. For fighting for me. Origami said that. Wah. A. You, what did you just say? Question. You're not sane yet? You and an honest Origami-san is cute. Oh my, this is rare. Starting with Toka, the spirits, except a few looked shocked. But, oddly enough, Shioju was not surprised. That's because, the origami over here has both the memories of the previous world, and this world too. However, it might have been too unexpected for her. Toka looked away in panic and poi faced aside. Do don't misunderstand. Uh, I was just, doing that. I just did it because Shido asked me to. Even though Toka was worried about origami too, she said it in a dishonest way. But. I see. Then I won't thank you. What a selfish spirit. How ugly. What? Toka brought her eyebrows closer at the words origami said while opening half her eyes. You bastard, aren't your words different from just now? There is no difference. Origami looked away while Toka shouted. Shido made a wry smile at that scene by reflex. The future looks tough as expected. Epilogue, Tobaiichi Origami. 14th November. Shido, who went to school, was sitting in his own seat while staring at the classroom's entrance. Morning homeroom was about to start in five minutes. The door would sometimes open and a classmate would come in. It was the time for school arrival now so, it was only normal for the door to open frequently but, Shido continued looking regardless and did not even move an inch of his eyes. The reason was simple. It has been three days since Origami's Raiyaku was sealed at the high ground park. Today was the day that Origami, who finished her examinations, to finally appear in school. The spirits and the crew members starting with Kotori, were somewhat injured but everyone was alive. They were handling an inverse spirit with that much power. The results could be said to be godsend. Well, Kotori was unhappy from the start to the end because her prided fraxiness was messed up. Yuan. He can't calm down as expected. Chido scratched his cheeks while sighing. He knows that he doesn't need to be that nervous. However after the seal, the place Origami was sent to by members dispatched by Raitatusk was not the heavily damaged Fraxinus but instead, she was sent to the underground institute owned by the organization so, Shido has not met Origami even once after that. That's why, this would be the first time that he would be talking to Origami who was both memories of this world and memories of the previous world, but more importantly, Shido quietly touched his lips. Yes, most of his worries were because of this. Even though it was necessary to seal her Rai Ryoku, kissing right after being told, my feelings towards you wasn't love, was something plain unthinkable. Origami did not say anything at that spot but, Shido felt very awkward there. Shido, Origami isn't here yet? 
Toka looked towards the classroom door like Shido while folding her arms but, she suddenly raised her voice. It seems that Shido's speculation was correct, the same time Origami's Rairai Oku was sealed, the other spirits gain their memories of the previous world as well through the past. Ever since that day, everyone recalled back Origami, starting with Toka. Everyone knows about events that did not happen in, this world. For some reason, it felt a little weird. No, nonetheless, it's good that everything went back to normal. Toka, you're now finally able to call her with origami huh? Shido held his face up with his hands and said that while relaxing his cheeks. Toka then opened her eyes wide before replying back in panic. Mew, I it's not that big of a deal. I just happened to do so. She looked away while folding her arms after saying that. Toka always called Origami in her full name, Tobaiji Origami. He doesn't know what made her had a change of heart but, this did not make Shido feel uncomfortable. Fumu, Origami isn't here yet I see. Consent. We came too fast huh? During the time Shido and Toka were talking, voices could be heard behind this time. When he looked over, he saw the Yamai sisters from next door and found out that they were taking an unnecessarily cool pose. Dot dot Kagaya, Yuzuru. What is that pose? Rather, you girls are from third group right? What are you doing? After Shido said that, Kagaya Ba placed her hands in front of her face and looked over to him through the space between her fingers. Cuckoo, I don't care. I heard that fool finished her examinations and is finally coming back here. So, I am here for my payback for the previous world. After saying that, Kagaya Kukuku made an evil smile. Now that he thinks back, they were badly beaten down by Origami in the previous world when she turned into a spirit. It seems that she is holding a grudge, looks like not everything about regaining the world of the previous world was all good and well. Yuzuru is here for revenge on Origami too? While making a wry smile at Kagaya, who was swinging her fingers and waiting for Origami, Shido looked towards Yuzuru's direction. However, Yuzuru did the opposite by swinging her head. Deny. Yuzuru don't particularly mind. More importantly, I am happy that Master Origami changed her thoughts on spirits. Why? Doesn't that make me a small person? Kagaya shouted unbearably when she heard Yuzuru's words. Well, they were probably here to welcome Origami, even though their words are different. While looking at that small quarrel, Shido Fu exhaled and looked back at the classroom door. Even so, she sure is late. Homeroom is about to. And. Shido stopped his words right before he finished. That's because, the door opened and Origami entered inside. Origami. He opened his eyes wide for an instant when he saw her. However, it was only natural. Origami's hair which should be long was cut down to shoulder length and she completely returned to the appearance of the origami Shido knew. Toka and the Yamai sisters looked blank at origami's transformation too, but they immediately regained their composure and talked. New, you're here ha, huh, origami. Cuckoo, nice guts. I'll acknowledge that courage of yours. Toka and Kagaya welcomed origami with a stance. However. Good morning, everyone. Since Origami said that with a face showing no unpleasantness, Toka and Kagaya hesitated as if they were let down. Only Yuzuru, reply. Good morning, Master Origami, replied back. Origami, you. Chido stopped his words right before he finished. Those were not the words he should be saying now, rethink back. That's why Shido said this. Without any change of manner, he let out his usual voice. Good morning, Origami. For a time, he said those words that he thought he would never say to her anymore. Origami, nodded to Shido's words before slowly walking. She then stopped right beside Shido's seat. Un, good morning. She looked into Shido's eyes once more and said that. After seeing her face, Shido was attacked with a weird feeling. It's true that her hair turned short and her appearance reverted to the origami of the previous world but, maybe because she has the memories of this world or maybe she changed her emotions to the spirits, the atmosphere of her expression felt a little soft. The girls probably felt that too. They looked a little troubled on how to respond to that. But, they will probably get used to it immediately. The girls and origami are here. 
The scenery he seen many times in the previous world caused Shido to squeeze tears out in reflex. Mew? Are you okay, Shido? Maybe she noticed Shido's condition, Toka peeked into Shido's face and said that. Ah, no, nothing. Shido tried to play it off and was about to wipe his tears with the back of his hands before Hashi, Origami grabbed his hands. Shido. You can use this if you are going to wipe your tears. AR, sorry. After saying that, he extended his hands towards Origami. But, Origami was not holding any handkerchief or towel. Origami? What am I? In the next moment, his head was pulled over and Shido's view turned completely dark. A slight dampness touched his cheeks and next off, a smell of soap and sweat mixed together touched his nostrils. A beat later, Shido understood that his head was shoved into Origami's skirt. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. He gasped at the unexpected events and even though he tried to run away, Origami would hold onto the back of his head and won't let go. Rather, the more he struggles, the harder his face gets pressed into Origami's under-stomach. HNNN! HNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNNN
Oh ooh. The real love starts now. Shido felt a light dizziness when he heard Origami's words. It was dependence not love before. It felt as if a devil king made its announcement. And when that commotion was occurring, the chime signifying the start of homeroom rang. Nice timing. Shido pulled away from Origami before letting out a voice to tell everyone. SC. Homeroom is about to start. Toka and Origami, get to your seat. Kagaya and Yuzuru, get back to your classroom. Mew Mew. Phew, no choice. I'll be back at break time. Retreat. See you all later. Master Origami, let's talk again later. Toka and Origami lowered their weapon, and the Amai sisters went back to the third class, after they heard Shido said that. Maybe they felt the end of the conclusion, the surrounding classmates also started returning to their own individual seats. Ha! Huh. Shido let out a large sigh while looking Origami as if he was slipping into congestion. Yes. Since Origami appeared in a very unexpected way, he missed the timing to tell her something. Dot dot Origami. Yes? Uh, let's see. Thank you for listening for my voice at that time. I am happy you came back. How should I put this? I feel relieved. That you are attending the class normally. It might be hard to fully accept the spirits but, you can do it nicely since it's you so, that's why, you oon. Even though he kept thinking about the scene for their reunion yesterday, he can't put his words properly when it actually became reality. Shido scratched his head messily. Ah, forget it. I'll leave the annoying talk for later. Anyway. Shido lifted his face and looked into Origami eyes. I'll be counting on you from now on, Origami. Towards Shido's words. Un. Origami replied with a smile. Afterward. How do you do? My favorite rewarded is Nenasu Totoru. It's Tachibana Koushi. I present you, Date Alive 11 to Baiji Devil. How was it? I would be glad if it was enjoyable. It's a devil, a devil. It's a 180 turn from the volume 10 to Baiji Angel. Which means Origami has her ears. I can only smell danger in this. This is sudden but, who is that beauty on the cover page? Isn't she super cute? Isn't that an angelic and yet devilish smile? I thought it was Origami but, her hair is just too long for her. However, she looks exactly like Origami. I then came to a conclusion. This is definitely that. Origami's sister, Ayagami-chan. I never would have imagined that a topic in volume 2 would collect over here. This is ever since Rodriguez. Suku no Karma Volume 1 8 in sale now. Another possibility would be Origami's daughter, Chiogami. She's a beauty like her mother. Or it might be the new character Origami's cousin Yudagami chan or Origami's second cousin Kiragami chan or Kautakushi chan who lived near Origami's old house or Kentagami chan or Adzutamat Gami chan 11 F1. Nope. Well, jokes aside, it's an impactful metamorphosis for Origami san. It is definitely that. Shido must have said, long hair girls are nice. Origami might have gotten the data even though Shido did not say that. She then grew her hair long in one day. It's Origami after all. Leaving that aside, this volume is a little different. Actually, I did the same thing once before but, the illustration page whenever I follow my custom and open the volume's illustrations, well, you know right? Tsukako-san done a wonderful job. If you haven't seen it yet, then hurry up and go. And also, everyone might already know this but a movie adaptation for the main project, Data Live, has been decided. Wah clap clap. It's a movie, a movie. This is amazing. It's Toka's debut in the silver screen. I thought, if the Natsumi and Origami arc would get animated but, a movie adaptation was totally unexpected. What's more, it isn't a summary but it seems that it's going to be an original story. I think there will be a follow-up soon, so look forward for it. Well then, I am once again able to release a book thanks to the support of many people. The illustrated Tsunoko-san, the eye patch of an illustration is super cute. Also, the supervisor, everyone in the editorial bureau, designer-san, the people related to business and marketing, the bookshop owners, and also the readers you have this book in their hands, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It has been decided that next volume would be the collection of short stories, Data Live Encore 3, and after that, Data Live 12, will be released. Okay then, I look forward to seeing you again.
2014 August Tachibana Koushi.